Hey guys, it's Camille Sarnon as the Ecom King and in today's video, me and my team have prepared a brand new free course for 2023 on how to start your Shopify dropshipping business successfully in the new year. Now, what you guys are going to be learning in this brand new free course is how to build and advertise a successful Shopify dropshipping store in 2023 from the very start. Now, we make a brand new free course every year. So if you've watched the previous 2022 free course, you're going to want to watch this free course because all of the information has been completely updated. So if you want the latest information, then you need to watch this brand new free course to help you see success. So this brand new free course for 2023 is going to be step by step, no BS. You're going to learn everything that you need to know. We're not going to be leaving anything out and it is going to be us holding your hand throughout this journey. Now, I want to make this very clear for you guys. This is the only video you need in 2023 period if you want to see success for Shopify dropshipping. So my best recommendation is you watch this free course in full with a pen and paper or with your laptop and follow along and you watch this free course a few times over if you want to get the maximum beneficial from this education. I would also highly recommend that you don't cross contaminate the information and methods with other methods and just stick to the methods that we're going to teach you in this free course if you want to see the best results possible. Now I can confidently say that this free course and this video is going to be better than any course by any guru that are charging between $1,000 and $5,000 for their course. This free course is going to have information that you're not going to hear in even paid courses. And the information that we're teaching you in this free course is what's given us the success to our eight-figure Shopify stores. Now, if you appreciate all the free value, then all I ask in return is for you to smash the like button, leave a comment, and support the video by literally just subscribing, liking, and sharing. And if you know anyone that wants to start an online business or a dropshipping business, please share the video around so they don't pay for a paid course. Now, what you guys can expect and to learn from this free course in 2023 is how to find winning products, how to build a premium website for free, how to set up all the apps needed, how to make video ads, how to run Google ads, TikTok ads, Facebook ads, YouTube influencers, Snapchat ads, Pinterest ads. You're going to learn everything you need to know to see success in your business. Now, why is this the only video you need in 2023 and why am I not recommending you go anywhere else? So the first thing is you're going to get taught by five different battle-tested experts that have been in the industry now for more than three years. Myself is now coming up to my fifth year and these people that are teaching you are experts in their fields and you're going to get the best knowledge from the best people. Another thing is we've generated seven to eight figures in our own stores and this is all battle-tested information that we've used in our experiences over the last three to five years. And most importantly, the information in this free course is going to be future proof. And because we make a free course every year, this free course information should last you from this year till 2024. Now, I want to make this very clear for you guys that are watching this. This is a long term business. This is not a get rich quick business. And this business has changed thousands and thousands of lives long term. So please make sure that when you watch this free course, you don't think this is just a get rich ticket. You do need to make sure that you put the work in day in day out and you are looking to build a long-term business over one to three years and not a short-term business as long as you come in with that mindset then you will see success if you are persistent and consistent with the information so for those that don't understand how the dropshipping business model and fulfillment model works it's as simple as this step number one the customer purchase from your store online so this would be through your shopify store then the order is forwarded to your supplier and you pay for it and then they ship it directly to your customer on your behalf so you don't need to hold the inventory you don't need to risk inventory you only pay when you get a customer so this is why it's so helpful for beginners to use this business model because you don't need loads of money and it's going to reduce as much risk as possible so how much money and how much cash flow do you need to start a drop shipping business in 2023 with the information we're going to teach you in this free course now i I would always say you're best off with starting with around about $2,000, $1,500. But the more, the better, because it's going to give you more opportunity to spend on advertisement platforms and reinvesting into the business. You also need to top this up by $500 to $1,000 a month on a monthly basis. Now, I'd highly recommend that you have a consistent cash flow coming in to better your chances of success. So if you have a job, that's great. But if you're not making enough money from your job to give towards this business, I'd recommend that you get get a side job or an extra little work shift because the more you can give to this business in terms of cash, the more likely you are to see success. Now, if you limit the cash that you've got, then the less chance there is going to be of success.
So what are the dropshipping costs in 2023 and for this free course? So your Shopify plan is going to be $1 for three months. And then after the three months, you'll be paying $29.99. Now, normally you get a 14 day free trial and then it's $29.99. But if you use my exclusive VIP link in the description and in the cheat sheet, you can get three months for $1 instead of paying $29.99 after 14 days. And then from there, so you're going to be getting it for three months for $1 and then you'll be paying $29.99. Now, this offer has never been seen before in the Shopify history. I've been here for five years. I've never seen anything like this. So make sure you take advantage of this whilst it lasts. And if you're watching this video after eight months of it being released, it might not be available. But if you use my exclusive link, there'll be the latest offers and deals through that link. Now, your domain name is going to cost you around about $14.99 and it's going to be a one-off fee. Then the theme is going to be for free. The logo is going to be for free. Your app are going to cost you between $20 and $100 on a monthly basis. And the marketing in terms of how much you're going to be spending on Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and so forth is going to be around about $1,000 to $5,000 a month, depending on your circumstances. Now, I do want to make it very clear to you guys, I'd highly recommend that you watch this video from now and go till the end. I don't recommend that you skip the video, but if you're watching this video and you're an expert or you own a social media marketing agency and you just want to get the information from the Facebook course or the Instagram ad course or the Snapchat ads course, there will be timestamps in the description and the scroll bar so you can skip to those parts. But I would only recommend that for experts and people that own social media marketing agencies that are learning from this video. But if you're a beginner in Shopify dropshipping or you've never seen success or never seen any real crazy success, then I'd recommend that you watch it from here till the end and you watch the video a good few times. Now, I also want to say that this video could be five to eight hours long. I'm not sure yet how long this is going to be, but I wouldn't recommend that you watch this video in one go. I would watch two hours of the video, take a break or an hour of the video, take a break, come back. Don't just try and watch this video in one go. It will blow your brain apart. So make sure you watch this video in different stages and you take notes and you follow along with your laptop. And I'd highly recommend that you watch this video three times over to get the full information needed. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you join the free discord group for help. So if there's anything that you need help with in between the free course, we have a free discord group where you can communicate with other like-minded people and other experts and get help and advice throughout this journey. So before we get into the nitty gritty part of this free course, we need to go over how to do the business setup 101 for 2023. So before you even get started, I'd highly recommend that you set up a company, for example, an LLC or an LTD before starting. And I do want to make it very clear that none of this is financial advice or none of this is legal advice. This is just what I would do if I was to start all over again. Make the company name the same as your store name and keep everything congruent. Now, the reason why we're advising you to keep everything congruent is because when you verify your business manager for your ads and other platforms like your payment gateways, they would like to see everything match like the names and the store names. So if you do that, then you won't get into any issues. I'd also recommend that you get a company bank account and credit card because with company bank accounts and credit cards, you get higher limits, higher withdrawals and better fees on exchanges and other benefits that I'd highly recommend. Now, I'd also recommend that you speak to a local slash national account before you even start. So if you're planning to do Shopify drop shipping, let's say, for example, you live in Germany or you live in the US and you plan to sell let's say to the European market or the e-packet countries, before you even start, you need to speak to your local accountant about how import taxes work, how your taxes will work as a business where you're operating from. Now, I am not an accountant, so I cannot give you this advice. And that's why I'm saying to you speak to a verified accountant in your national or state where you live, as things can change in every jurisdiction. Now, if you are based in the UK and you want a really good e-commerce accountant, I would recommend a company called Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome is the accountants that we recommend and use for our e-commerce businesses. And if you use my link in the description, you will get a very good deal on speaking to them and working with them in your e-commerce business. Now, the biggest mistake that I made before I started my e-commerce journey when I started was I didn't get an accountant. I made good money. Then I got an accountant and then I realized I had to pay a lot of taxes because I didn't get the advice before starting. So make sure if you are based in the UK, you guys check out Awesome. They're the guys that I highly recommend for this country. I can't speak on any 
any other country as I am only based in the UK. All the companies that I recommend in this video will be in the description and in the cheat sheet and all the links that you'll receive for these companies will have extra benefits because they are through my links. So guys, that brings us to the first module of the free course, which is product research with myself, Camille Satar. So I'm going to be teaching you guys right now in this module how to find within products, the research that I do, all the free methods that I use and also some paid methods that I use to speed up the process. So this is all going to be about product research, niche research and everything that I look for to find validated products. So the first thing that we need to understand is what makes a winning product in 2023 and the circumstances that are going to be happening in the new year. So because of 2022 being the previous year, there's certain things that happen within that year economically and circumstance wise that will change. So in 2023, it's changed again. So the first thing I would say is recession proof designed for lower spending. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I do believe in 2023, we are going to go through a pretty nasty recession. And that's why I'm saying it needs to be recession proof and designed for lower spending because people will have less money to spend. Also a done for you product that does the work for you to save you time and to save you money over long periods of time. Number three helps you entertain from home to save money. So people are going to spend less money going out for food, the cinema activities, and they're going to try and find ways to entertain themselves from home to save money instead of going out and spending money. The next thing is home learning products and educational products. So people are going to want to learn from home instead of spending money to learn. So anything that they can educate or learn from home, like eBooks or anything like a board game, anything like this can really help them with their education or their learning is going to be really good. Number five is saves you money long term and time. So any product that can save people money over the long term, because it's a product that instead of having to buy it every single month, you just have to buy it once and it'll work over the two year period instead of having to repeatedly buy it every month it can save you money over the long term and anything that can save you time because time is important and also money is important. Number six, multi-purpose content platform testing. So this basically means that you need to have a product that could be used on Facebook, but could also be used on Google or that could be also used on TikTok. You do not want to try and find a product that can only be advertised on one of these marketing platforms because if that marketing platform isn't a great platform for that product, then you've already lost the game of winning on advertisement. So what are the best dropshipping niches in 2023? In my humble opinion, I would say the fishing outdoor sports slash hobby niche. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I find that the outdoor and fishing niche tend to have the highest quality customers. They tend to spend a lot of money. They tend to have a lot more money because they're more older. So I find that that niche is really good. Extreme sports, snowboarding, paddleboarding, because it's not competitive. Again, people that do these niches or these hobbies have have a higher income and have better savings. Home art, painting and drawing and modeling. So let's say you can paint from home, draw from home again, entertain yourself from home and modeling. So meaning like 3D modeling or clay modeling, anything like that could be really good because it's entertainment from home. And also this is a hobby. So the next niche is the special events niche, things like Valentine's Day and Memorial Days. So you got to think really deep when I give you these niches. Don't just take them on base service, really dig deep. So an example of a memorial Memorial event could be when did a football team become a football team so let's say we look at the Lakers or we look at a English sports team like Man City and we work out when did they become a club so whatever would be their memorial day we could start a store about that now it doesn't mean you sell copyrighted products but what I'm trying to say is you could make quoted products in the day of their memorial day so this could be very deep memorial day could be for any big niche any big topic but I would highly recommend that you stay away from copyright copyrighted products if you are going to do this and you need to think outside the box. The next niche is the mobile gaming, PC gaming and accessories as mobile gaming has become a massive industry and also PC gaming is and a lot of people are now doing gaming from home with all the new games coming out and so forth. So anything accessory wise can do really well. Kids extreme toys and futuristic toys. So not just your average toys that you can get from the supermarket. We're looking to sell toys that are futuristic and extreme. So when people look at them like, wow, I've never never seen this before. Next niche would be the women's fashion niche, coats, dresses, and gym wear. Now, I want to make this very clear. I'm not talking 
talking fast fashion, I'm talking just general fashion. So it could be seasonal fashion. So in the winter, you sell winter coats. In the summer, you sell summer dresses. But the women's fashion niche is huge. A lot of dropshippers avoid it. I don't know why, because they're scared. As long as you've got good sizing charts in multiple countries like the European Union, the US and the UK, you're fine. But this is a massive industry that we have our own stores in and we've generated multiple seven figures in this industry. Home self, grooming and beauty, makeup and beards. So anything that can keep people looking beautiful from home to save them money from going to a salon or a barber is going to be a great way to help them save money through the recession in the new year. Now, all the niches that I've said today aren't all the best niches. There are other ones outside of these, but these are the ones that I can see with the maximum potential in my humble opinion. And again, don't just look at these niches on the broad overview. You need to really dig deep into these niches and find little hidden gems that you can exploit. So guys, before I get into the main methods of finding winning products for free and also showing you paid methods, this is the free cheat sheet that will be available for you in the link in the description of the video the pinned comments. So as long as you use that link, you'll have access to the free cheat sheet. So what is this free cheat sheet? This free cheat sheet is a step-by-step. -step. So although the video is a step-by-step, -step, this is a written out format of a step-by-step. -step. So if you're better off learning this stuff by visually reading it and then doing it, we've also created a physical readable version to help you along. So make sure you claim this. It's completely free in the link in the description. And guys, with all this crazy value that we're giving you, we would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button and show your appreciation. So with that out of the way, let's get into the first free method of finding winning products in 2023. So the first method is the viral research method. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to find a viral product that is in the USA, Canada, UK market. So these three markets are the main markets and we're going to be doing this on the TikTok platform. So this is the TikTok platform right here. You will need to open up a tab in a minute. And the reason why we're using TikTok is because TikTok is the leading indicator when it comes to product trends and when it comes to product research. Now, what you need to do in step two is you need to create an account on Dropship Rabbit. Now, you can create a free account because they have a free service, and this is the one that we're going to be using now. So if you head over to the free service, go to where it says free TikTok ad spy, your screen should now look like mine, where it's showing you different TikTok videos. Now, what this is, it's basically a TikTok ad spy, so it's showing you winning ads from TikTok about dropshipping products that you can go through. So this is a really powerful way of doing it. Now, step three is you want to sort it by most and impressions if that option's not available you don't need to worry about this and then step four you want to search through all the ads and find a product that meets the criteria above by going to the ad and the website so if you scroll up these are the criteria that i'm talking about all of these are the criteria that i'm talking about when it comes to step four now, don't worry if you don't know how to do this. I'm going to show you right now how to do it. So how you would do this, guys, is you would want to go back to the Dropship Rabbit website, go to the free TikTok ad spy, and then once you see the ads pull up, you just want to go through all the ads, make sure they meet the criteria above, which is here, but also which ones stand out to you. So basically, when you watch this, when you see the video play, which video stands out to you? And if they're not playing, just click to play them and see which video gets your attention. So I'm going to scroll through all of these till I find a thumbnail or a title or a video that actually stands out to me because you want to be able to buy or look into a product that naturally stands out to you. So this one here stands out to me. This is quite a good video. So I'd want to click that. You'd also want to keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. Don't be shy to scroll as much as you want till you find a video that actually grabs your attention. So guys, I found this video that stands out to me from heatvo.com and this video stands out to me because it's a women's fashion product and these do really well on TikTok because the niche on TikTok is massive. So I feel like this is a great product and because people tend to shy away from fashion. So I'm very intrigued in this product and it's an easy product to promote through influencers as well. So because I've liked this product, what I want to do is I actually want to go to the profile. So after you click view profile, it'll take you to their profile. It will have their website in in the description so you can have a view of it and you can also see other videos of the product now step five says once the product meets parts of the criteria above search for product in aliexpress to see if it's available to find the product name see how the competitor is naming it on their website and in their tiktok videos so if you don't know what the name of the product is you can basically go onto each one of these videos and look at what they're calling it in the description 
or you can have a look on their website to see what the product name is. Now, it's very easy to work out what this product is. It's like a fur tight, so the fur inside, and then it's meant to look like tight. So I'm literally gonna go to AliExpress and type in fur tight, and you can see the products coming up. Here's one of them, and here's one of them. Now, we're only looking for the ones that have got reviews. So what you can do is you can highlight this here, and it'll only show you the product with the reviews, because you do not wanna find a product that has got bad reviews. Now, I wanna make this incredibly clear. We are not using AliExpress. Express to source the product or use as a supplier. We are only using AliExpress as a data dictionary or a data index. It's just here for us to help to find the product and for us to find out how good the quality of the product is. So you can see here, I found one seller. And if we open this seller up, they've got 520 orders. Based on those orders, they got 4.7 star reviews. Now, the reason why we want to find this information out is because this is going to help determine whether the product is a good product based on quality and based on the order amount. So you can see here, I found another AliExpress seller and they've got 500 unique orders, but they've got 4.5 star reviews instead of 4.7 star reviews. I would stay well away from anything under 4.5 star reviews. Now, sometimes AliExpress can be a bad place to find out the product quality. So what you can do is you can actually look for the product on Amazon and see what the reviews are there as they are more credible. So as you guys can see, I'm on Amazon and I've searched for the same product name, Fur Tights. And what I want to do is I want to try and find the exact same product. So this is the exact same product and you can see it's got 3.8 star reviews based on 27 orders and if we keep scrolling down you can see more people selling the product 3.6 4.7 so this is just a really good way to verify how good the product quality is and you can also find out what people's thoughts and questions are on the product in the Q&A section step six once you find the product on Aliexpress you want to see if the product has 500 orders no more than 8,000 orders so when I say 500 orders I mean throughout the main sellers so if you go back to AliExpress, we're not judging it based on one seller. So this would be 522. This would be another 500. So that makes it 1,022 orders. We're going to try and find another seller. So if we let's say this is another seller with 50 orders, we'd add that together. But you only want to base it on the first page of AliExpress. You can see here this page two, page three, page four. We're only basing it on the front page. So that meets the criteria. Step seven, search for the product name on TikTok platform. Try and find the biggest pages making consistent content for the product. So if we head back over to TikTok, we are now going to want to search for the product. So if we type in fur tights, we want to see if it comes up. So as you guys can see, after typing in fur tights, you can see one video coming up here with 20,000 views, some more videos here coming up with 600,000 views. So what we actually want to do, guys, is we want to try and find the main biggest videos for the product that we're looking to sell. Now, you're going to have to do this based on loads of different keywords. So if you type in the keyword, you can see there's going to be some suggestions. So here's one, furry type pants. So let's see what comes up under that keyword. So you can see under that keyword, not much is really coming up relevant to the product. So as you guys can see, I've typed in furry tights instead of fur tights, and there's a few different videos coming up that I didn't see before. We've got this video here with 303,000 views. Now, step eight, read the comments and see what they could do better based on the feedback. So what you want to do is based on the different keywords you've used to find the most popular. Now, what you want to do is based on the different keywords you've used to find different popular videos of the product. So I'd say about three to five different keywords to find that product. You want to look at the most popular videos like this one, like this one, read the comments and see what the feedback is and incorporate that when you come to sell the product, if you're going to pick the product that you're looking for. So guys, that was method number one, and this is a free method to do. So now you don't need to do this based on the first product you find. I'd highly recommend that you use this strategy on loads of different products till you find the best one. And the best one will be based on all the different metrics that I mentioned in the free cheat sheet and based off the information you're going to get from TikTok based on views. So let's say the views on here are not great. So you can see here, there's nothing crazy when it comes to views. We're seeing a couple of hundred thousand. Let's say you find a product that gets loads and millions of views on TikTok, then that would be the better product because there's more demand for the product. So let's go over method number two, which is broad niche scalping. So step one, go back to TikTok. Step two, these are the best niches to find products on TikTok using this method. Now, these are the ones that I like, but you can also incorporate the niches that I've mentioned mentioned here as well guys don't worry you can also use these ones step three search for keywords like summer dresses summer shoes kid toys dog cat bed beauty tools makeup brush earrings bracelets now in my instance i'm going to use the keyword board games because one of the niches that i've recommended this year is going to be home entertainment games or board games so you can see here i've typed in board games and you can see there's loads of different videos coming up with millions of views hundreds of thousands of views 
Step four, search through all the videos. Try and find the videos with the most views. Step five, search for the broad name of the product on AliExpress to see if it's available. It doesn't have to be the exact same product. So as you guys can see, once you've typed in the keyword, you just want to go through loads of these different videos and whichever video's got the most views. So you can see here, this one's got 3.7 million views. This one here's got 2.6 million views what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to watch these videos with the most views based on your keyword niche and then once you find the video you're going to try and look for that product or something very similar to that product on aliexpress so you guys can see I've gone to AliExpress and typed in board games. Now, this is just to speed up the process of this video. But in your instance, you'd be a lot more niche down to whatever video and what products being featured in that video. So, for example, I could do card board game or I could do fish board game. But for just to save time, I've typed in board games and I've sorted it by reviews. That way, I'm only seeing good quality reviewed based board games. Now, once you've done that, you just want to scroll through these and look at the board games that are coming up or whatever products coming up based on your keyword. Step six, once you find the product on AliExpress, you want to see the product to have at least a thousand orders. So let's say, for example, we're going to be selling this product or this product on AliExpress. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to research for this product on AliExpress. Because remember, we've searched board games in, but that's not this product. So we this is a Toro card game. So then we'd search for Toro cards again, and then we'd see how many sellers there are for this product. And we want to try and see if they've got a thousand orders combined. So this is method number three of the free method. So it's called the brand research method. And again, this is based on TikTok as they are the leading indicator. So step two, search for big brand names in the niches below. For example, Pandora, Pretty Little Thing, Mac Makeup. And again, these are the niches that the brands that you're going to want to search. So again, this brand here, Pretty Little Thing, would go under the fashion niche. Uh, makeup would go under the beauty niche. And then Pandora would go under the jewelry niche. Again, you can use the niches that I've mentioned here as well. You don't just have to do the ones that I've put here. You could do gaming. If you are to put gaming in here, you could put Razer or you could put Alienware underneath it. Now, if you don't know what the biggest brands are in these industries, what you can do is go to Google. I've typed in biggest women's fashion brands US because I'm looking for the US market. And then what you can do is you can go on some of these articles or you can go to images and look at what images are being shown on the logos. You can see here a few logos, Fashion Nova, Forever 21, H&M. So I'm going to go back to TikTok and I'm going to type in Fashion Nova. Novo. So you guys can see here, I've typed in Fashion Novo and it's come up with all of these different videos with 1.9 million views, 12 million views. You can see here loads and loads of views. This is really, really popular. Now, what we're going to want to do is once we've done this, we're going to want to watch the video, try and work out the name of the product. Now, in my example, again, this is fashion. So I'd have to try and find the fashion version of this. You're going to want to watch all of these videos, with the, especially the ones with these massive views on them. And you're going to want to try and see if you you can find an AliExpress or dropshipping alternative to that product that's being featured in these really popular videos. Step three, look at the top videos and try and find a similar product on AliExpress. Step four, once you find the product on AliExpress, make sure you want to see at least 500 orders combined on the first page. So again, we're going to go back to TikTok. You can see this is the video. It's by this woman called Olivia with 600,000 views. She's saying in the video, trying this viral uh, waist illusion dress. We can see what the dress looks like. We can see what it's meant to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to AliExpress, type in illusion dress. And you can see here we found pretty much, I think it's literally the same dress. It literally looks like the same dress. Now we don't want to sell this product if it's a direct ripoff because that's not what we want to do. We do not want to be selling copyright or ripped off products it's not fair but what we're looking for is that style of dress but maybe in a different color so now i've typed in waist belt dress and i'm going to look for other similar dresses and again you can see this one coming up so what you want to do is you just want to try and find similar or very very similar dresses or whatever it is you're looking for on aliexpress and again we're using aliexpress as the index to find the product now method number four is called the supplier winners and you want to find viral products in the usa canada or uk market and again guys you're using tiktok to find these products that i'm talking about now, step two, once you've found a hot product that meets the criteria, find the suppliers for the product with the most orders on AliExpress. 
Now, just to show you guys how I'll do this step by step, I'd go back to Dropship Rabbit and I'd either use their paid version or their free version. I'm going to go back to free TikTok ad spy. I'm going to scroll down and look for another product that I like the look of. So let's say, for example, I like the look of this product. I'm going to click view profile. You can either do that or you can look at the image or thumbnail of the video and work out what the product is. Now, this is a flame humidifier just by looking at it. So I'm going to go back to AliExpress and type in flame humidifier. And as you guys can see from me just searching the name of that product on AliExpress, I've literally found the exact same product. Now, once you've done that, you're going to want to try and find the supplier with the most orders. So this supplier here has got 5,100 orders. We're going to try and find another supplier that's got more orders than him. This one here has got 10,000. So this would be the biggest supplier and then it would be this supplier here. So now once we found the most ordered amount of suppliers, we're then going to want to send them this script here. And again, you're sending the script to the three to five best suppliers based on orders. So the the script reads hello supplier's name so you need to find out what the supplier's name is and then add it here and how you would find the supplier's name is by going to the supplier's product page on aliexpress scrolling down and then it says here the actual brand's name so this is the name of the supplier so you would add it in here and then it says hello my name is and then you put your name i'm a professional drop shipper i see you're the best supplier for the product i want to drop ship it i am wondering if you know any other products in this niche that are doing well right now for other drop shippers i'd love to work with you on a new drop shipping product i look forward to hearing from you thanks for your time so what you're trying to say here is i'm not interested in selling this flame humidifier because it's overdone it's oversaturated i'm looking to find out because you're the best person to find this out because you guys have got to understand that the suppliers are the guys that have got the best knowledge when it comes to what's working well right now because they're the ones that are fulfilling the products and they've got all the data so what you're doing here is you're trying to ask them to fish around and find out what other similar products to this flame humidifier are they selling or are they starting to see trend for that you could potentially jump on before it gets hot like this so guys now i've gone over the free methods there's loads of ways you can use those free methods you can get creative with them you can slightly change them do whatever you want with them that should be more than enough to get you going but let's say you want to use some paid methods to speed up the process and to give you some more precise better products then you can use the dropship rabbit paid option so that was the free option so their paid option gives you winning products and these are products that they pick based on the criteria that i've mentioned before and once you go through the list of these products once you click on ones that you like it'll give you the size price it'll give you the google trends data it'll give you the aliexpress link the banggood link the cj dropshipping link it'll give you a description it'll give you the target audience it'll give you everything you need with each one of those products to help you speed up the process of getting it onto your store they've also got an ads by pro tool where you can search by certain keywords you can change it by dates you can filter it by facebook or tiktok or both you can change it based on the likes and the limits and the comments so this is a great way to really scrape in the best products on the paid advertisement platform platforms and this can be really powerful to speed up your process when finding the most profitable ads being ran for certain drop shipping products they've also got a really cool audience builder feature where basically let's say you want to run paid ads for one of the products that you're selling you can select the niche that your product's in and then it will give you interests or topics to use when you want to use facebook ads or tiktok ads to find an audience so there's one last paid tool that i'd recommend that you guys take a look at it's called saturation inspector and this is going to help you find your winning products and to come to a conclusion that the product that you're going to be choosing is a solid product so all of those product research methods that i've just shown you this is going to work for every single single one of them now saturation inspector is a chrome extension so you can see here on my chrome tab it's showing a saturation inspector if you click this icon on one of the products that you found on aliexpress this also works on a few other suppliers like cj drop shipping if you click the icon you're going to see if you have it turned on it's going to show you all of the different shopify and woocommerce stores that are selling this exact product now the reason why this is important is because you want to know how many other competitors that you're going to be competing with and the other good thing about this is although there might be 177 people with this same product on their website what you have to understand is not every single one of them are actually going to be advertising the product let's say only a hundred of them are actually advertising the product and some of them might not be doing google ads some of them might not be doing facebook ads so by working out this information will help you find a gap in the market that you can utilize on now with this competition level i don't always look at it as a conclusive end result i won't always pay attention to it it's just a good thing to keep an eye on like i said the most important 
important thing of this tool is to work out how many stores are selling it and which ones out of all of these stores are using different advertising strategies. Now, another really cool feature with Saturation Inspector is if you find the websites that are selling the product that you found, and especially if you use the research methods that I've just taught you, you will find the websites with the products and you can click on the Chrome extension again, go to Store Analyzer, and it will show you their best selling products so you know which product is actually making them the most money. And let's say this one here is their product that they're selling. It's only ranked at the bottom of their best sellers. So instead of actually selling this product, we might say, you know what, let's go and sell this product instead. Although we've come here for this product, we might actually want to sell this product because there's more money to be made with it. Now, if we scroll down, it's also going to tell you the traffic source links, like it'll show you the reports of where all the traffic's coming from. It'll also show you their best performing apps. And this is really important to help you understand what's benefiting them through the apps. And it will also show you the Facebook ad library if they are running ads. So guys, Saturation Inspector is a really good option if you just want that additional information to help you come up with a conclusion on the product that you're looking to choose. So if you want a different alternative to Dropship Rabbit as a paid tool, I'd highly recommend Peekster. So you can see here, you've got all of these different options. You've got winners, products by TikTok Spy, product explore, store explore, suppliers, video maker, thumbnail maker, audience builder, and bestseller. So there's loads of features within Peekster. And you can see under the winner section, they are giving you highly precise, solid products. Instead of you having to go out there and do the research on TikTok, this is basically doing all the research for you and then giving you loads of really cool products. And then you've got the product spy feature. So this is all the best products on Facebook. So this is a Facebook ad spy tool. And then you've got TikTok spy. So this is basically showing you all the products on TikTok that are doing really, really well. And then you've got product explore. So this is showing you really good products on Amazon right now. And Amazon is directly correlated as well with AliExpress. So this is a really powerful way. And then you've got store explorer. So this is showing you the best drop shipping stores right now making money. Then you've got suppliers. These are going to show you the suppliers with the better shipping times selling drop shipping products instead of going with slower shipping times. Then you've also got a video maker as well. So you can make some really cool videos inside of here. You can also make thumbnails inside of here for your ads. And you've also got your audience builder in here and you've got your best sellers in here. So these are the best selling products right now on different platforms. So this also will speed up your process. So if you want to use Peekster or Dropship Rabbit, there'll be links in the description or in the cheat sheet. So guys, that moves us on to the next module of this 2023 free course. And this module is going to be about logistics and suppliers, where to get your products from, where to test your products, and then how to eventually scale your products with agents and fulfillment centers. And this module is going to be covered by myself, Camille Satar. So that moves us on to what are the best dropshipping supplier companies in 2023. Now, the first group of suppliers that I'm going to be going over with you are suppliers that are designed for one product dropshipping. Now, this is ideally suited for beginners. So this basically means these are the suppliers that you're going to use when you start because you're only going to be ordering the product once somebody orders. You're not going to be buying them in bulk. You're not going to be private labeling. You're just going to be doing one product dropshipping to reduce the risk till you find a winning product. Now, some of the suppliers that I've got on the screen can also help you with bulk ordering, private labeling, but I'm only going to be using these ones and demonstrating them as one product dropshipping suppliers. Now, for those that are wondering why AliExpress isn't on this list is because I do not recommend AliExpress. I only recommend using AliExpress if worse comes worse and these other companies do not have the product available or they cannot source the product. If that is the case, that is the only time I would recommend AliExpress. Now, as you guys can see in the bottom, it says here for scaling and branding, use unified dropshipping and e com ops. So I'll be going over those two companies after. I just want to show you guys the suppliers I'd recommend for one product dropshipping first. So before I move into the suppliers that I'd recommend for one product dropshipping, you're going to need an app that integrates these suppliers into your Shopify store. Now, the app that I'd recommend to do this is called Auto DS. And the reason why I'm saying to use Auto DS is because they have loads of settings and they have loads of features. Now, the most outstanding feature and the reason why I recommend them highly is because as in the name they will automatically fulfill every single order for you without you having to click a button now what that basically means is let's say you get hundreds of orders come through CJ dropshipping or USA dropship instead of you having to click one button per time you can integrate it through auto DS so if you make an account with auto DS make sure you use the link in the cheat sheet or in the description because you will get longer trials and longer benefits 
tickets, then all you need to do is create an account and then go to where it says add products. And then here it says add products. And then you're going to see here URLs, IDs, upload CSV, auto DS finders. There's a few ways you can actually upload these. And you can also use the supplier source here. So you can see AliExpress is the native one. You can use all of these other integrated companies like Wayfair, Amazon, CJ, Banggood, Overstock, eBay. So you can use all of these different companies to integrate with AutoDS. And I believe they're going to be integrating with loads more suppliers. So that's why I'm recommending them. So I'm not going to be giving you guys a full tutorial on AutoDS. Mohammed's going to be going over all the apps that you need in his section. I'm only showing you it now because this is the app that I recommend that you use to integrate products into your Shopify store. Now, if you're looking for a free alternative, then you can use DSs, but I'd highly recommend that you use AutoDS because it's going to save you a lot of time. So guys, the first supplier that I'd recommend for one product dropshipping is called USA Dropship. Now, what is USA Dropship? USA Dropship is a company based in China, but all the employees that work for them are USA native, meaning that they speak fluent English, they're American, so you're gonna be able to get really good customer service out of them. They've got 10 years of experience, and you can see here, these are the shipping lines that they work with, United States Postal Service, FedEx, UPS, and Uni Express. So these are the companies that will give you the fastest shipping times for dropshipping. You can also see here, a few more benefits about using USA Dropship like brand building, automatic fulfillment, after sales service. So all you guys need to do is sign up for free by using the button in the top right section and you can also contact them on WhatsApp and Skype if you need their help, which is really good. Now, once you've created an account, it will ask you to integrate it with your Shopify store by just pasting your Shopify website URL in there. So you guys can do that once you've got your Shopify store. Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to go to where it says sourcing and then you're going to see here where it says sourcing. AliExpress products. So you want to click that button. And then once you've found a product on AliExpress using the product research method I've given you, you just paste the link here. And then it says here ships to. So you want to select the three main countries, which will be the United States, it'll be United Kingdom, and it will be Canada. Now where it says fill the products one variant to get a quote, all you need to do is go back to AliExpress link that you've used to find the product as an index. And once you find the variant that you want to sell, let's say I want to sell the black version of this, and I only want to sell it on a US plug, then you're going to come here and type that in. Now let's say the product comes with all of these variants and you want to sell every single variant on the listing, then all you need to do is put in here all variants. Now once you've done that, you can submit a quote and then your screen should look like mine. It should show you your sourcing URL with the link to the product from AliExpress, the image, and then the status should be, please contact your sales agent. So this basically means that the status is pending because they're going to get you a quote. So what will happen is after around about 24 to 72 hours, you'll get a quote from USA Dropship on how much it will cost to get the product, including shipping and the shipping times that it will be to get to your customers based on the countries that you've picked. Now, if you just want ready to go products that you can import straight away from USA Drop, then you can go to their winner section and all these products here that say buy USA Drop mean that they've got them in their inventory and they can actually integrate it straight away and you do not need to get a quote because they've already got the product available and all the pricing will be available here. So you can see it tells me straight away USA Quote is going to be $25 for this product. So something else that's really important for you guys to understand is when you sign up, you're going to be on the basic free plan because it's completely free, but that limits you to only three quotes a month, three products a month. But if you go for one of their higher tier plans, you can see you're going to get 30 quotes, or if you go for their premium plan, you're going to get unlimited quotes, and it just gives you a better service. Now, I'd recommend that everyone starts on the free version, and if you need the higher tier versions, do be sure to upgrade because it will give you more products. So guys, the next supplier that I'd recommend is Zendrop. Now, as soon as you make a free account with Zendrop, this is what your dashboard should look like if you go to where it says find products. And you can see here, you can find products that ship directly from the US. You can shop trends, you can shop tech, or you can shop pets. Now, if you scroll down, these are all the products that are going to be fulfilled by Zendrop. Now, this is really important for you guys to understand because if it doesn't say fulfilled by Zendrop, then that basically means Zendrop hasn't got the product in their services and in their warehouses, and they're going to have to find the product from a different supplier then fulfill the product. So this is the same thing with every supplier. Every supplier will say they can receive a product for you, but if it's not being fulfilled by them directly, that means it's going to take extra lead time because they have to find the product from another supplier. So as long as it says fulfilled by Zendrop or whatever company that you're trying to fulfill it from, then that means the shipping times should be a lot quicker and the processing times. So if we take a look at one of the products fulfilled by Zendrop, you can see laser angle meter casting tool. You can see this is the 
product and you can see the shipping lines right here. So US regular is going to take 10 to 15 days, which is $5. And anything that charges you for shipping, always add it into the product price. So you can see here, the product price is going to range from 14 to 22. So we would add that cost into the product price and make the customer pay for the shipping by adding it into the product cost. So the customer thinks the product is the same price, but it's not because you're adding the shipping cost into the price. That way they're going to think it's free shipping because you should always offer free shipping. And you can see that these shipping times are very modest. They are 10 to 15 days, but that is extremely fast considering it's one product drop shipping. And you can see internationally it's $7 for the same shipping time, which is really good. And you guys can see here, you can also get a quote as well. So if they haven't got anything that's on their website, you can quote to see how much it's going to cost you for them to get it in. So let's say you found a product on AliExpress, but they don't have it on Zendrop. You can ask them to source it in depending on the demand and they'll get back to you saying if they can do it. So if you guys can't find a product on here directly through their fine products, you can import it through AliExpress, but you guys do need to read the terms of service on this because it doesn't guarantee that they're going to get fast shipping times. Because like I said to you before, unless it's being fulfilled by the company, company you're going to, then the shipping times might not be as quick as 10 to 15 days because it's not being directly fulfilled through Zendrop. They're going through a third party. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why would I import it through Zendrop instead of going directly through AliExpress? Because if you do it through Zendrop or any other company, they're going to make sure that the warehouse that they're getting it from is the best warehouse or the best supplier. So they're going to do the legwork for you. So that's why it's actually better to go through a company like this and import it through AliExpress because they can do all the verification checks to make sure you're buying it from the best seller. Now there's some other cool things Zendrop can do, things like branding, so putting your logo on the packaging and on the product. They can do bundles and boxes. They can do things like inventory soon and they can also do print on demand soon. So these are a few things that you can keep an eye on. So guys, another supplier that I'd highly recommend is Spocket. Spocket is a well-known name in the industry and they've got some very good, reliable shipping times. So as soon as you create a free account, you guys can see here, these are all the industries that they sell in. You can see here ships from EU or the US. And then you can see here fast USA shipping time. And then you can see here it shows the inventory. And you can see if I wanted to buy this product right here, it's going to take me one to three days to get it, which is really, really fast. So you can see the shipping times are really competitive, four to seven days. You can see here one to three days. What will happen though is the product will be a lot more expensive and the shipping cost can be a little bit more expensive, but it means your customers are going to be a lot more happier. So as you guys can see here, if I wanted to drop ship this chewing dog toy, then it's going to take me a around about one to three business days to get to my United States customers and it's going to cost me five dollars but if I want to sell it worldwide then we're looking at 15 to 30 days and it's going to cost me ten dollars so you do need to keep an eye on the different countries are going to give you different shipping times and if you find the same product in Aliexpress it might be slightly cheaper but you might not be able to get these good shipping times. Another great thing about Spocket is they're giving you a two-week free trial for their Spocket Pro especially if you use my link in the description and what that will give you is faster shipping times, higher quality supply and you can ship directly from the US or EU, but you can only do that if you've got Spocket Pro. So make sure you use my link in the description. So guys, the last supplier that I'd recommend is CJ Dropshipping. Now I'm not going to give you a full tutorial on CJ Dropshipping because I've gone over them in my past free courses, but these other suppliers like USA Dropship, Zendrop, I've not gone over it before. And I'd also recommend Hyper SKU. Now something that I do want to say to you guys is remember what I was saying to you before, depending on which companies can fulfill to certain products, depends on which one to go for. So let's say, for example, USA Dropship have certain products being fulfilled by them, but Zendrop don't have those products being fulfilled by them. Then you might want to go with USA Dropship. But let's say Zendrop's got a list of products that USA Dropship don't have that can be fulfilled by them. Then you might want to go with Zendrop. It's all about which supplier has that product that you're looking for in their own warehouses, which they can fulfill by instead of them going through a third party. So whichever one's got your product and it's in their inventory, then that's the one that I'd actually recommend you go for because you're going to get the better shipping time. So now I've covered with you guys what dropshipping suppliers I'd recommend that you use to test products with before you commit to moving with agents and fulfillment centers. Now I'm going to be teaching you guys about bulk ordering for 2023, what agents to use, what suppliers to use, what fulfillment centers to use, and when to move to this process. So what are the benefits of ordering in bulk? So what are the benefits of ordering in bulk? Increased product quality, decreased cost of goods because you're going to be doing a minimum order quantity. So depending on the price of the product that you're going to be buying, if it's a really cheap product, you end up having to buy a lot more. If it's a more expensive product, example, you might only have to order 50, but if it's a really cheap product, you might have to order 200 to 500. So it really does depend on the price of the product. And in terms of increased product quality, they can increase the product quality because they know that 
they're working with a long-term partner. So when they actually manufacture that product, they're more likely to increase the quality because they need to make you happy. You've got more control over the supply chain so you can decrease the shipping times because instead of them having to order the product in and then ship it out, it's already there to be shipped out. And then that way you're going to have a dedicated team that are going to handle processing instead of them handling loads of different processing. They're just going to be doing it for your dedicated store. They can create custom bundles and offers and they can also do custom labeling or custom packaging. They can do all of that crazy stuff as well. Now, what are the downsides of ordering in bulk? Of course, the risk when it comes to financials. So when you order in bulk, you might have to spend, let's say, $500 to $2,000 up front. So there is a risk that you might lose that money because the store might die out or you might not sell the product. Now, when should you order in bulk and when should you move to an agent or a fulfillment center? It should be two to four weeks of consistent sales. So when you're testing your product out with the suppliers that I mentioned, when you should be testing a product, when you first get into a product, you want to be seeing for two to four weeks, five days a week. So out of seven days, out of those five days, you want to see consistent amount of sales. Now, I'm not on about revenue. I'm on about the number of orders you get. So if you're getting 10 orders a day, you want to make sure you're getting 10 orders a day for around about five days out of the seven days. And the reason why I'm not saying all seven is because you are naturally going to have some days where your actual order amount will drop. It's natural. But if you're getting more than two days a week, then there should be some form of concern. Now, the reason why I'm saying two to four weeks really depends on your confidence and it really depends how well you're doing. So if you're getting loads and loads and loads of orders a day for two weeks, then I'd consider moving to an agent. And again, this depends on your risk tolerance as well as how much order in... Now, this will purely depending on your risk tolerance and also how much you plan on ordering in bulk. Now, if you're going to get a really good deal ordering in bulk, I'd move sooner than later. I always say to people, project how much stock you'll need for around about three weeks and go from there. Start with a small order in case your store dies out. As your brand grows and becomes more confident, make bigger orders from the future. So let's say your agent or your bulk supplier might say to you, we want you to commit to ordering from us once a month. Start small and work your way up. Now, in terms of where you can buy products in bulk, I highly recommend Alibaba, DHK, Big Buy. All of those places are great to buy in bulk. Now, I wouldn't say for you guys to go straight to those places, buy that in bulk. I'd always recommend that you work with an agent and they can recommend where to buy in bulk. So let's talk about fulfilling bulk orders in 2023. There's three different methods of fulfillment that I've used when buying ordering in bulk. There's 3PL in China. Now, 3PL stands for third party legit. Logistics. They're the ones that handle all the logistics for you. They take care of iOS for you. Great communication, more expensive than usual, but you're going to get that really good communication. So we use Unify Dropshipping as an agent and a sourcing agent and for branding, or we use Hyper SKU or we use Ecom Ops. And I'll be going over how those work in a minute. Then you've also got a private agent and a warehouse. This is pretty much the smaller version of a 3PL. And this comes with great communication, a bit cheaper, can take care of iOS in-house fulfillment, fulfilling my location, fulfill control and supply chain, faster shipping around about three to five days, easy to create different bundles and offers, doesn't take that much time and a lot cheaper than a 3PL in America. Now guys, when you work with 3PLs, again, third-party logistics, you can have them in China, you can have them in America, you can have them in Canada, but do bear in mind that if you do it outside of China, it's always going to be more expensive. You are going to get better communication and slightly faster shipping, but in my opinion, I would start with 3 3PLs in China. And if your brand really does well, then move into the US or whatever country is your biggest country when it comes to sales. So if the biggest sales come from the UK, do a 3PL in the UK only if your brand's doing really big numbers. So guys, I want to quickly show you the agent that we're using for our dropshipping and e-commerce brands. And I'm going to show you the proof that we're using them in a minute. They're called Unify Dropshipping. And you can see here what they do is they're sourcing private agent and order fulfillment. They automate the products and upload them consistently. One stop drop shipping, no minimum order quantity. And then you get delivery times of seven to 15 days. And it really depends on the fulfillment center and how much you're buying in bulk. Sometimes it can be five to seven days. And you've got a one-stop service with 24 hour customer responses. You can see the delivery times can take three to eight days, five to 12 days. So they're really, really good. Secure payment, 24 hour support. And these are the services they can help you with. One-on-one -on -one VIP services, branding and customization. Let's say you want to put a logo on the product or you want to make your own version of the product. You can do that. Product sourcing. If you don't know where to get the product from, in terms of the cheapest to buy on bulk and stuff like that, they can do that. 
best after sales service, fulfillment. So they've got their own fulfillment companies that they use instead of you having to find them privately. And they do quality check-in as well, which is really important. And then on their website, they've got a few videos going over how the process works. Now, just to show you guys that I use Unified Dropshipping myself, this is what it looks like when you create an account with them. You're going to see here, you can connect your Shopify store with them and everything. Now, if I go to orders, you're going to see my orders in here. So if I go to orders, you can see manual order and you can see orders. If I click orders, you're going to see all the orders coming up for my drop shipping private label store and you can see here where it says fulfilled they have fulfilled 2980 orders for me basically 3000 orders they have fulfilled for me you can also see at the bottom of the page it says current page one and out of one page there's 3020 pages in total so that really does show you that i really do use unified drop shipping when it comes to scaling a product with my drop shipping store now i'm not going to really go over the nitty gritty stuff about unified drop shipping with you guys because you should only be using them once once you're ready to transition into buying in bulk and when it comes to scaling your store. And when it comes to the fine details, it all depends on certain stores. Your store will be different to mine. So that's why I'd recommend when you, and that's why I'd recommend when the time is ready, you go to Unify Dropshipping, you arrange a call with them, you onboard to see if you're ready for them to be a client. And that's why I'd recommend that when the time is ready for you to do this, go to Unify Dropshipping, contact them, get on a call with them and see if it's a good fit for you at that time. Because they can break down all the nitty gritty parts for you because they'll understand your dropshipping store more than me and they'll know what you need and where you need it instead of me. Now, if you want an alternative to unified dropshipping, there is Ecom Ops. Now, I haven't personally used these guys myself, but I've got friends and business partners that have used them and they're pretty much very similar to what unified dropshipping do. You can see that their services are an all-in-one China supply chain solution. So if you wanting to work in China and have all the solutions like fast shipping, fulfillment, warehouse, sourcing, customizations, integrations. These guys can do that. And it has a little bit of information about the founders and they go over why you should work with them over their competitors. And then it goes over the solutions that your business might need. So yeah, if you guys want an alternative to Unify Dropshipping, then these guys are really good. And I've heard great things from them from very credible people. So guys, that's pretty much it when it comes to fulfilling orders in bulk in 2023. That's how it works when it comes to transitioning from a traditional dropshipping store into a buying in bulk store and working with an agent. Now, I can't really go over how to do the branding for you and all that kind of stuff. When you work with Unified Dropshipping or Ecom Ops or any alternative that you look at working with, they'll give you all of the information you need on how to do that because it really depends on what store you're selling, what product you're selling. So I can't give you those little nitty gritty details. All you guys need to know from this free course is when to transition over, what are the benefits, what you should look for, and some reliable agents you can work with. And I've given you all of that just now. So that's all you guys need. Hey guys, my name is Mohammed Mahmoud and I'm a former student of the Ecom King and now a part of his mentorship team. I'm dropshipping for four years now and I'm in the process of building my own brand. In this section, I'm going to show you how to create your store design. Here's a little overview over the topics that we're going to have a look at. So we're going to have a look at how to create a logo, how to choose a banner, how to create GIFs, and the platform that we're going to use is Shopify and the team is the refresh team. So the pre-building checklist that we're going to have a look at is how to choose brand colors, how to choose a domain and create a logo, how to create the policies, how to create pages, and how to create the content of our product. So in my stores, I usually keep the colors of my store simple and clean. So I start with black, white, and a third additional color. Here on the right side, I've made an overview how colors are perceived by our customers. Depending on your product, you can just check here as an inspiration, the colors that we have listed here, and then choose this, the color that you would like. Now for this example, we're going to choose the light green one since we're going to sell a home decor product. To be able to pick the right color or to pick the code of the color, I would recommend you to install the Chrome extension Colorzilla which makes it very easy to just go over the color that you would like to pick and it immediately gives you the code of the color, like here on this example, C3E34C. To get started, we need to find the name for our brand. And the easiest way to do that after you've decided which product you would like to choose is to go to a website called namelix.com or instantdomainsearch.com. That's where I usually get inspired to find my next name to brand my store. So after you arrive on the website namelix.com, you can just type in the niche of the product that you would like to sell. So we are going to sell home decor products. So we're going to start with, for example, decor. Then we click generate. Then you can use low or medium to see like less creative or more creative results. Let's get started with medium, for example, and then we can create 
generate. Here you can take your time and really scroll through the whole list and check if there's something that you like. And then we need to check if the domain is available or not. After you finish your research, you can go to the website Instant Domain Search to check if your domain is available. This website not only shows you what domains are available, but it also gives you inspiration on what names you could choose. So let's again type in decor and you can see that decor.com, for example, is taken. But here suggestions, it shows you what you could use. So after scrolling, I, can't, I saw this name here, just decor.com, and I really like it. And you can see that the domain is available. So I think let's continue with this one. Now to create a logo, you will need a logo in its original form. You would need a logo in the transparent form. You will need a logo in the opposite colors. So for example, if you're going to add your logo to your emails or to your footer, which is normally another color, you would need it in opposite colors and you will need the favicon for your website. To create this logo, we need to go to canva.com. So after you've arrived to canva.com, we can just type in here very easily decor logo and see what comes up. Then what I would like to do is just to show me the free version, not the paid logos. Once you arrive here, you can scroll through the whole list and see which logo attracts you the most. For me, it was basically already the third one here. I think it looks really nice and it looks very brandable. So once you click on it, you can just click customize this template and start editing it. Then what I'm going to do is just change the wording here from home decor to just decor and place the favicon here or the logo here a little bit to the right so it looks a little bit nicer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose our brand colors for this font. So what you can do is just click on it, go to A, and then with the help of Colorzilla, we can just pick the color and copy the code and come here and add it to Canva. For the bottom, exactly the same. The color will be already saved. And you can also like, you can change every writing to our main color. Then I would like to have the background in white and also change the color of this icon to our main color. Then Canva already suggests you the opposite colors. So we can just click here on the main color and change it to our brand color and make sure that also the writing is white and we change the wording again and place it exactly the same spot here. Then we will have our logo also in the opposite colors. Now for the favicon, we can just copy this part here, create a new page and paste it and then make it a little bit bigger place it to the middle. And then I would like to make this our main color and the background white. And this is how our favicon will look like. Here for the bottom text, you can think about three nice keywords that match your store and put them here. Just now for this example, I will leave it as it is. After you're done, you can just click share, download, and download all three together. Now the only version that is missing is our version with the transparent background. And to make every background transparent, I recommend visiting the website remove.bg that helps you remove the backgrounds on all images. Once you arrive here, you can just click upload image, choose our image, and then it will remove its background and we can just click download. And then we will have the logo with a transparent background. So now that we have found our name and also created all versions of our logo, we can move on. The next step is going to be to open a Shopify account if you haven't already and make sure that we buy the domain. So once you've entered your Shopify dashboard, you can just click on settings, scroll down till you see domains. Another great tool that we are using is Hostinger. Hostinger is one of the most affordable shared hosting platforms out there. They offer different kinds of hosting. They have web hosting, cloud hosting, and WordPress hosting, and they even have a website builder on their platform. They're also offering VPS hosting, and you can even make your email here and claim a domain. Web hosting is their main and most affordable offer that they're giving. And here you can see that they offer us a free domain name if we do our hosting with them. So here, the first thing we're going to do is just going to type in our domain name and click search. Once you're here, you can see that the domain is going to be free. 
Then we just add it to cart. And here you can see the different web hosting options that they have. You can either choose premium hosting or business hosting. It just depends on which stage of your business you are. But in, for this example, we're going to go with the premium version that allows us to do hosting for up to a hundred websites. We get a free email. We get a free domain. And they're also offering us great service by offering us unlimited security. Once you click select, we can go with the yearly plan where we only have to pay $2.99 per year. And if you scroll down, you can see that we are getting $108 discount. Getting a free domain and all the hosting for one year costs us only about $38.64. So to sum up again, you will get a free domain and a free email. So for example, if we want to create a customer support email that's called contact at justdecor.com, you can do that here on Hostinger. Once you've made the payment, let's have a look at the dashboard. So once you log in and have a look at the dashboard, you can see that the interface is modern and easy to use. You have everything you need in one location. So you have the hosting, you have your emails, domains, the VPS and the billing information all on one place. Another important thing for a great hosting platform is their customer support. And once you're here, you can describe your issue. And if you can't find a solution to your problem, you get access to a live chat with a representative. You will have very short waiting times and they also offer multilingual customer support. So if you're just getting started, it's very important that you have a responsive customer support. Another important topic about Tostinger are the loading times. If your site takes over three seconds to load, visitors will most likely click away. That's why a fast loading time on your website is very important. If it takes more than three seconds to load, you can say that around 30% of your visitors will just click away and abandon your website. And given that Hostinger has service in USA, Asia and Europe, that shouldn't be a problem for us and we should have very fast page loading times. So yeah, that's everything you need to know about Hostinger. So if you want to get started with an affordable hosting platform, we totally recommend to use Hostinger. You will even get a free domain when you choose the premium plan and also get a free email. Once you have bought the domain and connected it to your store, the next step is going to be to prepare our product description that will help us to work on our store design later on. So here you can see the product description that I have prepared for my product for this levitating plant pot and potential pictures and a GIF that I would be using in my store. In the first part, you can see that I have a catchy headline. For example, like here is some science inspired magic for your home or office. And then I'll be talking about the product and its benefits. I usually try to explain it in an interesting way and also very importantly, explain how the product works and give them a step-by-step -step guide. As you can see in the part below, I show my customers in three steps how to install the product. Then I've also prepared a short description with the benefits list that I'm going to be using on my homepage. So if somebody lands on my homepage, I can grab his attention and make sure that he goes to the product page and ultimately buys the product. If you're struggling to find content for your product, like inspiring text that you can use to write your product description and also the short description, let me share some tips and tricks with you. The first one is to go to Google and type in your product name and add dot my shopify.com and this will show us other shopify stores that are selling the product and we're going to use this information only to get inspired and not to copy paste as you can see we have typed in levitating flower pot dot my shopify.com and now we should be able to see other shopify stores that are selling the same product as you can see i've already checked them and got inspired by them but you shouldn't copy paste and try to be as unique as possible with your descriptions. To make sure that your texts are as unique as possible, I would recommend you to go to the website plagiarismdetector.net and type in your text here. It will show you how many percentages of your texts are taken from other stores. And then you can just make sure that you change those texts into your own words. Now to find the content, the pictures and the videos that you're going to use, I would recommend to go to AliExpress and search for different suppliers of your product and ask them if you can use their pictures and their videos for your store. Another advice I can give you to find your product as fast as possible is to download the AliExpress app on your phone, use the camera function and take a picture of your product and it will show you a list of products that look similar to yours and most likely your product is going to be on that list too. Now to get started, we can choose on the first supplier here and you can check the different variants they are selling and also the pictures that they have. After contacting the supplier and getting the okay from him, you can install a Chrome extension called AliSave 
that allows you just to click on the icon and it will download all the pictures for you. Same here for the product pictures. You can just click again on the icon and it will download all the pictures that they have directly to your desktop. Another source to use to get inspired for your texts is to go to the AliExpress description and check how the supplier is describing his product and we can use that also as an inspiration for our store. And if your supplier is providing you with a nice video like here on this example, you can just click on it and download it. Just click on the three dots here on the right side and click download. And again, if you want to download all the pictures that the supplier has also in his description, the AliSave Chrome extension will show you the icon here and you can just click on it and download all the pictures from the description too. Another great way to find content for your product like pictures, descriptions, and videos is to go to CJ Dropshipping and check multiple, again, suppliers who offer the same product. And then you can check the description. You can check the pictures that they are showing and also download them and use them for your store. You can just click this icon here and then it will download the images. And also another way to find great content for your product is to go to Alibaba and also ask the supplier if you can uh, use his pictures, you can contact the supplier here and then download the images and pictures that you would like to use. And you can also check the description down below. Another great thing you can do is go and research the benefits of having your product. So for example, in my case, what are the benefits of having home decoration items at your home? So here you can see that a beautifully decorated home is proven to have a positive effect on our moods. It is important for us to surround ourselves with things that we think are beautiful as well as things that represent some part of us. So you can also get inspired by multiple articles here and you can find great reasoning why your customer should buy your product and enjoy it. Now that we have great pictures and a video, let's create a GIF for our product description to make sure that our product description is more interactive and also explaining our product a little bit better. To do that, we need to go to the website easygif.com and you can just easily upload a video here. Once you have uploaded the video, you can just click upload video and it will take you to this page. Then you can click play and select the exact moment where you would like to your GIF to start and where you would like your GIF to end. So if you want your GIF to start at the second 19, for example, here at this shot, you can just click use current position and then continue playing the video till you find the spot where you would like your GIF to end. And then you click for the end time, click use current position. Once you have selected the start time and the end time, you can just scroll down and click convert to GIF. Once you have done that, you can preview your GIF and see if you're happy with it or not. Once you're happy with it, you can just click save and it will download your GIF for you on your desktop. Now that we have our product description ready, our images ready, our GIFs ready, we can get started by designing our store. So the first thing I would like to do once I start editing my store is to finish up the product description. So to do that, let's go to products and choose our product and start editing the product description. We can remove the description that's already there and paste the one that we have prepared. Here, we will make sure that we have this headline. So we make it as heading three. That's the size I'm always using. And then make sure that we have text, picture, text, GIF, text. So it's a little bit interactive. So yeah, to do that, let's import our first image and just add it to the text. Then here, after the second paragraph, add an image again. And third, I always like to choose the GIF so people can imagine how the product looks and works. So yeah, this is how it should look like. We have a text, we have a headline, then a text and a picture. And yeah, this is, this is already good. Once you're done with everything, you can hit save. The next topic that we need to talk about is the pricing because here down below, this is the last part that we need to finish up our product page. So to set the price, we need to check how much the product costs us in fulfillment. So if we take the AliExpress price for this product, the price is $65.99 and shipping time takes around 30 days. And another supplier that I chose as an example is for example, CJ Dropshipping, where the fulfillment cost is $74.70, but the shipping time is around 10 days. 
So we always need to make sure that we have a big enough margin because we need to calculate the fulfillment costs and also our customer acquisition costs through Facebook. That's why we need to choose a price that is allowing us to spend money on Facebook and still get customers and be profitable. Another thing you can do is also check the average market price. So if you type in again your product name on Google and search other vendors, you can see for how much they are selling it. And we don't want to choose a price that is much higher than them because we want to either have a better offer than them or be in the same price range. So the average cost for this product is around $139. The initial price that I would choose for my product to find my right audience and to get my first sales is going to be 1.5 times my fulfillment cost. So if I decide to go with CJ dropshipping and my fulfillment cost is $74.70, I will go around 1.5x this price, which is going to be around $111.90, which will give me a margin of $37.20 margin. So to change the price for all my variants at the same time, we can just click here, select all and then open bulk editor and you can select all of them here and choose 111.90. And if we want to add a compare price, so for example, if we are running an offer where we're telling our customers save $30 on our store, you can just mark all of those fields again and then just add a price that is $30 higher than your selling price so here it will be 141.90 and then you click save to get started with designing our store you can click on online store on the left side and just scroll down here and explore the te free team library the team that we're going to use for our stores is going to be the refresh team and to activate it we will just click add then you need to wait till your team is installed once your team is installed you can click publish on it to make sure that it's going to be our main team on our store then what we need to do is just click customize and start editing the team. The first thing I like to do is always to add our logo. For that, you need to click on header. And here where it says logo image, you click select image. And then you upload your logo. Once you've uploaded your logo, it should look like this. And now you can see that the store colors are not matching our logo. So this is the next thing that we need to edit. To do that, you need to go to team settings, colors, and start editing the colors here. To start editing the color, you can use the color scheme here on your header and make sure that you, for example, choose background one. And once you do that, we can go to team settings and search background one, and we can find it here and make it white, for example. And then you can see that it starts matching. If we want our announcement bar to be the same green as our logo, since we installed the Chrome extension Colorzilla in the past, we can just click on the Chrome extension, click on color picker and copy the code again. Once you have done that, you can click on accent one and paste the code here. Once you've done that, you can see that your announcement bar has the exact same color as your logo. And then I would always recommend to save your progress instead of losing all the work that you have done. So scrolling down, we want to add a nice picture that grabs our customer's attention. You can create a banner yourself on Canva or just use a nice picture that we have downloaded from our supplier. Once you have done that, you can come here and check the text and make sure that you add your product name and then also add a nice text describing the product in a very brief way and leave the button label as shop now and link it to your product. To do that, just click here and choose products and then choose your product. So every time somebody clicks on shop now, they will land on your product page. Once you have done that, you can see that the button color is not the same as our brand color. And if you would like to change that, you can just switch here the color scheme from background two to background one, because background one is the, is the place where we have added the green color, and then it should switch to a green button, exactly like that. And again, once you've done something, always click save. Now here on the left side, you can see what sections you have added to your homepage. We have started now with the slideshow and here you can see that it shows you a featured collection. This is very important if you have a multi product store where you have multiple products that you would like to sell and add them all to a collection and add it here as a featured collection so your customers can see that you have multiple items. But in this store, we only have one product. So we're going to hide this, scroll down where it says add section and click featured product. 
The featured product, we will then take it up and add it after the slideshow. After you have done that, you click on featured product here, select product, and then we're going to select our product. So once we have added the product here, we can add the next section. We're going to choose image with text to make sure that we can give our customers more information about the product on the home page. For that, we have already prepared a text while preparing this store. You just click on it, select image, and then you can select another image of your product and make sure that you add text and a headline. To edit the text, you just need to go back and make sure that you click image with text. So this is an example how it could look like add a headline and a short description to it. We do it exactly the same for another. Again, select the section, make sure that you select another image, and then again, click on image with text to add your own in text. Then the next section I would recommend having is subscribe to our emails and then add a short subheading, which is already pre-made on this team, which says be the first to know about our new, about new collections and exclusive offers. You can edit this text and make sure that they leave their email address here. And the next part is already going to be the footer where we are going to upload firstly our image, the logo, the inverse image that we have created to make sure that it looks good and write a short description about our store. But first, let us upload the image. So once you have uploaded your logo, it will look like this. And here we can again write a small description about our product or about our store. And here is where we are going to link our pages but we will do that in the next step. Once you have added your store name and the small description, you can click save. Once we have saved everything, we can have a look at how our store is looking like currently. For that, you need to click on this desktop icon and click full screen. So this is how our store is looking currently. Make sure that we have our main colors, black, white, and the light green one. And this is how our homepage is looking like. And once you're happy with it, you can again just click save again. So once we have had the look at our store, there are still a few things that we need to change. So the first thing, for example, that we need to change is the announcement bar. You can just click on it. And on the left side, you can change the text. And here you can either type in your offer that you're offering your customers or just type in free track shipping. Now for those among us that don't like how their store is looking by just choosing one picture of their product. And at the same time, it's not looking that nice, like the picture is too big. We can go to Canva and create a website banner. To do that, you need to go to canva.com and type in website banner. Once you've done that, you can either start a design from scratch. This means just choose one design and delete everything and design it yourself. Or you can scroll down and check if there's a design that you actually like and you would like to change. So for this example, we will go like on this one. And the cool thing about Canva is that it will suggest you other designs in the same category. And now for this store, I'm going to go with this one. And then you can just click customize this template and start designing this one. The first thing I do is because we already have a shop now button on Shopify is to remove this part here. I like to have light backgrounds. That's why I'm going to change the color from black to white to see how it looks. It's still looking a little bit grayish, but that's okay. Then here we're going to type in our product name and I try to keep it in one line. So I'm going to reduce the size of the font. Once you've done that, you can just make it here a little bit smaller, click on it again and choose the size that you would like to have. Now here where it says new collection, you can either let it or just type in new arrival. If it's a one product page, you can also delete it completely. And the next thing we're going to do is to make sure that we're going to choose our color code on Colorzilla, click on color picker and copy the code, come back to the writing, click on the colors and type in our code here. And it's going to choose our code. And the same thing with this circle here and choose our color, which is going to be already chosen here. Now the next thing we need to do is also to create to make sure that our product is showing here. So we're going to delete this. And again, to make sure that we have a product that has a transparent background, we can go to remove.bg and upload an image of our product. Once we have done that, it should look like this. And then you can just click download. Once we have done that, we make sure that we just drag the image up and click on it and it should show on our design. Then we can place it here and here you can see that we have two shadows so we can just remove one make sure that we have one and place it in the middle and then place our product above then you can play around with the sizing of your image you can make it a lot bigger and place it on the right side after playing around a little bit with the designs and the shadow and the text size once i'm happy i can just click on share click on download 
and download PNG. Now an issue that most of you might face while downloading this picture is that it will give you an error message on Shopify that your picture is too large, like the size is too large. And a way to solve that is to go to the website imagecompressor.com and just upload your picture here and it will compress your image and you can download it in a smaller size. Once your image is compressed, you can just click download and start using it. To upload your image, we can click again on the slideshow, click change image and upload the image. Now you can see that we won't need the text container here. So we can just remove the heading here, remove the text. And if you want, you can also add this text to your Canva image. We will keep the shop now button, but just here, show container on desktop, we will click off. Once you've done that, you can go to image overlay opacity. You can see that our image is showing a little bit darker here, so we can make it zero and make sure that the position of our button is going to be on the bottom left. To do that, you can click here and choose bottom left. And you will see that the shop now button will show here. Once you've done that, like always, click save. Now, if you want to show some reviews already on your homepage, you can scroll down, you can search the multi-columns part here and turn it back on and leave it here. Then we can click on the first one and here you can see that we can select an image. And now to make sure that we can show some reviews, we can go to Google and search transparent five-star review. So once you're on Google, you can click on one and make sure that you save it. Then here where it says multi-column, we can select image and upload our image. And then you can click select and you can see that it appears as five star reviews. And here you can write your review one and we can repeat that process here on the second one. Again, select image, upload the five stars and here you can write your review two. Here the same thing and also for the last one. And then like always click save. Now, if you're not happy with the font that is preset on your store, you can click on team settings and search typography and here you can play around with all the fonts and see which one you will like the most for your store. Now, the next thing we need to do is click here on the menu and select checkout. Once the checkout page has loaded, you can go to team settings and scroll down till it says checkout. And then you go where it says logo and select an image. And here you will upload your logo. Now to make your logo a little bit more visible, you can make the logo size large and you can choose the position either left or to the center. That's what I usually choose. Once you've done that, you can scroll further down and where it says accents and buttons, I would recommend to use your store color, the green one, and again here on buttons too. So your checkout page looks more branded. Then you can scroll down and check the buttons. Once you're happy with it, you can again click set. Once you've checked that your homepage looks good on your mobile version, you can go to the product page and do the same. So here we are on the product page and now we can choose the mobile version, make sure that it looks good. What I like to do here, for example, is where it says my brand name. I just delete that part and then you can scroll down and see if everything's okay. And once you arrive to this part, you will see that the refresh team has a very cool feature with drop down menus to give more information about your product and your services. And this is what we're going to edit next. You will just click on it and here you can edit the content. So it looks like this collapsible content. And here you have the different sections and we're going to start with the title. For that, you need to click on the collapsible content and here you can edit the title. So for example, here you can choose a title like discover all benefits of the levitating flower pot. So for the first piece of content here on highlights, I always like to add like a small description of the product itself. And for the second item where it says sent, I like to change it to specifications. And for the icon, I use a clipboard. Once I've chosen the clipboard here, I will add some information about the product and make sure that it looks good. And I mostly get in the information from my supplier or directly on AliExpress. So this is how it would look like giving them more information about the product itself. Then for the next item, I put how it works. And then I will add a description on how the product works. For the icon, I choose a question mark. Once I've added the description on how it works, we can check again how it looks. And here it's explaining how the rotation functions and how the magnet works on my product. And here what's included, you can again add a box and tell the customer what they can expect when they buy the product. And once I finish the description for this one, they can see that the levitating flower pot is in included, a USB cable, but the plant itself is not included. Once you've done that, again, click save. Now on the left side, you can see that there are still more items showing up here on your product page. And what I like to do is just to close them off. We don't need any product recommendations. We don't need the multi-column here. We also don't need the rich text, another rich text. Just close them all off. 
and you can also close the email sign up on the product page. So this is how your product page should look like. Easy, simple, and understandable for your customer. Then we click save. Now the next thing we need to edit is our menu. You can see that we need to edit our menu on top and also we need to edit our footer menu because we need to add all the pages that are missing. To do that, we need to go back to our Shopify dashboard and click below online store on pages and click add page. First page we're going to add are the FAQs and you can find in the cheat sheet all the templates for all pages. So now for this example, I'm just going to add the templates. You can copy and paste them, make sure that they look good. And once you've added them, you can just click save. Once you've done that, you can click create another page. And this time we're going to add our story. Once you've pasted it in from the cheat sheet, you can click save. Then we're going to create another page. And this time it's going to be shipping and delivery. Once you've added the shipping and delivery page, you can again click save and create another page. Now, once you've added all the pages, you should have the privacy policy page, returns and refunds, terms of service, shipping and delivery, our story, FAQs and the contact. Now to make sure that it shows properly on our menus, we need to go to navigation. And here you can see that you have the footer menu and a main menu. We're going to edit the main menu first. In the main menu, we would like to delete the catalog and add our product page. So here you just click on link first, select products, and then click on your product. And then you click add. And we want to position that one in the middle. Once you've done that, you can click save menu. After that, we can also add a track your order page. For that, you need to type in track your order. And once you've typed in track your order, you can just add the link parcelapp.com and just click here down below. Once you've done that, you can click add. After adding the home page, our product page, our contact page, and our track your order page, you can click save menu. Then you go back and now it's time to edit our footer menu. So here we can delete the search and the first menu item that we're going to add is the FAQ page. So here you can just go to pages and search the FAQs and click add. After the FAQs, we're going to add our returns and refund page and click add. Once you've added all the pages to your FAQ page, your shipping and delivery, returns and refunds, privacy policy, your contact page and your terms of service, you can click save. Now to make sure that they appear on our store, we need to go back to our Shopify editor. Once we're here, we can refresh the page and you will see that our menu on top has been updated. Now we need to make sure that our footer menu is updated. And here you can see that it's updated too. We have one section that we don't need, so we can just delete it and click save. And that's it for our store so far. And now we can have a final look at our store and how it's looked. So guys, this is everything you needed to know to get your store ready. Now let's move on to the next section. Hey guys, in this section, I'm going to teach you which apps you need to install to your Shopify store to improve your conversions and make sure that your customers have a better experience on your store. To install apps, you can click here on the search bar, click on apps, and then click where it says all recommended apps and scroll down and click on Shopify app store. The first app that we're going to install is AutoDS. AutoDS will help us import products to our store and also help us fulfill our orders. To find the app, you just need to type in AutoDS in the search bar. Once you've done that, you will land on this page and we're going to install the first app on the left side. You just click on it and click add app. Once you've done that, you can click install app. Here, you can either sign up with a new account or log in if you already have an existing account. Once you've logged in, you can see that your store has been successfully added to your account. Once you've connected it to your store, the next thing we need to do is going to install a Google Chrome extension that will help us import products to AutoDS. To do that, you need to type in AutoDS dropshipping helper in Google, and it will lead you to this page. And what we are going to do is to add it to our Chrome extensions. Now to import the product to our AutoDS platform, you will see that once you've installed the Chrome extension, this button here will show up. So the only thing we need to do is just click on the button and choose our store and then click save. Once you've done that, you just need to wait till it's imported to your AutoDS account. If we go back to our AutoDS account, you will see that on the left side, you can click on drafts and you will see that your product will show up here. Another way to add products to your store is just to click add products on the top left and then click single product. Then you choose your store and click next. And here you just need to type in your product URL. And once you've done that, you can just click publish to store. Before importing the product to our store, we can save time by editing the product already on AutoDS. To do that, you can just click on the arrow here on the left side. And here you can see that you can start editing the title in which collection you would like to have your product and the tags. We can also already work on the description 
on the variants that we want to import to our store and which ones not. We can also choose which images we want to import to our store and which ones not, and then also talk about the item specifications. So to do that, we can start with the title. We can just delete what's here. And since we have already prepared a list with our description and the title, we can just type in the title here. Make sure that monitoring is on for the stock, for the price and also auto order. Then we can go to the description. We can delete what's written here. So select everything and just delete it. And then import the product description that we have already prepared for our product. Then we can also check the variants. So for example, if you don't want to import the UK plug or the EU plug, you can unselect them. You can also check which ones are in stock and which ones not. Then for the images, exactly the same. Like you can choose which images you would like to add and which ones not. If you have more images, you can just click here on add image. And once you're done with everything, you can click save and import. So once you've done that, your product will appear on the product page. The next thing you can do with AutoDS is to set automations. This means, so every time an order comes through, your order will be fulfilled automatically and you don't have to do anything. To do that, you can come to the bottom left and click setting. Once you arrive here, you will see Lister. Here you can check the shipping methods and see that they have the options cheapest, cheapest with tracking, fastest with tracking. Here you just need to check with your supplier and see which option they are offering you. Down here you can see other settings that you can have a look at, but we shouldn't worry much about them now. The next thing we need to have a look at are automations that we need to set up. To do that, you need to click on automations here on the top. One automation that we can set is the pricing automation. That means that the product price on our store changes with the automation that we set. To set an example, we'll do an automation together. So here you can just click on add automation. We will name it automatic pricing and then click next. And here you can see that raise price by sales performance is turned on. And for example, if we get 20 orders a week, we tell AutoDS to automatically increase our prices on our store. So here you can see number of sales is higher than 20 per week. So what we can test out in the beginning is to increase our product price by $2. So this means if we get 20 orders a week, our prices will automatically rise by $2. Our main goal with this strategy is going to find a price where our sales are starting to decrease. So we're trying to test as many prices as possible. As our prices are starting to decrease, we will know the highest price that is working for our store and that is providing us the highest margins. Here on AutoDS, if you click next, they also have the same automation if your sales are lower than you expect. And then you can also start lowering the price to see what price works the best for your product. So here to lowering the price, let's say, so it works perfectly with our other automation. So if our sales are lower than 20 per week, then we change it here to week, then we would like to decrease our product price by $2 to see if a lower product price works better for us or not. Then you can click next and choose the product where you would like to use this automation. And once you have done that, you just click finish. The next thing we would like to have a look at is when we go back to supplier settings is to click on orders and make sure that those two boxes are turned on. So our orders will be marked as fulfilled by AutoDS automatically. To understand this process a little bit better, you can just have a look at the question marks here to understand what's really going on. Same for this one. And if you have more questions, you can easily just contact the customer support here on the bottom left and make sure that all your questions are answered. Since we are choosing the option of automatic fulfillment here, you can just click on balance here and make sure that you load your account with balance. You can either link your credit card or you can make sure that you top up your balance and every time you get an order, it will be fulfilled automatically using your balance. The last thing we need to do here on AutoDS is go to notifications and make sure that all order notifications are turned on so you know exactly what's going on with your orders. So here you need to know if an order failed or if you already get your tracking numbers, if you got a new order, if the order was processed successfully, you also want to get notifications about your stock and also about price changes and make sure that you set your emails for daily to make sure that 
you are always up to date with the stuff that is going on on AutoDS. And once you've done that, you can just click save. The next app that we need to install to our store is going to be Luke's Reviews. So we get some reviews on our product. Once you type in Luke's Reviews in the Shopify App Store, you can just click on the first app and make sure that you click Add App, then install the app. To get started here, I would always choose the beginner version. And once you're starting to scale your store, I would upgrade to growth or unlimited. So here you can click on the start 14 day free trial and here click take beginner instead. Once you've done that, you can click approve and it should take you to this page and then you can click continue. Here you can choose the, your store's primary language. It's going to be English. Click continue. Then here you can already choose the star color. You can either choose your brand color or this golden color. And for now we will leave it like that. But if you would like to play around with it, you can use your brand color here and your star colors here. Once you've done that, you can click continue. Here on this section, Luke's will ask you when they should reach out to customers and ask them for reviews. So here I generally choose 28 days since by then the product should arrive to the customer and this should be after fulfillment. Once you've done that, you can just click continue. Here, it's also a great feature that if a customer posts a review with a picture, they will get an automatic discount of 15% and then you can click continue. And once you arrive to this page, we want to import reviews and click import now. Once we arrive to this page, we just need to drag this up to our bookmarks and it will show here on our bookmarks. Then we just need to go to AliExpress and search our product, click on the bookmark and make sure we import it to our stored URL. We want all four stars ratings and up. We want to import them from the beginning from all countries. All reviews should be translated to English. Here we also need to choose the product first. And here we can choose extra options if you want to re import reviews only with pictures or fetch most recent reviews. But I don't do that in the beginning and I just click import. And here they will show you the different reviews and here you can import them or reject them. So this looks like a very nice picture and then it's a nice text. You can click import, this one too, import. Here you can check the text if it's good or not. Then if it's good, I would import it. And once you feel like you've imported enough good reviews, you can just click finish importing. Once you've done that, you can click on reviews and you can check your reviews. You can see that you have 19 reviews now with a five star rating, which should, should look good on your Shopify store. To double check, you can come to your product page and it should show up as 19 five stars reviews. And you can scroll down and see that you have got some nice reviews here on your product. The next app that we're going to install is going to be Klaviyo. With Klaviyo, we're going to start our retention based marketing. This means we're going to retarget people who already visited our store, but they didn't complete a purchase. And that's a very effective way of making our store profitable. Klaviyo is also a fantastic app to start building up your email list to inform your future customers about new products or new offers. This is a great way to build a community for your brand. We always need to set up Klaviyo before we start running ads for our products. It will lower our customer acquisition costs by converting more customers that have visited our website. To get started with Klaviyo, you just need to type in Klaviyo on the Shopify app store and come here and click add app. Once you've arrived here, you can install app. Once you start setting up your account, you will arrive to this page and here we can type in our sender name. So for example, Anna from Just Decor and our email address is going to be contact at justdecor.com. Once you've done that, you can click continue. And here it's asking you, what are your goals? Our business goal is going to be to earn more revenue. With Klaviyo, we're going to use email only. And once we arrive here to this dashboard, the first thing we're going to do is to create a sign up form. To do that, you can come here on the left side and click sign up forms and it will lead you to this page. We are going to use sign up forms to collect email addresses of our customers that we can contact in the future with new offers and with our new products and make sure that we can grow our community. To incentivize people visiting our store to enter their email address, we're going to give them a special offer on our pop-up. Here you can scroll down and check out different designs on how to create a pop-up and you can choose the one that you like the most. For this example, I'm going to use this simple one and start editing it. Here you can give your pop-up a name and add it to a subscriber list. 
So here on this one, I'm going to add them to my newsletter email subscriber list. Once you've done that, you can click create form. Editing this pop-up is pretty simple. So if you would like to edit this text here, you can just click on it and it will appear on the left side. Here to incentivize my customers a little bit more to type in their email address, I, instead of giving them a percentage offer, I will give them a dollar offer. So I will tell them exactly that with the first offer, you can save $5. I will leave the rest of the text as, as they are. The only thing we can change is the picture here on the left side and choose either image of our product or choose something like a gift that shows them that we're gifting them $5. To find a nice image, you can just go to unsplash.com and once you're here, you can just type in gift and choose a nice picture that you would like to use. Now for this example, I'm just going to download this one, come back to Clavio, hit replace, upload an image, and just drag my picture here. And this is how it will look like. Once we've done that, you can see the steps here on the top. We are here on email opt-in. If you want, you can add a further step here in between, but um, for this example, I'm not going to do that. Currently, it's not necessary. So we can directly go to our success step. You just need to click on it. And here you need to give them the offer. So we've promised our customers that we will give them $5 off. To make sure that we can give them this offer, we need to create a discount code on our Shopify store that we're going to communicate here on the success page. To do that, we need to go back to Shopify, go to discounts here on the left side and create our first discount. So here, you can type in an amount of order because we're giving them $5 off. You can choose a random name for this uh, discount or just name it save five. And here, instead of percentage, we're going to use fixed amount and it's going to be $5. Then you scroll down here, you can add a little bit more specifications if you want your customer only to use it once, or here you can even um, set it for a minimum purchase amount. So you're only giving those $5 off if your customer purchases items higher than $50. But now for this example, we're just going to save the discount and give our customers $5 off if they give us their email address. Here you can just type in your discount code save five. Once we've done that, you can just again edit the image, click on the image, hit replace, then your picture should already be here. And once you've done that and you're happy with everything, you can make it live and hit publish. And then you can click publish form and go to Shopify. Once you arrive to Shopify, you will see that your sign up form is starting to show up. The next thing we need to set up are our flows. First, we're going to set up our welcome series. This is especially for the ones who have signed up through the pop-up to our email list and we would like to introduce them to our brand. Second, we're going to install the abandoned cart emails where we are going to retarget people who have already added a product to their cart, but they didn't complete their purchase. And we would like to make sure that they complete their purchase. And the third flow that we're going to set up is going to be the customer's thank you to build loyalty with our customers, incentivize them for an upsell and spread awareness about other products that we might have on our store. To get started with the welcome series, you can just click here, get started. And then here, when it asks you choose list, we're going to choose our newsletter list and click continue. You can just click on thanks for signing up. Make sure that on the left side, you turn smart sending off and turn UTM tracking on. Once you've done that, you can just click back and done. Then you can click on the email again and click edit. To get started with the emails, I would always like to choose a template that I can change. So you can just click on the arrow here next to edit email and click change template. Once you've done that, you will arrive to this page and you will get different designs that you can start editing and make your emails look attractive. You can scroll down and find the template that you like. Now for this example, I'm going to use Black Friday one sale and start editing this one. To use this template, you just need to click use template. The first thing that we're going to do is to change the logo. For that, you just need to click on it, click replace, upload image, and then you upload your logo. Once you've uploaded your logo and you would like to play with the size, you can just click edit, click resize. And here you can type in the sizes that you would like to have on your email. I always like to work on the mobile version of the email since most of my emails are going to be opened from the mobile. So you can either work on the desktop version of your email or work on mobile. I always tend to work on the mobile version to make sure that it looks good on my mobile. So here for the title, I'm going to choose 
instead of start your shopping early, I'm, I'm going to delete that and I type in the exclusive home decor collection since I'm selling home decor products. And then I'm going to mark all of this and make it a little bit smaller so it looks good. And here where it says Black Friday deals are here, I'm going to type in our product name. Here, I'm going to change this picture and add our product picture. Here on the text, we have already prepared the text in the cheat sheet that you can copy paste and just add your store details inside. To do that, you can just click here, again, mark all this text and paste the text that we have prepared. So here we have a welcome message to our customers and also give them the same discount, the save five discount to make sure that they can use it. Here you can make sure that the spacing looks fine and that you highlight the discount code. Here you can add the button and instead of shop deals, you can type in shop now. And here where it says the URL, you just add your product page link. Once you've done that, you can here click on color and type in your brand color name so your email is branded with the same colors as like your store. Here, you can add your social links if you have any. If you don't, you can just delete this section. And again, down here, you can choose the background color as your store color. The same thing we're also go going to add here on the top. Just click on it and change the code to your brand color and hit enter. To edit this background, you can just click on styles and come to background template. And if you would like to use an image, you can use an image or just close this one and just use a white background to keep it clean and simple. Once you're finished with your email, you just, you can click save and exit. Once you're here, you can change the subject line and again, click on the arrow here next to edit email and click save as template. And here we're going to name it as our store, just decor template. So we don't have to edit all the emails again, just choose the just decor template and we will already have everything set up. Once you have done all of that, you can click done. Now the first email is ready and we can set it from draft to live. And here you can click dismiss. The next thing we're going to do is just going to change the order of follow us on social media and check out our best sellers since we are going to give them our offers first and then at the end ask them to follow us on social media so for the offers we're going to wait three days i will leave it just as it is and then again wait four days to send them the email to follow us on social media to edit this one you can just again click on it go to smart sending on left on the left side turn it off and turn utm tracking on and again, click on the three dots and click edit. And here, once, since we have prepared a template, you can just click on the arrow next to edit email and click change template, click drag and drop. Here, instead of choosing one from the pre-made ones, we can go to my templates and choose just the core template. Once you have done that, you can click use template. So here you will see that your logo is already here. The picture is already here. And the only thing we need to do now is going to be to change the text here. For that, you can again check the cheat sheet and I'm going to paste the template text here on this email. You can just again click on it, make sure that you select everything here on this email and paste the new text. And here you will have some boxes where you type in your product description and images. Here you can insert your promotion details. And at the end, you will add your name and your store details. One thing you need to check too, is that you remove your organization name or your full address if you don't want to show that on your emails. But here for this one, we can just click again, save and exit. And here, instead of best sellers, you can type in, check out our offer. Once you've done that, you can click done. Same here, once we're done with the email, we can set it from draft to live. The whole purpose of the second email is to introduce our customers to our store's best sellers. If we have multiple items, we are going to highlight any special deals or promotions that we have. And you can also include customer reviews or testimonials to give potential customers an idea of the quality of our products and services. Additionally, you can also share more about your store's mission and values and how your products align with those values. This can help customers feel more connected to your brand and understand what sets you apart from other stores. On the third and final email on the welcome series, we are going to focus on building a relationship with our customers and encourage them to engage with our store. 
This could include inviting them to follow our social media accounts or join our loyalty program to stay connected and earn rewards. Additionally, we can highlight any resources or services that we offer to help customers make informed purchasing decisions, such as product guides, size charts, or a customer service hotline. To edit this template, you can just click on it again and make sure that you choose UTM tracking on and smart sending off and click on the three dots and hit edit. Once you've done that, you can go to, to the arrow next to edit email and change template. Use again, drag and drop and go to my templates and click our just decor template. Then you scroll down and click use template. Once you've done that, you can again click on the text, go to the cheat sheet and copy the one that we have prepared for you there. Make sure that you insert your social media platforms if you have any, and if you don't, you can just keep this last email closed so your customers won't get it. Once you've done that, you can click save and exit. You can leave this text here, follow us on social media and click done. Once you've done that, again, change it from draft to live and click exit. Here you can see that the welcome series is turned on and is going to be to send to everybody who added their email to the newsletter list. The next flows that we need to create are the abandoned card flows. Here again, you can click get started. And here you can see those emails will be sent if somebody started their checkout. And here, instead of waiting four hours, we're going to wait 15 minutes to send them their first email. Once we've done that, you can just click save and start editing the first email. Same here, and you can leave smart sending off and turn UTM tracking on and start editing the email. To do that, you can click edit. And again, we're going to choose the template that we have created and click drag and drop and go again to my templates and choose our template. Once you've done that, you can click use template and scroll down and go to the cheat sheet where you can see the first template created for you. Once you've pasted in the text, you can just check it out again and click save and exit. Here on the subject, you can type in also what's written on the cheat sheet. And here you just need to type in your product name. Once you've done that, you can click done. Here, we are going to change it from draft to live. For the second email, we're going to wait instead of 20 hours, we're going to wait four hours. And then you click save. And then again, click on the email itself and make sure that you turn smart sending off and UTM tracking on. And then we're going to edit this email too. Once we're here, we're going to choose the template. We can click change template. Again, click drag and drop. Go to my templates and choose the template that we have created. Once we have it, you can click use template. Now for this text, again, the only thing we need to do is going to be to change the text just click on the text and go to the cheat sheet and paste the text that is prepared for the second email. You can copy it, come back here and paste it. And here the interesting thing is when you come to this part to make it even easier for you, we're offering a special discount. Then you type in your product name and just for you. And here you are going to create a new code. So here you are going to give them a better offer. So for example, you can offer $10 off and you just need to type in your discount code here that you're going to give your customers and here discount amount. It could be a percentage discount. You can offer 20% off. Just important that you type in your discount code here and the amount off that you're going to give here so your customer can go and click on this link here, the checkout and use the discount that you're giving them. Once you came up with a good idea for a discount that you can afford giving your customers, you can click again, save and exit and edit the subject line. For the subject line, we're going to add your product name here and then is waiting for you. So for example, the levitating flower pot is waiting for you. Everything else we're going to leave as it is and we're going to click done. Once you've done that, we're going to change our email from draft to live. The next thing we're going to do is going to duplicate the waiting hours since we want to send as third email. So here you can just click clone and drag this below our last email and change it from four hours to 24 hours. Once we've done that, you can click save and then we're going to duplicate this email here and just drag it down 
after wait one day and start editing this email too. Here, everything is already going to be ready. So we can just directly click edit email. So for the last email, we're going to click here again and type in the text that we have prepared for you in the cheat sheet. Once you've done that, you can just again fill in the missing information here. And once you've done that, you can just click save and exit. For the subject line, we're going to add this line here. Your cart is still waiting for you and so is our discount. And here you will type in the promotion you're giving your customers. Once you've done that, you can click done. And again, from manual, switch it to live and make sure that you click exit. The next flow that we need to add is going to be our customer thank you. For that, you just need to click get started on customer thank you, then edit the first one. And again, make sure that you turn smart sending off and you turn to UTM tracking on, and we will start editing the first one. Once we have pasted that in, you can again click save and exit. And for the subject line, you type in your order confirmation. And here where it says store name, you can just add your store name. Once you've done that, you can click done and then change it from draft to live. And once you've done that, you can click exit. The next app that we're going to install is going to be SMS pump. And once you click on it, you again, you just click add app. Once you arrive here, you click add sales channel. Once it's downloaded, you can click get started now. Once you've logged in, you can click set up SMS only. Here you can type in your company name, type in your phone number, if you have an additional address and select your industry. The welcome message to your SMS subscribers can be as here in the template. If you want to change it a little bit, you can change it, but I will leave it for now and click finish. Once you arrive to this page, we need to set up our flows and automations and just click here on the left side to access them. Once you have arrived to this page, you can delete all the flows that are already here and we're going to create them all from scratch. Once it looks like this, you can click explore more flows and click create new flow. So here we're going to change the name of our flow to abandoned checkout. Once you've changed the name, you can click save. And here we're going to choose our first trigger. Here on the left side, you will see the different triggers and for the abandoned checkout, we're going to choose the abandoned checkout trigger and then we will add a delay. And here interval, we're going to choose minutes and we want to send our first SMS after 15 minutes. So here type in 50. So here you will see the first trigger is abandoned checkout. Then we wait for 15 minutes and then we're going to add another step where we are going to add an action. The action is going to be an SMS. Here you will have a text already prepared for you and you can delete all the texts that are here and paste the text that we have prepared for you in the cheat sheet. Here in this text, you will see that we have some brackets that you need to fill out. So here you need to type in your product name and just make sure that you look out for those spaces where you need to type in your own information. And once you've done that, you can click save. Once you click save, you can again, once again, add a name for your flow. So we're going to name it abandoned checkout flow. Once you've done that, you can click save. We're not done yet with editing. So here again, we're going to add a step. And now we're going to add a condition. So here as a condition, you can choose customer made an order after flow started is true. Then if yes, we're going to end the flow. But if not, we're going to add another delay and add another SMS. So here we're going to add another delay. And this time we are going to wait for two hours. So here the interval is going to be hours and the delay is going to be two. Once you've done that, you can again add a step and then add action and again choose SMS. For the second SMS, you can type in the template that we have prepared for you. Again, make sure that you add your product name here and by offering a 10% discount here where it says discount code, you can just click on discount code and make a 10% discount code for your customer. Once you've done that, click save. Then again, we're going to add a step and here again, we're going to add a condition. And then again, we're going to choose a condition and here, choose where it says SMS bump, made order after flow started. And then if it's true, we're going to end the flow. If it's not true, we're again going to add the final step here on our banded checkout, add a delay, set up the delay for 20 hours and add again an action and an SMS. Once you have done that, you can go back again to your SMS delete all the text here and paste the one that we have prepared for you on the cheat sheet. If your discount code is lighting in red, you need to fix the amount. So here the percentage is going to be 20% that we're offering on our final SMS and click apply. 
Once you've done that, it will appear in gray again. And here for stop opt out, if it's lighting in red, you can just make a little bit space for it and then it should show normal again. You can always preview your SMS and see how it looks. So here you again, you need to type in your product name and here it's saying it's going fast. Click here to finish your purchase with a 20% discount using the code that is going to be automatically generated by SMS pump and your customers can just click here on this link and go back to your website. Once we have done all of that, you just, you can just click save. Once you go back to your dashboard, your new flow should show here and should be live. To create our next flow, we can click see more flows and then click create new flow. Here, we're going to choose a trigger and the, the next one is going to be the post purchase upsell. Once we've done that, we are going to add a delay and we're going to set up the delay for one hour. Once we've done that, we're going to add a step and add an action. The action is going to be an SMS. And again, here you can delete everything. You can this time leave the site name and paste the template that we have prepared for you in the cheat sheet. So here it's saying, hey, thanks for your recent purchase of, then you add your product name that you're mainly selling here. We hope you're enjoying it. We noticed that you might also be interested. And then for this, you need to have multiple items in your store and the SMS is going to choose one of them and recommend it to our customers. It is a great compliment to our product name and we think you'll love it. Click here to check out. And then here it will add, it will automatically add the recommended product URL of your other product. If you have any questions, just, just reply to this message and we'll be happy to help. And then make sure that opt-out instructions are required. Once you've done that, you can come back to our flows and then add step and then add a condition. And then again, go to made order after flow started. And if it's true, we are going to end our flow. And if it's not true and the customer didn't order something else, we're going to add a delay again, set the delay for 12 hours and send them a second email. And here we're going to add a step again and add action and add an SMS. Here again, you can leave the site name and paste the, the text that we have prepared in the templates. Here you can see that the discount code is lighting red again, but let's read the text. So hi, just wanted to remind you about the great deal we're currently offering. And here where it says recommended product name, you can manually add another product that you would recommend your customer to buy. And then you say it's a perfect compliment to the product they have already purchased. So here you type in the name of the product that you're already selling and we think you'll love it. Plus use code and then here you again offer your customers a discount so you can click on it. And then we're going to choose for this time a fixed amount and we're saying you can save $10. And once you've done that, you can click apply and then you can say plus use code. Here will appear a code now for $10 at the checkout and save extra $10 on your purchase. Click here to check out. Here you can add your pro a recommended product URL. If you have any questions, just reply to this message and we'll be happy to help. And at the end, always make sure that opt-out instructions are turned on. Once you've done that, you can click save. We are going to name this flow product upsell sequence. The last flow that we're going to create is going to be the customer win back sequence. To do that, you can again click on see more flows and hit create new flow. The trigger this time is going to be order created. And then here the delay for the first one is going to be 10 days. And the step that we're going to add is an action and an SMS. And again, you can go back to the cheat sheet and paste the text that we have prepared for you. Once you have pasted in the text from the customer win back sequence, you will see that it says, Hey, billing first name. We noticed that it's been a while since you made the purchase from our store. We miss you to show you how much we value you. We are offering a special deal just for you use code. And then here again, you can give them a, a discount. So for example, this time, if you can afford it, you give $15 off and then you click apply at the checkout to save. And then here in those brackets, you just type in dollar 15 on your next purchase click here to check out what's new and here you're manually going to type in your website url so you can delete that and just type in your website url we hope to see you back soon once you've done that you can again just click save to make sure that it's saved and we're going to name this flow customer win back sequence once we've done that we can again add a step again add a delay and this time we're going to wait for 30 days then again add a step add an action and add SMS. 
and here again you can delete this first one and again paste in the template from the cheat sheet here again it says billing first name we hope you're doing well we just wanted to remind you about a special deal we're offering you to, to bring you back to our store use code and then again we're going to create a code for $15 or even more if you want at checkout to save. And again here, the discount amount, or so for this example, it's going to be $15 on your next purchase. We've got some new arrivals that we think you'll love. Click here to check them out. And then here you add the link to your store and we write down, we hope to see you back soon. So with the SMS marketing, we always try to get our customers back to our store to purchase something, especially the ones who abandoned their checkout or the ones who already made the sale and we would like to upsell them another product. Once you've done all of that, you just click save, go back to your listings and you should have those three flows live, the customer win back sequence, the product upsell sequence and the abandoned checkout flow. To make sure that your SMS starts sending, you can add a balance here of at least $20. The next app that we're going to install is going to be Tidio Live Chat. We're going to use this app to interact directly with our customers and help them complete their purchase. Once you type in Tidio Live Chat on the Shopify App Store, you can click on this one and make sure that you add app. Once you've done that, you can click on install app. Once you arrive to this page, you can start customizing your chatbot. So here, your name, I'm going to choose Anna, for example. Here you can choose the colors that you would like to have on your store. I just keep it simple with the blue. And here you can also upload a nice picture. If you can't find a nice picture, you can just go to unsplash.com and type in either man or woman. And once you find a nice picture, you can just download it and upload it on Tidio Live Chat. And this is how your avatar is going to look like. Once you've done that, you can click continue. So here it's asking you what's your main focus. We're going to add, I want to increase my sales. How many support agents will use Tidio? Then we'll just type in one. What's your industry? It's an online store. And how many customers did you have last month? We're just getting started. Once you've filled in all the information, make sure that you agree to the terms and conditions. And here on the left side, also make sure that you choose both. Like I want to talk to customers and also I want to automate conversation. Once you've done that, you can click continue. So here you have the option of sending them a discount code in exchange for their email address or just greet them warmly. Since we already have the pop-up with Clavio, I would recommend choosing to greet them warmly. But if you want to try your luck and get your their email also through the live chat, you can choose the first option here. Once you've done that, you can click continue and then it's asking you to set a password. The first thing we need to do is to add the widget to our website. To do that, you can just click, go to Shopify team editor and turn Tidio chat widget on. Once you've done that, click save. The next thing we need to do is go to settings and then instead of online status, we reply immediately. We can just call it customer support. Once you've done that, you can go to the left side and click team and then operators. So if you've hired a VA, for example, you can just click add an operator, type in their name and their email address, and they can be a chat agent too. So you don't have to do it yourself. The next important thing to set up is going to be the operating hours. So here I would recommend to turn them on and here you can set the hours where you're going to be working. So for example, if on Monday you can be online between 7.30 a.m. and 6 p.m., you can just set it at 6 p.m. If on Tuesdays you work a little bit less, so till 4 p.m. you can set it here so your customers can expect an answer. I would always adapt to your target audience and make sure that you're available on those times. Otherwise, I would outsource this task and make sure that you have a VA who is always replying to your customers. Once you've done that, you can just scroll down and click save. The next thing we need to have a look at is here on the left side chatbots. So once you arrive to chatbots, you can click on all. The first one that we're going to install is cart abandoned and click use template. Here you can type in the discount that you're offering your customers. And down here you add the coupon code name. So for example, say 15 and the discount value is going to be 15. And then you click save and then you'll see the coupon code in Shopify was created successfully. And once you've done that, you can just click save and activate. And then you will see that this chatbot is active. The next one that we're going to install is product recommendation. Here you can again just click use template. You don't need to change anything on that and just click save and activate. The last one that we need to activate is the AI responder and just click use template. Again, here use template. Once we arrive here, you just click on the icon of the person here. Then here conversation topic. Most of them will be asking about their order status. And here you'll type in what a customer might say like, hi, where is my order? Or here, hello, where is my tracking number? or the last one, I 
when will my product arrive? Once you've done that, you can click on the message that we're going to send them. And here you can just delete the message here and go to the cheat sheet and paste the message that we have prepared for you there. So here it says, hello, we try our best to ship items as fast as we can. Please allow four to seven days processing time for your order to ship out. So here you can continue reading the text. And most importantly, here at the end, you can add your email address so they contact you there and you send them all the information they need there. Once you've done that, you can click save and activate and make sure that it's turned on. The next app we're going to install is going to be BundleBear. BundleBear will help us create product bundles and offer discounts to our customers if they buy more than one item. To install the app, you just click add app. Once you're here, you can click install app. Once you arrive to this page, you can create your first offer. For the offer name, you can call it offer one. Here you have different options. If you have multiple items in your store, you can create a bundle with another product. Volume discount means the more your customer buys, the less he has to pay. Mix and match means if they buy multiple different products, they will also get a discount. And card goal means that you offer a discount when a customer reaches a specific card value. So for example, if they spend at least $50 on your store, they will get a discount. Now for our example, we're going to use a volume discount. We will just need to click on it. Then you can either choose to have it for all the products or for specific products. Now for this example, we're going to choose our main product, the levitating flower pot. And here you can set up the discount. You just need to calculate that and see how much your fulfillment costs are. And once you've checked with your supplier, you can offer, for example, 10% discount if they buy two items, 15% discount if they buy three items or 20% if they buy four. If you want to reduce this amount of offers, you can just delete one. And if you want to add more, you can just click add option. Here on the right side, you will see how it will look like. Now for our product, if they buy two and save 10%, instead of paying around $223, they only have to pay around $201. So one item will only cost them a hundred around a hundred dollars instead around 112. Here you can also add some advanced settings. So for example, to add custom badges or set a start time and an end time for your offer to create a sense of urgency. You can also round the discounted prices. So you see it will, the, the numbers will be rounded. I recommend to do that here. You can choose like, do you want it per 50 cent or per $1? We can do it per 50 cent. And once you're happy with all your settings, you can just click save and activate. Once you arrive to your product page, the only thing you need to do is here, click on the left side, add block and choose the bundle bear offer app. Now here you can choose where you want it to show. I always like to put it below my quantity selector so our customers can see that we have a special offer. Yeah, once you have that here, you can just click save and go back to your Shopify dashboard. Bree Profit will help us calculate our profit or loss by including all the costs and revenue that we have. Once you arrive to this page, you can just click add app. If you're new to BeProfit, you can create an account and once you have, or if you already have an account, you can just click and log in. Once you arrive to this page, you can click let's go. Here you can type in the information about your store. So for example, for us, it's home and garden. Then here you are going to choose the ad platforms that you're using for your store. For this example, we're going to use Facebook and as marketing tools, we're using Klaviyo. And if you have an ad blocker installed like mine, you just, you should just pause it on this website. And here you can connect your Facebook and Instagram account where you're running ads. And here you can connect your Klaviyo account. And here where it asks you, how do you handle your inventory? We're going to say, I dropship my products. And here you're going to choose the supplier that you're using. So for example, we're using CJ dropshipping. And as a dropshipping management tool, we're using AutoDS. And once we've done that, you can click next. If you're using any shipping provider, you can check with your supplier also. For this example, we're going to use USPS. Or if you don't use any shipping platform, you can also click, I don't use any shipping platform. Then you click next. Here we're going to choose the first option since we, everything is going to be handled by your supplier. And once you've done that, you can click next. Here to start, how would you like to up, update production costs? Here we're going to choose individually update since we're going to get our total dropshipping price from our supplier. And here you can add in the total dropshipping price cost that you have. So for example, if it costs you $69.95 to fulfill the order, you will add the price here. But if it's costing you, for example, $71.40, you just put the price that you use to fulfill your orders here. And you need to do that for every variant that you're selling. Once you've done that, you can click next. For this step, you need to connect your payment gateways on your store. So for example, if you're using Shopify payments or Stripe or PayPal, it will calculate the fees automatically here for you. Once you've done that, you click next. 
Here you can list all the expenses that you ha that you have. So for example, currently we only have the Shopify plan for $29, but if you have an other external app installed or if you're paying a VA or if you have any expenses that you have fixed for your company, you can add them here and select the status and also select how frequently you have to pay that. And once you've done that, you can just click next. Here you can set your calculation preferences, like which numbers would you like to have included in BeProfit and which ones not. So for example, if you don't want to include unfulfilled orders, you can just click exclude them. But just to get started, I will leave them all off. And once you feel like you need to adjust that, you can just come back to preferences and adjust them. Once you've done that, you can click next. And now the last step that you need to do is choose the plan that you would like to have. And now for this example, we're just going to start with the free one. And as soon as you feel like you need to upgrade it, you just upgrade to a higher plan. Here's the dashboard that shows you all your numbers and your current performance. So for example, for us now, we can see that we're $27 in a loss since we didn't get any order and we have only paid our Shopify plan. If you have any question, you can contact the live chat here. If you feel like you need more support or something is not working fine, you can contact the support and they will help you out. If you click on financials here on the left side, it will give you a report of the profit and loss. And if you need to change anything in your settings, you can just click settings. And here you have all options to edit. So for example, if your cost of goods increases or decreases, you can just click on cost of goods and you will again arrive to this page. And it will also tell you like if there are variants missing, you just have to fill in this information here. So BeProfit helps you to keep track of your profit and loss and show you where you're spending your money and how you're getting your money back. And it will definitely help you take decisions whether to scale your brand or test another product. So those are the essential apps that you need on your Shopify store. We are now able to start with retention marketing. We are able to give our customers special offers. We are able to automate our fulfillment. We have social proof on our store thanks to reviews. We can help out our customers with an instant live chat and we are able to track our finances to take further decisions. Hey guys, it's Camille Saar again known as the Ecom King and I'm going to be walking through marketing content with you. Now this is extremely important if you want to see success with your drop shipping and e-commerce products now what this part of the course is all about is about the content that you're going to be using to display on people's feeds once you start using advertisements on things like instagram facebook and all those other platforms now depending on the content that you show people on a paid ad and how a paid ad works is when people are scrolling on their timeline their feed their stories your ads going to pop up and it's going to disrupt them from, from their current search on social media and you need to make sure that it fits in with what they're already looking at and you need to make sure that it sells your product really really well so what content do you need to start advertising your products on facebook ads and other paid advertisement platforms you need to have something called a ugc video and you need to have three to five of them now the more the better now if you don't know what ugc stands for it stands for user generated content i'm going to be showing you examples of this now if you use tiktok then you're very used to ugc videos because that's what you basically see every day on tiktok now the reason why the more the better is because you your creatives, which is the video, which your people will see when you advertise to them, that is the most important part of your advertisement. Now, the more of those that you have, the more chance that you're going to find a video or an image that will work really, really well in your advertisements. You're also going to need some high quality images and you need between three and five of these per product. Now, again, the more, the better. Now, the reason why you want some images is because you can use these as thumbnails for the videos and you're also going to be doing image ads and carousel ads to see which one will work better out of videos images or carousels. Also going to need one to two testimonial videos. And the reason why you're going to want testimonial videos is because this is the best method when you're doing retargeting. Now retargeting is basically when somebody's seen your ad before, you're going to show them another ad again, and they know that they've seen your product before and your advertisement before. But this video is going to be a testimonial video because if somebody's already seen your ad before and they've not bought from you, it's because maybe they don't trust you. So if you show them a testimonial video, they're going to think, hmm, I needed to see some proof of concept to buy it. So that's going to encourage them to go and buy it. You're going to need 10 ad copies per product, one short, one medium, and one long. If you want to split test these, you're going to want 10 ad headlines per product as well. Now, if you don't know what ad copies are, these are basically the description that goes underneath your ad, and a headline is the short text, which is the title of your ad. And I'm going to be showing you examples of these so you guys completely understand what I'm talking about. The product that I'm going to be using as an example for this part of the free course is going to be this reusable, erasable notebook. And this is actually one of the products that we were using a couple 
couple of years ago, which we did over six figures with. And basically what this product is, is basically a normal notebook, but it's got smart features where you can erase it. You can actually sync it to your phone. So it's a really cool notebook. Now, AliExpress is a great way to find video content and also image content for your product. But you do want to make sure that you contact the supplier and ask them if you're allowed to use it and if they're the original owner of this content, because some of them do take it from other places. So you want to make sure that it is their content, because if it isn't, because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Now, if you want to download this video, you can ask the supplier to send it you, or you can use a Chrome extension, which is this one right here, which is called Video Downloader, and it's completely free, and you just click this button and it will download it. Now, for downloading the images, you can use something called AliExpress Image Downloader, which is a Chrome extension, and what you can do is you can download all of these different images. And the good thing about this supplier is they're giving you really high quality professional images, which is really good because some suppliers won't give you these high quality images. You'll have to make them in Canva. If we take a look at this video on this AliExpress seller page, you're going to see that this is what we call a high quality professional style video. And this isn't UGC content, by the way, and that's the content that we're looking for. And you can see that they've got some nice sharp close-ups and they've got it in quite a corporate professional look, which is not what we're currently going for. And you can see here as well, it's got a nice them using it in action and whatnot. But this is what they call high quality cinematic footage. Now, although this is great video and you could also use this for your product. Now, what I would say to you guys is you want to be testing very professional content like that. And you also want to be testing UGC content. So it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go for professional content. You want to try it out, but you also want to aim for UGC content. So guys, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be showing you the exact same product that I showed you on AliExpress, but I'm going to be showing you UGC content for it instead of that professional cinematic content and i'll let you guys let me know which one you think is more engaging these elfin book smart notebooks has to be the greatest invention out there and let me show you how they work each 2.0 smart notebook comes with their own pen the really cool thing about this notebook is that once you're done taking your notes you can scan it into the app and you'll forever have your notes on your phone once you're done scanning your notes you can erase it completely with a wet cloth that they give you and bam you have an environmentally friendly notebook that saves forests that right there was what we call ugc content which stands for user generated content this woman here is the one that generated that content and the aim of the objective is to make it not look so professional but to make it look like somebody's actually using that content in real life so it doesn't look like it's actually framed and the reason why these do better is because number one they're more engaging because this woman's speaking directly to you and remember this type of notebook would do really really well for uni students and this woman right here could look like she's part of a uni student and make it look like she's part of a university the second thing is it doesn't look like an ad it looks more like an organic video that you'd scroll across on on facebook reels instagram reels or TikTok Reels. So how I actually got this content is I actually went to a website called Bilo or Billo, however you want to pronounce it, and make sure you use the links in the description and in the cheat sheet so you guys can get yourself some exclusive benefits and discounts because you can get between 15 and 25% if you use my link. Now, once you made an account with Bilo, what you want to do is you want to hit get a video, and once you hit get a video, you want to integrate your Shopify store with them so you can select your product and straight away it will be selected. Now, once you've selected your product, the two videos that you want to choose straight away is the video ad and the how-to video and the reason why you don't want to go with the other ones is because when you're in the testing phase where you're just testing your product to see if they're actually going to work these are the only two video structures that you're going to need when you get into retargeting you would want to go for an unboxing video as well so these are the only two videos that you need to go for once you've done that you want to hit choose and you can click choose again it depends which one you want to go for then you can change it here from 15 seconds to 30 seconds now I recommend that you keep them between 15 and 30 seconds you don't need a 60 second video so it's either these two it's down to you then here you can go over the scenarios so you can actually tell them exactly what you want them to say in the video so you can actually type here i want you to say this i want you to say this don't worry if you don't know what to put in this section right here i'm going to be showing you how you could potentially find ideas to actually put in this scenario then here you can see what you want them to mention they can even mention the brand and product they can mention the product features they can mention a call to action you're definitely going to want a call to action you're definitely going to want a promo and you're definitely going to want the 
product features so make sure you add those then in terms of the format you choose 9 to 16 because if you need to you can actually resize it to one to one because if you go to one to one you can't resize it then here it says where your videos will be displayed now the good thing is if you're advertising on Facebook Instagram and on TikTok they all got the same dimensions so it actually doesn't really matter now here it says video add-ons and in my opinion the only ones that you need is subtitles and it's an extra $19 in terms of logos and stuff like that you can use a video editing software that I'll be talking about later and get it done a lot cheaper and when you scroll down it says here creator criteria this is basically meaning which influencer do you want to make that UGC content is it going to be a male that needs to make it or is it going to be a female or is it going to be any so the this is you choosing what type of influencer you want to actually approach you with a job offer to make that video for you you can choose the age range then you can choose how many videos you want and obviously like I said to you before you want between three and five videos and then it will say promo code and make sure you use the promo code that will be in the cheat sheet so you can get between 15 and 25 percent off now in terms of how long it will take you to get your videos it can take between three and four weeks now, once you place your order, after a few weeks, you wanna to go to where it says creators and you wanna to go to where it says waiting for approval. And what will happen is you'll get loads of influencers that have applied for your job to actually do the video that you want making. So once you do that, you wanna click on their name and look at their portfolio and see which one will work best for you. And once you've selected the influencers you wanted, a few weeks later, you will go to the content section and under waiting for approval, you will get the videos that they've made and you can either approve them or ask them to change certain things. Once you've approved them, you go into my content and you'll find the content there that you can actually download now something that i'd recommend that you guys do before you order your ugc content is head over to the facebook ad library and go to these filters and change them both to all and then you want to go to the search bar and search for certain search phrases that could be related to your product so i'll put in mine reusable notebook and what you're trying to do here is you're trying to find other advertisers selling a similar product to yours or the exact same one and the reason why you're doing this is because you want to get ideas on their their ad copies, their ad headlines, how they've structured their video, how you can structure your video. So you can see if I scroll down, so you can see here there's an advertiser selling literally the same product as me. It's very similar to mine. And you can see they've gone for a medium ad copy. And remember, I was asking you guys to make a long, short, and medium. So you don't want to copy these ones, but you want to get influenced by them. So you might want to take it and change certain things from it. And you can see they've written save 20% when you buy the Dexa Smart Notebook today, trusted by over 30,000 happy customers eco-friendly made from limestone the delivery days and certain order in bulk basically if you want to order in bulk you can get it cheaper by this number now obviously this i wouldn't recommend doing but basically you want to look to see how they've structured it then you can see the running a image ad and then you can see here this is their actual uh, ad headline which is 4.2 star amazon reviews and that's basically what their headline is so i've just found another ad being ran by the same advertiser but this time they're running a long ad copy and this is what i'd call a long ad copy and you can see if i compare this to this one right here it is a lot longer and if we take a look at the ad headline which is this one right here they've got 2022 erasable and reusable diary if we take a look at the other one it was the amazon star reviews as the headline so you can see they're doing it differently and they're also running a video so let's play their 15 second video you can see it says eco-friendly reusable they've gone for a professional looking video you can see it there being used and you can see they're showing the different features of the product and they're also going over a promo code that you can use so they've gone for what we call a high quality professional video instead of a UGC video. So I've just found another video, but this time it's from a different advertiser. This one's from Reuse Notebook. And they're actually running a 15 second UGC video instead of a professional video. You can see it right here. This one is actually UGC content, not professional content. And you can see people are starting to use UGC content instead of professional content. So what I could do here is I could take inspiration because they've gone for a medium ad copy and you can also take inspiration to see what they've said in the video and remember when you order on bylo you need to tell them what you want them to be said in the video so you can take ideas of what they're saying in this video so going through some more ad library ads you can see there's some image ads from these other companies and i can take some inspiration of how their videos are what their images are like how their ad copies are this is a short ad copy as you can see here this one's more of a medium one this one's more of a short one if you scroll down again we've got some more videos they're going for 
what I call a longer ad copy. So you want to go through these and really get inspiration. You can see these ones are using carousel. So these are a carousel ad and these can work really well as well. So you want to see how they've structured their carousel and they kept it very casual. And if we scroll down again, you can see some more advertisements. Really want to spend a lot of time by going through the ad library and studying these other advertisers that are advertising the product. Because you can see here, Rocketbook, they're doing loads of different ads for the same product. They're spending a lot of money on ads to get people to see these products. So you really, you can see, look how many ads they're running. They're running loads and loads of ads. That must mean they're making some serious money. So you want to get inspiration to see what's working for them so you don't make any mistakes in yours. So as I was saying to you guys before, you don't want to get any add-ons on the buy low section. You just want to get subtitles and even then you don't have to. You can do them yourself. And the reason why is because you can get a software called NVIDIA and I'm sure Amy's gone over this with you guys before. And NVIDIA is a very cheap beginner friendly video ad software where you can edit your videos, you can create some giffies, you can do some amazing things in NVIDIA. I've been using these guys for the past two and a half years and I've never had any issues with them. And the plan that I'd recommend that you guys go for is the business plan because it is very affordable and it gives you all the features that you're going to need. Now the reason why you're gonna to wanna to use NVIDIA is because once you've got your custom content made, you can add it into NVIDIA and you can add your logo in there, you can add subtitles, you can add voiceovers, you can do whatever you want to that content to make it even better. Now if you use my link in the description, you're gonna get yourself an exclusive discount code that you can't get anywhere else, which will make it even cheaper than the $15 on a monthly basis. Now this is a great alternative to get UGC content made if Bilo is too expensive or it's gonna to take too long to get the content made. You can head over to Amazon, search for your product, order the product directly from Amazon, which will cost you $10, and you can get it shipped to yourself within a day with Amazon Prime or a few days. Then what you might wanna do is you wanna might head over to TikTok, look at your product by searching for it, sort it by videos, then you can see what videos people are making on TikTok about the product, and then what you can do is, you can then recreate your video to be very similar to one of theirs. So you're basically making the UGC content yourself instead of getting somebody else to do it for you and paying a premium. Now, Obviously, this is only gonna be applicable if you're confident in doing this and you're comfortable, but this is what I do recommend people do if you're on a lower budget or if you wanna save a little bit of time. Because at the end of the day, you can watch all these other videos of people doing it and you can learn from what's made it do really, really well. If these guys have got 100,000 views, they must be doing something right. So you can just recreate it based on this. Now, what you wanna do after you've made the content is, you might wanna go into NVIDIA and add your logo, add your subtitles, add your music. So that's why I'm recommending NVIDIA as well. So this is a great alternative to making UGC content yourself. And as long as you've got a smartphone that has a decent camera, which records in 1080p, then you're good to go. Now that's gonna be the marketing content section of this free course. Now the guys that are gonna be covering TikTok ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, they're also gonna be talking about content for those platforms as well. So they're gonna go into extreme details based on the different platform that you use. And this was just a general overview of how you can get your content done. Hey guys, welcome to the Facebook ads module of 2023 course. My name is Suraj and I'll be going through a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to run Facebook ads effectively. Here is a quick overview of what we are going to cover. First, a Facebook page, business manager and pixel setup. The next, we'll cover the Facebook ad structure and your first testing campaign setup. Then we'll discuss about free method of tracking your ads, which is UTM tracking at the ad level. Then we will cover setting up the columns properly and how to analyze your data. After that, we'll cover scaling structure and how we do optimization, killing poor campaigns and ad sets, and then scaling. After that, we'll cover retargetings and lookalike audiences. And last but not the least, creative formation and testing strategy for 2023. To create a Facebook business manager, you should go to this link, business.facebook.com slash create. Once you come here, if you have not logged in, first of all, you need to log in with your with your personal account, with your personal Facebook account. And, and after that, you will be able to see this button, which is called create account. Once you click on it, you will see three options here. So your business name, your name, and your email address. Here in business name, you can also put your store name just to start your uh, business manager. And after that, what you can do is you can click on submit. So basically that's it. To create Facebook business page, what you need to do is go to your personal Facebook profile and then click on these dots over here. And from here, you can need to click on create section page. Once you click on this, you'll be able to see this section. And what you need to do is you need to put your store name or your brand name 
over here in the page name. Let's say for example, I put it Sephora, okay? Category is basically niche in which you are working. So for example, if you are in beauty niche, you can enter beauty. If you are into gadget niche, you can enter gadgets. And similarly, if you are in general store, there should be an option for shop or online shop, retail shop, something like that. Or let's say most of your product are into one specific niche, let's say gift shop. For example, if your store is a general store, I would highly recommend you to enter gift shop. Other than that, I don't think right now they have option for e-commerce or something like that. Convenience store can be one of the possible thing. Discount shop can be one of the option that you can put for general store. But yeah, I would recommend to go with a specific niche thing. So for example, my, let's say my store is in beauty niche. So I'll, I'll enter beauty. So here, health and beauty or beauty, cosmetic and personal care. So I'll add that. And in the description, you need to provide as much inf information as possible of your store. Okay, after this, your page will be set up and you need to add profile picture and cover photos for here. And from here is you need to add your business information in the about section. You are good to go with business page. Let's see how we can create an ad account inside of your business manager. So let's go to our business manager. You need to go over your account section in ad accounts, right? And here, so if your business manager is new, what you can do is click on add. Over here, you will see there are three different options. So the option that you need for the start is this one, create a new ad account. Okay. Once you click on this, it will ask you about your ad account name. You can put your ad account name, put your time zone here, put your information about your currency, click on next, the business for which you will be using it, click on create, and you will be good to go. So we here you can see. You will assign yourself. You will click on manage ad account. This will give you all the rights for your ad account, right? Click on assign and ad account successfully created. Then after that, you'll need to add payment info. In case of payment info, you can add your credit card, debit card information. Maybe you'll be able to see PayPal, connecting PayPal uh, option as well that you can do. But right now I'm not doing it. You can do it once you are ready to run your ads, okay? So this is how you set up your Facebook ad account. Okay, let's see how we can set up our Facebook pixel. So what you have to do is you need to go to data sources. Then you need to go to pixel. Over here, what you have to do is click on add pixel. Okay, this is how it will show you. What you need to do is you need to add your pixel name. I would recommend you to name it according to your store name or your brand name so that you have a clear idea what pixel is related to your store. So for example, I have this testing store, testing store one, and you can put your URL. It's a optional thing. Then you can click on continue. After that, it will ask you, are you ready to set up your pixel? It will say set up the pixel now. Over here, you have to select add code you're using partner integration because through this method, we don't need to do any manual coding or so. We already have third party integration basically with Shopify. So what do you have to do? You have to click on here and after this, you need to connect uh, to Shopify. How this thing works is basically you need to have an app which basically connects uh, Shopify with Facebook. Let's see how this works. So now we will connect our Facebook app to our Shopify store. What you need to do is you can go to your online store, go to preferences and from here you will go down and see Facebook pixel. Click on setup Facebook. So what this will do is it will connect uh, the Facebook app channel app basically with uh, your store and this will also help you to connect the pixel and conversion APIs properly and we will talk about conversion API later in this video okay let's add this channel once you click on this it will ask you to log into your Facebook profile so let's connect it so it will ask you to connect your account which is personal account so let's do it once this is done what you need to do is connect with the business manager that you have created click on connect once this is done it will ask for your domain verification we will also talk about domain verification, which is an important part of conversion API, setting up conversion APIs properly. But we will talk about a different method because this will take time. You can also do it from here by clicking on confirm, but it'll take some time and you can do it from here and also from your business manager. So we can skip this part for now. Let's uh, click on the ad account that we have recently created, which is basically our testing ad account. Click on this. Okay. We haven't added any payment method. So once you add your payment method, it will show a green tick over here. Once you added your payment detail, it will show a green tick and you will uh, go to the next step, which is basically connecting your 
Facebook page. So over here, you will connect the page that you have created. Click on connect. Yeah, once it's done, coming to the next part, which is an important part, data sharing. So what is data sharing and why this step is so important? So after iOS update, you know, the pixel tracking is not that effective. And uh, now uh, it is heavily impacting businesses all, all over the world. So uh, there it comes the role of conversion APIs and this uh, app channel where what you do is basically you are sending data from server site, which is basically our Shopify. So Shopify is sending data to, to Facebook so that uh, Facebook and Shopify together can uh, see uh, what customers we are converting and uh, and based on that can do some, some optimization to bring more customer. Uh, so basically in here, what we see data sharing option, we have to select maximum, which means that you are uh, saying uh, to basically this app to provide as much data from Shopify to Facebook so as possible so that you provide maximum data so it can give uh, you better result because of the data that you're providing it can be more optimized so that's why uh, basically your conversion api and pixel will do advanced matching and because of that you'll get better results so let's see what details it shows so yeah you can see over the detail it shared so basically shopify is providing these data for example this data back to facebook and, and because of that only your uh, Facebook ads are uh, optimizing on the basis of that. So let's see uh, what we have to do next. We can connect our pixel right now. I think another pixel is uh, connected. What we have to do is we have to select the pixel that we have recently created, which is I think testing store one. Let's connect this pixel. And yeah, once we do that, we'll click on confirm, right? And after that, we will select the region where we are mainly targeting, like the main country that we'll be targeting. So let's start with United States. You can add, if you're targeting European countries, you can add that. Click on terms and condition and you can click on accept and final step uh, setup will be completed after you add your payment details. So right now it's not showing to me because of this reason, but yeah, it'll show it, uh, to you. So once it's done, uh, you have set up the pixel properly and uh, you have also like set up, uh, set it up for the maximum data sharing so that Shopify I can provide uh, data back to Facebook. So first of all, we will will be doing a domain verification. So what that is. So what you need to do is go to business settings again, and uh, then go to um, brand safety. Click on domains. Here you can add a domain. For example, in my case, uh, the domain was my testing. So right, add this domain. Remove the HTTPS part. As you can see over here, it has mentioned that thing. So remove this. Click on add. Once you have done this, what you can do is there is a simple step you have to do. The, the steps are mentioned here as well. Let me just uh, uh, do the same for you. So what you need to do is copy this meta tag and you need to put this meta tag into your theme.liquid file in your Shopify code. So basically go to your uh, online store, go to theme, click on action, click on edit code, right? Go to theme.liquid and over here you can see this is a head file over here. What you need to do is just add one line of code over here. This tag is added. And then what you can do is you can click on verify domain. So this is the first step that you need to do domain verification. This will help you to authenticate your domain for Facebook. And that's how this added protection for both for Facebook side and for Shopify side. So they have a very good communication in between them. So first part you have to complete this, which is domain uh, verification coming to the next part, which is uh, you are setting up aggregated events. So what are aggregated events? Let's understand that. Let me uh, just go to event manager, go to event manager. Now here you see one button called manage prioritized events. Once you click over here, you will see your verified domain over here. So what you need to do is you need to click on drop down. Uh, so, uh, or if you don't have any drop down, what you need to click on is uh, it's called as manage events. You need to click on manage events and then you need to add events one by one based on the priorities. What this does is basically it's telling Facebook that what are the major top six to eight events that you want pixel to focus on, or you can say that your conversion API to focus on. Okay. So these are the events that you have to focus on purchase, add payment info, initiate checkout, add to cart, view content and search. And in this order only, this is basically what you're telling, what you're telling to Facebook is that you need to focus on these major events. After this, you can save it out. Uh, I think uh, this part has been done. One more thing you need to do. You have to click on this button, back button, click on your pixel that you have created for your store and 
that you have to go to setting section uh, you have to turn on the advanced automatic advanced matching what this will do is it will it will give uh, data to facebook that uh, you have to collect more information uh, automatically from shopify and also you want to uh, turn this on so track events automatically without code you have to turn it on this is how you set up your conversion apis now let's go to our ads manager and understand what each component mean and then we will create our first product testing campaign so first click on create button over here you should select sales objective only whenever you are running sales campaign for your e-commerce and dropshipping store always choose this option this is the option that always convert why because Facebook algorithm is so strong that it knows who can be your potential customers based on their previous activities. So they have very high intent. These type of audiences have very high intent. So that's why Facebook will send you these audiences only. If you select any other objective, you might get some sort of traffic. If you'll select this objective or maybe engagement, you may get some likes or comments, but they are less likely to convert because they haven't shown any sort of actions or activities before. So if you'll select this option, Facebook will send you higher quality or higher intent audience. So we'll click on this, we'll click on continue then. Over here, we'll select manual sales campaign. Now, this is the hierarchy. Basically, this is your campaign, this is your ad set, and this is your ad. Now let's dive into it one by one. First of all, now over here at the campaign name, I prefer this structure in which you can write down product name first of all and then the audience testing campaign, basically what the objective of the campaign is. Here, we are going to launch our first product testing campaign, which will be basically testing out the targeting and the audience that are working for us. So that's why I named it audience testing campaign. And then the campaign budget type. So if it is ABO campaign, you can write down ABO, or if it is a CBO campaign, you can write down CBO. We'll understand what ABO and CBO mean right now. So over here, we have already selected it as sales, over here you don't have you don't need to touch it and coming to this part which mentions advantage campaign budget so earlier it was known as cbu which is campaign budget optimization now it is called as advantage campaign budget by facebook so what this basically is that when you turn it on you are setting the budget at the campaign level so for example if you set budget hundred dollars it means that you're telling Facebook to spend this budget according to any ad set that has been working inside of this campaign. So you're setting the budget at the campaign level and not at the ad set level. Whereas at the ABO, what you do is basically you set the budget at the ad set level, which means let's say if you set a budget of $20 at the ad set level, you're saying that, okay, spend this $20 entirely to this particular ad set. Whereas when you select a budget advantage campaign budget and set budget over here, you're telling Facebook to spend that whole budget into whatever is working inside that campaign. It, it is possible that let's say there are five ad set inside of it. And let's say one ad set is performing well according to Facebook. So it may spend $75 into it and rest of the budget in other ad sets. So it will decide according to whatever working inside of that campaign. For the start, we are going with the ABU. So for now, we will turn this off and we'll go at the ad set level. Over here, I normally write it down something as this date and then audience and then countries, then it's the age and then auto. So what this means is basically, I'm adding down all the information regarding that particular ad set. So at the ad set level, we are basically doing and basically specifying the targeting that we need. So as you can see, I've added this information on which date it is launched and audience is basically the targeting, for example, like interest targeting if you're doing, so we have to write down the interest name and T4 is basically the countries that we are going to target. If you're targeting e-packet country, you can write down e-packet over here. Otherwise, I normally go with US, Canada, Australia, and UK. So these four countries I target, so I noted down basically T4. And then age, it can be something as 20 plus, 21 plus, or whatever targeting that you're doing based on your product. So that is something. And then auto is basically the placement, whether it is automatic placement or it is a manual placement. So for the start, we are going to do it with auto. 
So this is something that I use. You can use your own template as well. Whether you want to add the date, you can, re uh, you can remove it if you don't want or anything that you prefer. But I would recommend to follow this template in which basically you are specifying most of the important information that are there in this particular ad set. So after this, what you do is basically select the website because that's where we will bring our traffic. After this, we'll select the pixel. Over here, you can see it's mentioning about create pixel. But what you have to do is once we have created a pixel, we can select the specific pixel that we created and then we'll select the objective as purchase. Okay. Once that is done, you should go over here, which is budget and schedule. Over here, you can select the budget. For the start, I normally recommend people to go with at least $10 budget for the start because right now Facebook is getting expensive. But at the same time, the more important criteria is Facebook need a bigger set of data compared to earlier than iOS update. So after the iOS update, I would say it require bigger set of data. So for that, you may need to spend more compared to what you used to do before the iOS update. So I normally go with at least $10 budget for an ad set. So that is something you can do. If your product is a little expensive, let's say it's above $100, you can even go with $15 to $20. The more data you will provide to an ad set, that will be better for your pixel to optimize. And that's how your pixel will perform. So that is something that you can do. But for the beginners, I would say bare minimum, you can start off with $10. If your product is really cheap, let's say anywhere less than $25 or $30, you can even start with $5. But I will recommend to start off with $10 at least. For this, you should go with normally the next day and at the 12 a.m. time or the midnight so that your budget is basically spread evenly throughout the day. So based on the time location that you have selected, it will your account will be optimized to that time only. So basically, whenever you select the midnight time, it will start spending the money from midnight to the next 24 hours. So on the basis of that, you can uh, you can say that the budget is going to be evenly spread. Otherwise, you may select out other option, let's say 6 a.m. or so, but this is what is recommended. And it, this is not necessary. This is something that uh, what we do is like whenever an ad set is not performing, we'll just turn it off. We'll not put an end date over here. After this, this is a section where we select our targeting, the right customer that we are going to target. So first of all, we'll not touch this part when we are just testing out our product. We'll come to this part, locations. You can select out other countries that you are going to target. For example, I'll select down Canada, Australia, and let's say United Kingdom. So yeah, I have selected the location, people who are living in or recently in this location. This is what you have to select. And now age is something that you should select. I normally go with 20 to 21 plus, but that also depends upon your product. If you feel that the product is for older demographic, you can definitely select the age group according to it. Otherwise, you can go with 20 or 21. That is something I select because I normally go with because these are the people who normally spend anything less than 20 years. I feel that they don't have that much of spending power. So you can select according to your product and your audience. That is something you can do. And the next thing is gender. Over here, what you can do is if your product is specific to a particular demographic or particular audience, Let's say if you have a very specific beauty product, then you can select women. But I feel the Facebook algorithm is great. It will automatically target the right audience for you. So we always keep it broad and open. So that's why I always go with all. And then comes the important targeting part. When you're starting out, you have to provide broad interest to Facebook pixel so that it can optimize accordingly. I feel that and I have seen this from last uh, one and a half year that the broad audience are working really well. So anything uh, above 5 million to 10 million of interest size are good for the start. So if you have audience smaller than that, I would normally rec not, not recommend that particular audience. So you should go with very broad audience, for example, health. If your product is in health niche, you can go with something like, uh, as you can see, 380 million health and wellness. Let's select this option. So you can see 280 million uh, is the, the estimated audience size. So that's how you can go with right now. This advanced detail, advantage detail targeting is turned on. If you'll turn off, let's see how much targeting size is there. Still, it is really big. It is fairly broad. So I would say select audience that has at least five to 10 million of size. And then you can select out single interest when we are testing out things. And basically this will 
try to find out people who are really interested into this particular topic and you need to come up with anywhere from five to ten different type of interest related to your product when you're starting and testing out things so this is something detailed targeting or the interest targeting means and this option what it basically does is that it will try to find out very similar audience which are likely to be related with this audience and it will try to find out very similar audience to it so if it, if you feel that your audience size is small you can select this option and i guess most of the recent account right now they have this selected by default and maybe this option is not available for you which means that facebook has added this option inside of your targeting interest targeting part that is something that you can do and i would not recommend to exclude anything right now because it just increases the cpm because what i feel right now is facebook has been really great in terms of finding out your right audience the broader audience that you can provide to facebook the better targeting or better i would say optimization it can do so don't exclude anything now coming to the next part which is languages the countries that i have selected basically they are all english speaking so i don't think that i should select the english all but it totally depends upon you if you feel that you are selecting some different country and you want your ads are basically into in english your website is in english you can select you can do this thing and select english from here english all otherwise you can remove it as well there is no issue in this and also like i have selected t4 countries if you want to go with you can select the e packet country minus brazil and uh, mexico i guess because of the chargeback issues and uh, yeah basically you can select these options but right now for me like these are the countries that are really high converting the conversion rate is really high so that's why i've selected these options so yeah in terms of language this is completed and uh, let's see now coming to the part of placements placement is basically where you want to showcase your ad into their platform into facebook and instagram platforms for example i just wanted to show you how many platforms are what are different options are there for example feeds we just show you what are the different options are there facebook feed instagram feed so these are feed places and placements where your ad can be shown so for the start if you're just testing out your product you should not select manual placement you should always go with advantage plus placement which was earlier called as auto automatic placement why because you want facebook to optimize and try out different type of placement and then optimize on the basis of that to select out the best thing that is working for you right so in case like if you feel that you know that your audience will only check the feeds then you can do the manual placement but from my experience you should always go with the automatic placement or what it's called now as advantage plus placements so because facebook algorithm as i mentioned is great and it will it will do its job of finding the right audience the exact audience for you so you don't have to basically check out each placement and find out the and do the manual placement exactly so go with the advantage plus placement for the start you don't have to touch this part for the start this is already selected so now we can go to the next section which is the ad so this is the area where you put your creatives your ads and put other information related to it like ad copy headlines and description so let's understand this so ad name you can put down the ad name whatever you like for example image one or let's say video one so based on whatever you feel is good you can put down the name of your creative so identity is basically selecting the exact page that you have created for your product or your for your store and then here you select your instagram page for example let me select this one and yeah based on this now you have to come down add setup create ad and over here you have to select the manual upload once you do that you can first select on single image or video you don't have to touch this part coming to the section add creative this is the place where you have to upload your creative so you can click on add image or add video so for example if you have image ad right now you can select you can upload it from your computer and it will be uploaded here so for example let me select this one i would say for image ads always go with the resolution of one is to one or either four is to five that always works for facebook once you do that click on next and facebook have this optimization that is doing recently i would not select all these options for the start and I'll click on done once once it is done as you can see different type of placement over here you can click on advanced preview to just check out how each placement is looking like for example facebook feeds and all the possible placement or facebook platform so once you do that 
coming to the next part, which is primary text. Once you have added the creative over here, what you have to do, you have to go to the primary text. What is primary text? This is the place where you add your ad copy, which basically show over here and a different placement. Basically, whatever ad copy you see in your ad, basically you add this in the primary text. So what should be the structure of your ad copy? Normally, I go with this type of structure. So this is just a template. This is not, I would say, the exact words that you have to put. This is a template that I have created. So this is a template of a long form ad copy. You can also go with small form ad copies. So over here, as you can see, I have written down this for, as a first line, which can be a bold headline or a pain point or asking question to your direct customer. So for example, this is a product in which you can write down something as uh, the coziest slides for Christmas this year, something like this you can add. And then maybe pain point or something like in which you can talk about cold or anything which your direct customer can relate to it and asking question in which you can ask a question that is highly related to your customer so that they will stop scrolling and see what's written or what's about your ad. So then you can introduce your product and after that, you can have three to five points related to your product. It can be, if you are writing down three points, then it can be two benefit of your product and one feature. If there are five points, then you can write down three benefits and two feature of your product. And after that, you can add this thing, which is basically trust factor, or you can add star rating. By trust factor, something like you can use as over thousand plus happy customers. For star rating, what you can do is like having five star icon and then 4.8 out of 5 rated by 1000 plus happy customer something like this you can add it and then offer or scarcity this is something that you can add for example offer 50 percent off for and sale sale ends today so that is something that you can add and then shop now and providing a link so that the customer know what they what action they have to take after reading this so this is a long form ad copy that you can use similarly uh the short form is something that you can use by following this like the first line would be similar to it and then ending it with offer scarcity and then shop now so these are two type of ad copy that are being used this is a simple template that you can use to basically add into your ad copy and then over headline what you can do is something like again you can use this extension called as joy pixel over here you can use it for example, like this, and then 4.8 out of 5 rated or ratings. And then over description, you can write down something as free shipping. And also you can try out multiple combination of it. So this is just an example. You can put out any small three to four word benefit, or you can put down any offer or any scarcity. That's the thing that you want to add into it. Like after seeing your product through the ad, they may maybe looking out for trust factor or maybe offer. So that is what you can provide into your text. Now, coming to the next part, which is call to action. Over here, you should always select shop now because that is what been highest converting for us and for most of the stores that I know. So that is the option that you can select. Now coming to the next part, which is this has been recently introduced by Facebook. Over here, let's see what are the options we have. You can see you can add custom labels just below your ad. What you can do is you can select free delivery if you are providing free shipping or free delivery over here and then maybe you can select out like payment options let's say if you're providing paypal as a payment option you can add it just to increase the trust factor and coming to profile part this is something that i don't go with you may select this option if you feel that providing that information may increase the trust factor you can do that okay so once we have added this information this is the destination where you want your traffic to go after seeing this ad so basically you want to provide the product page or the landing page where you want to send the traffic for example uh, you can put down your product page link over here so once this is done what you have to do is you have to go to this tracking section so what we have to do is like we have to add utm parameters so let's understand what utm parameters are now let's talk about utm tracking as we all know that after the iOS update, it is really difficult to track down data back to Facebook dashboard or even just track out from where the sales are coming. To overcome that, there is a free way with which you can check out from where the sales are coming or where from where the sessions are coming. For this, you can use the UTM parameters. 
what are UTM parameters? So basically they are kind of extra parameters that you can add along with your URL so that if someone clicks on your ad, for example, let's say they click on shop now button. So whenever they will go to your website or the landing page, some extra parameters can be added along with the URL so that th that information can be provided to third party tools like Google Analytics or even your Shopify. You can easily check out at Shopify reports from where the sales are coming by providing certain UTM parameters. So when you are at your ad level in your campaign, once you have added all the information related to, let's say your page, and then when you have added your creative, and once you add your website URL, which will be the landing page or the product page, right? Once you have added that information, what do you have to do is go to this section, which is called as tracking. Over here, there is a section called UTM parameters. Over here, you can either use pre-builded UTM parameters through the websites, or you can use this tool from Facebook. You can click on this and you can see these are some of the parameters, which we call as campaign source, campaign medium, campaign name, campaign content. Over here, you can provide certain data, let's say about your campaign name or your ad set name or your ad name. And once someone clicks on your, clicks on basically any button that you have, let's say shop now button. So along with the URL, along with your landing page URL, these information will also be added to your URL. And that's how Shopify or Google Analytics can easily track down from where the customer is coming. So to do that, what you have to do is at the campaign source, basically you can select it as Facebook. By this, you are saying that, okay, the source from where the traffic is coming is Facebook. Or you can even say that FB or FB marketing or anything, whichever you prefer. So you can select that. Once this is selected, we can come to campaign medium. I normally recommend people to add more information about like campaign name and ad set name so that once you see all that information over dashboard, let's say Google Analytics or Shopify reports, you can easily recognize the ad set from where the sales is coming or from where the traffic is coming. So for example, at the campaign medium, it's basically you can see the meaning of this is written over here, but I normally write it down as CPC, which basically does represent uh, cost per click. I would say like the, the paid campaigns, or you can even write down here as the placement info. Over here, you can write down the campaign name at the campaign content. You can even write down as ad set name and you can even add some more parameters, which I normally do is like UTM term. And over here, you can write down the ad name. So basically you're providing a good amount of information at the UTM level through which once you are at your Google Analytics section or at your Shopify dashboard report section, you can easily track down that. So for example, once we have added these information, so basically once anyone click over your ad, that's a shop now button. So along with this URL, these extra parameter will be added to the URL and how you can check that report. You can go to your Shopify dashboard over there. Basically you have to go to report section, search for sales through marketing or sessions attributed to marketing. Once you do that, select the exact time range. For example, let's say I selected for today over here. You can see the column section. You can go down over here and you can check out the marketing campaign. These are the details that you need. For example, UTM term source campaign name, campaign medium and content. So you can easily see that. Okay. All these columns are avail available. So for now, since this is a new store and I have not sent any sort of traffic, so there is no data, but once you send traffic to your store, these will be populated with the exact data that you are basically sending to your store. So that's how you can track down from where the sales are coming from, where the sessions are coming and all those important data will help you to optimize your ad, kill your ad and scale from there. Now let us understand how we can structure our first audience or product testing campaign. So this will be our structure for it. So this will be our testing structure. We will be having one ABO campaign inside of which we'll, we can have six to 10 ad set based upon your budget. For example, let's say if your budget is 50 to $60 per day, we can start off with six ad set and inside of it, we'll be having one single interest and we'll start off with, let's say anywhere from 10 to $15 per day, for example, $10. And inside of which we can have three to five different creatives. Okay. For this example, I'm taking four creative for the start. So structure will look like this. 
we have this ABO testing campaign and inside of which we have anywhere six, five to six ad sets. As you can see ad set one, ad set two, up to six. And in each ad set, we have four creatives. You can have anywhere from three to five creative for the start. So this is the structure we will be following. So let's see, this is one of the image that we have. So we'll click on here and we'll click on duplicate and we can duplicate it three times. By duplicating, we'll be having same ad copies we just have to change the creative. So let's say we can change it to video one and upload a certain video creative we are having. So we can delete this and upload a video. You can click on upload and you can upload it. I've uploaded one. So you can basically click on this. Normally for Facebook, a resolution of four is to five works best for videos, but you can even use TikTok videos because that's what has been really converting because they are UGC or I would say user generated content style videos. So they are highly converting videos. So you can use TikTok style video to your Facebook as well. As you can see, I have added this video, which, uh, which was of TikTok style and uh, the ad copy is same. Everything is same. So now we can go to this and we can have this as video two. And similarly, we can have this as video three. And what you can do is you can have another creative you're uploading so for the start you need to have at least three to five creative let's say bare minimum three creatives so you can have that and you should start off with video ads if your product is something that requires some explanation let's say if your project product is in gadget niche or let's say if it has multiple functionality then videos works best but let's say if your product is in jewelry or home decor niche or let's say fashion niche then visuals of an image works really good so you can try out, let's say if you're going with three to five creative, let's say four creatives, then going with three video ads and one image ad can do well. So you can test out multiple different creative according to it. I have a specific se section that I have discussed about creative strategy and creative testing. Why? Because right now, even on Facebook, creative is the ultimate thing. Right now, the targeting is not there after iOS update. So you cannot rely on targeting and specific audience targeting. So creative is basically the king right now on Facebook as well. So there is a specific strategy on how to check out the best hook, how to check out what creative is working for you, how to replicate them and how to find out the best creatives that are working currently in the industry. So I have covered that part in later, but for now, Let's create our first audience testing campaign. So for now, you go to the ad level. Once you have clicked created this, you can click on duplicate and you, let's say, as you want to start off with six ad sets. So duplicate it five times more. One is already there. So five more times. And now you can see we have these five different ad sets. And in each ad set, you don't have to change any ad creative or ads. You just have to change the interest targeting the individual interest targeting and how you can find out interest. You just have to check out broad interest or broad possible interest into your category or basically your product. Let's say if your product is in health niche, health and wellness niche, you can select generally type out like health and you can find out some of the good interest out of it and you can click on suggestion and you can find out more interest related to this particular thing. Like for example, physical fitness, it has a very broad size and you can basically select this interest and yeah, you can then replace this audience name into this particular ad set name and that's it. And similarly, you have to do the same with other interests. For example, you can check for, let's say, healthy habits. It looks a good size to me. And then basically you can check out, okay, yeah, the size is good, 84 million. And similarly, what do you have to do? You have to do this for all the new ad sets that you have launched. And then you have to just click on publish. Once that is done, you will notice, okay, you have now six ad set, each are at $10 budget. So your daily budget would be $60. Before I jump into our testing strategy, let's understand how to read and analyze data properly over our dashboard. To do that, what we have to do is we have to click over here and we have to click customize columns. Now we're going to set the important columns that we need and how we will set our columns and how we will arrange them depends on our funnel. So at the top of the funnel, we have our creatives or the ads and we need metrics that through which we can understand our ads properly. And these are the parameters that we'll look for. CPC, CTR, CPM, average playtime, and also like impression and frequency. So let's arrange them one by one. So first of all, we'll go for cost per unique link click. So we are basically 
arranging this over here and we'll remove other columns for now because I'll be adding them one by one. So right after amount spent, you can add cost per unique link click. It's basically the cost that you're paying to get a unique link click basically. You can keep other parameters like quality ranking, engagement rate ranking and conversion rate ranking for now because these are also important parameters. But for the rest of the things, we are going them one by one from top to bottom to understand how our funnel works and each parameters that are involved to understand each part of the funnel right from the top. Like right now we are doing it for ad creatives. So at the top to understand our ad creative, we have added cost per unique link click. The next parameter we have to look for is the CTR. CTR is nothing but the click through rate, which means out of all the impressions that Facebook is, uh, I would say showing to people. So out of all the impression, how many people are clicking and basically engaging with your ad. So basically clicking. So what we are looking for is the outbound CTR. Why? Because this is the particular CTR, which uh, gives us a data of out of all the impressions, how many people are basically clicking uh, on our ad and they are basically coming to our website, which means the outbound is happening, which means they are coming out from their Facebook platform or the Instagram and they are coming to our website. So that is the CTR that we are looking for. Okay. Because that's the action that we want. We want sales and conversion on our website. So we want people to go out from Facebook to our plan and come to our website. So that is the parameter that we'll look for. So we'll put this just after cost per unique link click. After this, we'll go for impressions. Impressions is nothing but uh, the number of time your ad creative is being shown over the overall Facebook or Meta platform. It can be Facebook, it can be Instagram, it can be other audience network. So how many times it's being shown basically. So that is the impression. The next thing, and it is one of the important thing that we have to look for is CPM. CPM is nothing but the cost per thousand impressions, which means that how many, or I would say like how much cost uh, Facebook is charging you to showcase your ad creatives over thousand times over uh, their different, I would say uh, their different uh, platform or different uh, network or the placements. So this is the, I would say this is the actual cost that Facebook is charging to you. They are actually not charging you for like clicks and all. So they are charging you for each impression. So that's why this is an important parameters. There are various things that impact CPM. Like for example, uh, how competitive your audience is. If your audience is really competitive, your CPMs can be high and also depending upon uh, the quality of your ad. So if your ad is not that much of engaging and maybe uh, the quality is not that great, so it can penalize you for that. So that's how your CPM is determined. So let's go to the next metrics that we have to look for. It's called as frequency. Normally it's not required at the start uh, because normally Facebook show your ads to uh, new people, but this is a parameter that you will require later on in the stage when you're checking for ad fatigue, when you are doing retargeting campaigns and all. So that is the metrics that you can use to check out how many times a single person is getting uh, your ad is being shown to them. So that is something that you can use. Next parameter that we use is called as average uh, playtime, video average playtime. And again, this is a metrics that we use to determine how good our ads are performing. Means that basically for how much time people are seeing our ad in average. So good metrics would be anywhere from uh, six to eight seconds or even eight to 10 seconds, I would say. Uh, that is, I would say the industry standard is for your ad if they are performing really well, especially video ads only, I would say. So. This is the next metrics we have to use. Now, these are the metrics that we have covered from cost per unique link click till your video average play time. This will help you to determine how your ad creatives are performing. And you can easily understand on the basis of these metrics, whether your ad is performing well or not, whether you have to replace it, whether you have to scale that particular ad and use them into your scaling campaign or not. So these metrics will help you a lot in terms of understanding everything related to Facebook ads or the front end part of your ad, or I would say like pre-click metrics. Now let's understand and go to the next part, which is your landing page or your website. Once someone clicks to your uh, ad, then they comes to your landing page or your product page. Now understand what are the different metrics that are, uh, that we can use to understand how that is performing, right? So the, the first thing that we can use is view content, content views. So we'll click on total. And we can also use the cost just to understand uh, this content views is something like it's basically the number of times 
uh, our website is being like uh, people have viewed our website and they have viewed the content on our website so that will give us a total number of uh, kind of uh, perspective of how many people are coming to our website and the cost is basically for each content view or i would say like each uh, like for example for each each visit or each content view how much uh, the cost that we have we are paying basically so that is something that you can add over here let's arrange it over here you can remove these thing because we need total only we don't want breakdown of each uh, each one of this so you can place it just after yes the video average play time and then cost you can put it over here coming to the next three important metrics that we have to look for is add to cart and we can click on total and then cost then remove these we can shift it to here and then we have to look for checkout or initiate checkout total and cost again removing these and then coming to purchase we'll also select the value of purchase so that we can get the total amount on our dashboard as well okay now coming to uh, the most important metric that we have to look for is the ROAS. So we'll go, I'll look for purchase ROAS and you can place it right over here, but I normally prefer it at the top of my call metrics because it's the most important parameter or I would say the metrics you have to look for. So just after, I guess, amount spend, you can put it over here. So I normally do this. And once you do that, you can click on save as pre preset and then you can name it as something e-com or drop shipping so once you do that you can click on apply now before i again jump into the testing part let's understand what ROAS is ROAS is nothing but return on ad spend means whatever return you are getting after spending one dollar on your ads so for example if your ROAS is 1.6 it means that for each one dollar that you have spent you got 1.6 dollar back so now understand what break-even ROAS means. So break-even ROAS uh, is a ROAS above which if you hit a ROAS more than that, you will be profitable. If you hit a ROAS less than that, it means you are uh, unprofitable. So for to calculate break-even ROAS, this is the formula that you can use. Selling price divided by selling price minus expenses. So this is a parameter that you can use. And expenses at the start, you can use your cost of your product plus shipping so for example if your product costs around let's say five dollar or let's say eight dollars and shipping costs is two dollar so the total expenses for the start will be ten dollars for example and let's say you're selling it at a price of thirty dollars so the formula for your break-even ROAS would be 30 upon 30 minus 10 which will be 20 so that's how you calculate your break-even ROAS you can use this website which is the dropship toolkit to Find out your exact break-even ROAS. How you can do that is basically put the expenses over here, which will be, let's say for this example, it was 10. Again, I'm saying this for the start, your expenses, you can consider your product cost plus shipping cost as your expenses. But later on, once you are scaling things, you need to consider other expenses as well. For example, like payment processor charges and fees, and then uh, Maybe you have hired someone for let's say VA or customer support or anything. You need to consider all your expenses in this while calculating your break-even ROAS. But for the start, since other expenses are not that much, you can consider your product cost and shipping cost as your expenses. So over here, I have added 10. Let's say my selling price is 30. So as you can see, my break-even ROAS is 1.5. What this means is if I hit ROAS above this point, I will be profitable. If I hit anything less than that, I'll be in loss or I'll be unprofitable. So let's say if I hit a ROAS of 1.7 in my ads, so that means I'm profitable. And if I hit a ROAS less than 1.5, let's say 1.3, it means my ads are not profitable. So once you have this structure ready, now let's jump upon how you test your product, what should be the optimizing strategy right from day one and see whether the product is profitable or we have to kill it, we have to scale it or we have to switch to the next product. So this is this testing strategy that we will follow. So once you have created this ABO testing campaign, we will follow this strategy. Since we follow a strict rule to ensure we are spending the right amount, essentially we want to find winners and not waste too much money and time forcing something to work. Here is what to look out for. Number one thing is let each ad set spend at least break even cost per purchase. So for example, you get a product for $10, which means that the product plus shipping cost is $10 and you're selling it for let's say $30. 
So your break-even cost per purchase is $20. So what you want is to give at least $20 spent to a particular ad set so that you can check whether it can bring a sale or not. So this is the first parameter that you can use to decide whether you have to kill an ad set or not. So after an ad set has spent over break-even cost per purchase or at least has spent break-even cost per purchase. So this will be the next step. So did it make any sales? If it is yes, that it has given you one sale or more, let it run for another break-even cost per purchase. So you will let it run for another $20, for example. So this is what you do if it has not given you any sale. So what you will look for is like a good CPC. For example, your average, you're seeing that your average CPC is $1 and this particular ad set is showing you a better CPC, like for example, 0.5 or 0.6. And then what, and you're seeing the CTRs are also good. And here are some uh, industry standards or examples that I've added, but you can check on your ad account and see what is the average CPC and CTR that you're getting. And if you're seeing much better result in a particular ad set, but it has not given you sale, then let it run for another day. Right now, we cannot do optimization at every 12 hour, 24 hours, because after the iOS update, you want your pixel to get some more data so that it can optimize further. It require a larger set of data compared to the before iOS state, right? So let it run for another day. If you see, okay, the, uh, if, uh, we have again, like bad CPC CTR or no add to cart, this is a situation when you are running it for break even cost per purchase and you see that CPC CTR and no add to cart is there, you will kill it. And after that, after this situation in which you have let it run for another day, but there is no sale, then there is, uh, no point on running the ad set for another day because you are just spending it. Even if after that spend you are getting sale, it means that there are less chances that in the long run, the ad set will be profitable for us. And we are looking out for profitability and not only for sales. So that's the first step. You will let it run for another break even cost per purchase. And uh, in case you get a sale, you will let it run for another break even cost per purchase. So once it run for another break even cost per purchase, is the ROAS above your break even ROAS? So if you see after uh, giving it a good time interval and you're seeing two times after break even cost per purchase, the ROAS is above your break even ROAS. It means you will let it run. So this is how the strict, uh, technique, or I would say the method that we follow. And in case, if you see if, if no ad set after testing, at least anywhere from 10 to 15 different interests, if you see, okay, any interest has not given you, uh, I would say sales then definitely you need to switch the product because ideally after testing out anywhere from 10 to 15 interests, at least two to three interests should give you sale if a product is good. So that's, that's the strategy you should follow. Once, uh, once you find out two to three profitable assets, I would say like two to three profitable audiences for you. Your first goal is to find out similar winning audiences by using different interests related to these interests. So you can use the suggestion from Facebook to find out similar interests. So how you can do that basically once you go to your ads manager, for example, let's say this asset over here after running it for at least break even cost per purchase. If you'll go to, uh, if you see that it has given us one sale or let's say two sales, you will go to the edit section or basically I would say you can go over here. Let's say it has given you two sales. You will click on duplicate, click on this. And when you should only do this option, go to suggestion and find out which, which are very similar interest to these, this particular interest. So you, you should select any option from these suggestion and that can provide you another interest to test out. So this is something that you can do. And once you have that, this is the method that we follow to do our initial testing and decide whether we have to kill the product to switch to the next product, or we should stay with this product and test out different audiences. So this is how the first step, or I would say the first stage is how you optimize your ad. Now let's understand our testing strategy through an example. Let's say I have a product into health or fitness niche. So as you can see, I've added seven different ad sets and each are running at a $10 budget. Okay. So over here you can see, all the ad set are same in terms of countries they are targeting, the age group and the placement. The only difference is the interest they are targeting. We have selected single interest and broad interest basically. So in each ad set, there is only one interest for targeting and they are of the sizes of, I would say anywhere from 10 million and up to 300 million. So we are selecting broad interest. Okay. So now, Let's consider our product selling price is $30. That is basically our selling price. And 
let's say our product cost price which is basically the cost of product plus shipping is ten dollars so in this case the pre-given cost per purchase is twenty dollars for us because that's the difference between selling price and our expenses or the product cost plus shipping so that is basically our pre-given cost per purchase now if i go through the same thing that we have just covered that what we have to do is we have to let each ad set spend at least pre-given cost per purchase so in this case as you can see we have ten dollars daily budget for each ad set we'll let it run for at least two days and then that's when we will decide whether we have to uh, kill an ad set or what actions we have to take now the next step is basically after they have spent break even cost per purchase did it make any sales so let's say in this case let's say these two are the ad set that has given us one sale each and rest of the ad set have not given us any sort of sales so now in the case of yes let it run for another break even cost per purchase spend so since they have given us sales it means that they may be our potential winning audience so we'll let it run for another $20 and we'll check whether they can give us another sale or not. We want to check the consistency so that we can find out a consistent winner for us. So that is something we'll do for these ad set. But for the rest of them, what we will do is if uh, they have they are showing basically good CPC and good CTR, we'll let it run for another day. So this is the thing when you are just starting out, a pixel is new. So uh, the thing is that there is not much data and especially after the iOS update, you need bigger data sets. So in this case, uh, I would recommend you to let it run for some, some more time in case you see very good CTR. I would say like anything above 2% can be a good CTR. And if in case you want to check specifically for your account, if let's say this ad set is giving you 1% more than the average CTR that you are getting, then that can be a great sign that the, the ad set and the creatives are performing really well. Maybe you can give it some more chance to get a sale. So that is the thing that you can do and let it run for another one day, which means that let's say it has spent $20. So it means that you will let it run for another day, means that you will let it sp spend for another $10, right? There is also a possibility that uh, that you are not able to tr track sales. So that is why you can provide some little room to some of your ad set that you see that are performing well in terms of CPC or CTR. I would say right now on Facebook, anything under $1 or $1.5 in some of the categories uh, can be a good CPC. So if you're seeing that, let it run for another one day so that it gets some more data. And if you're getting good CTR, which is which can be above 2% or in case if you can see average CTR for your account and for example, you can see over here, this is the outbound CTR and over here you can see uh, your average value. And if you see that any particular asset is 1% above your average CTR, that is a very good sign. I would say uh, like, for example, let's say your average CTR over here is 1.3, but one of the ad set is having uh, 2.3 or even 2.1. That is a sign that we should give it some room and some more budget to showcase some result and maybe it can bring us sales. So that is something that you can do. And yeah, basically this is the next part that we do. It's like if we see any ad set that is doing really well in terms of CPC and CTR, but has not given a sale or maybe we are not able to track it, we'll get it some more room. Okay. But if in case, if you see, let's say any ad set, for example, these two are the one that has shown very bad CPC and CTR and has spent over uh, your break even cost per purchase, then what you should do is like you can turn them off. And at this stage, you want to uh, get more audiences and you want to test more audiences. So how you can do that is basically the one that has given you sales, you will duplicate them. For example, this ad set has given you one sale, you will duplicate it. And with this, what you should do is you should just go to suggestion of that interest because since this ad set has given us one sale there are high possibility that any interest that is highly related to this one can give us more sales so we should try out more audiences because because when you are testing when you are at a testing stage the main goal is to find out more audiences that are profitable for us and because with this there is a high chances that you can find out more profitable audiences and in this case uh, what you can find out is like you can find out multiple audiences with with them. You can scale it later on and th that's how you can increase the longevity of your product and campaign.
so for example like this one let's let's go with medicine from this interest so, and basically we will do this over here and just replace the timing as well depending upon the time that you are uh, basically doing all these activity always go with the next day uh, midnight time or basically 12 am you can do that and once you do that you can basically see over here i've created this and similarly the one that has given you another sale you can find out suggestion interest and just create another ad set for it and just kill the one that are not performing well and this is how you can test anywhere from 10 to 15 audiences at least to find out winning anywhere from two to three winning audiences for you so let's follow this we have completed this part after spending another break even cost per purchase for example let's go back we have said that okay these two ad set has given us one sale but let's say another break even cost per purchase which is basically $20 for us in this case. So if let's say this after spending another $20, it has given us another sale, but this one has not. So what we will do is basically we'll kill the one that has not given us another sale, which means that the another ad set is not consistent for us. It is not giving us consistent sale. So there are high chances that in the long run, it will be not profitable for us. Whereas in this case, we see that, okay, after another break even cost per purchase spent, we see that it has given us another sale. It means that there are high chances that it can perform consistently well for us. So we will basically uh, let it run and we will kill this one. Okay. So after this, the next part is basically if no ad set after testing out at least 10 interest, I would say at least 15 interest. Uh, if any interest has not given you any sale, then definitely it's a sign that you have to switch to the next product. Okay, so the next stage is this is the first stage I would say in which you have to do all these testing like at least testing out 10 to 15 interest and find out anywhere from two to three profitable ad sets for you. So this is how you do your first stage testing and let's say there are two to three interests that have given you profitable sale. So the next stage from there comes uh, into play like once you have find out two to three profitable ad sets you uh, your first goal is to find similar winning audiences by using different interests related to these interests. You can use suggestions from Facebook to find similar interests. So that's the part we have covered. And uh, the, the next thing is basically if any of the running ad set brings four plus sales profitably, scale it. So if any interest out of these, for example, let's say this one healthy habits has given us four sale and they have given us these sales profitably with a healthy margin or I would say a profitable ROAS. Anything above break even ROAS is a profitable ROAS. So if any ad set has given you that, it means it is a consistent profitable audience for us. So from there, we'll focus on the scaling part of things. So yeah, the main goal of the testing phase that we are doing right now is to find out two to three at least winning audiences for us so that we can scale it from there. And by winning audiences, it means that they should give you consistent profitable sales. Okay. So if there are two to three winning audiences that are giving us consistent profitable sales, that are, I would say anywhere from four or four plus, it means that we have found out our winning product, or I would say like you have found out audiences that are kind of highly interested in your product. And from there, we can basically scale it using those audiences. Once you find a couple of winning audiences and you get the idea that your product is showing good signs, now it's time to move to the next phase, which is the scaling phase. First of all, we need to understand that guidance and the structure and strategies that I'm going to provide you right now is working for us into multiple ad account but it's not necessary that it will work exactly for your account as well every ad account is different so to all, the only way to know is to test and test everything every ad account differs so what works for one may not work for the other so for example like if cbo is working on our ad account so you may try out ABOs as well. It might perform better in your ad account. So here is an ideal structure that we follow is basically we have only one audience testing campaign. As you can see, we have created this audience testing campaign right from the start. Let's say if our product is working good, we will launch new interest, whatever interest in audiences we will be targeting or we'll be testing out. We'll launch them over here only. We'll not launch new campaigns for every interest or every audience that we'll be targeting. For example, if you want to target LLAs, lookalike audiences, we'll launch them over here only on this campaign. We'll not launch another campaign for it because we want to keep our ad account simple. And because of that, your performance will be much better than having very complex structure into your account. So the one campaign that we create is like one audience testing campaign. Normally we launch it as an ABO. So all the audiences are tested here, including lookalike audiences. One campaign 
which is one creative testing campaign it can be again your ebo campaign some people can prefer it to do in the same audience testing or your prospecting campaign you can do it over here to make it even more simpler but uh, you can have it uh, like i normally keep it separate so you can have one creative testing campaign which is basically the abo campaign again in this we what we do is like we test new ad creatives and uh, we what we do is like we have our best audiences that are performing consistently for us we try out new creative into those audiences basically so i will provide a more structured uh, approach on how to do this creative testing basically later in the this video so the next part is scaling cbo campaigns so for example let's say one or two of our audiences that we are testing are performing really well we can have our scaling cbo campaigns for them so normally for our ad accounts cbos are performing really well so basically what you can do is you can launch a cbo campaign so i'll show you an example on how to launch a cbo campaign for your winning audiences or a potential winning audiences you may also try out abo if cbos are not performing for you or you just want to test out which thing is working on your ad account whether it's cbo or abo okay and the one this one is basically the retargeting campaign so this is basically we'll discuss later on in this video but uh, we have this campaign again as an abo campaign normally we do abo but again it also depends upon your testing you can test out both abo or cbo whatever works on your account for a smaller budget normally retargeting campaign require lesser budget because the audience is very clear so uh, you know that the audience size will be smaller and they can be targeted easily so that's why you need smaller budget to target them so this is basically the ad account structure that you can have once you have found out a good uh, winning product for you so you can basically structure your ad account according to this and then slowly you can scale it further from here so now let's understand how we can scale after this so for scaling there are two methods for scaling mainly one is vertical scaling and another is horizontal scaling vertical scaling is basically when you increase the budget of your existing campaign or ad set and you just expand your daily spend limit so because of that you are just telling facebook that uh, that you will be hitting more audiences on daily thing and that's how you scale your particular campaign or ad set another method is horizontal scaling in which you basically try to find out different pockets and that you can do by either duplicating your current ad set and by trying out different audiences as well so that's how you do horizontal scaling so you try out to hit different pockets of audiences by duplicating your current winning ad set and trying out basically similar type of audiences according to it it can be single interest it can be different lookalikes as well so now let's understand how we can scale it after we have found out our winning audiences let's just understand with an example on how you can scale your ads once you have found out your winning audience so for example let's say you have this particular ad set that has been profitable for you and consistently providing you sales and you're seeing profitable ROAS. Now, what you can do, there are two options that you can follow. Number one is basically you can create a CBO campaign for it. You can click on duplicate, click on new campaign and make four copies of it. Objective will be same. You can name it something as the product name and then you can say that CBO and then click on duplicate. So now this CBO campaign has been created. Now we need to understand this, that we have to go to this advantage campaign budget We'll turn on this option and we'll raise our budget to $100. So $100 is something that I would recommend whenever you're launching a CBO campaign because that will give it a good amount of data and to basically optimize pixel and basically allocate budget to the right audience. So that is a good budget when you're starting out with CBO campaigns. And as you can see, there are four ad sets inside of it, but each ad set has the same audience. So what it will do, it basically we have a big audience size, as you can see, 104 million plus for this audience so what it will do is it will these four ad set will hit different pockets of your audience so that will increase the chances of hitting the right pocket inside the same audience and with that basically cbo will hit and basically allocated budget to a particular ad set that is giving the best result according to it so that's how cbo campaign works really well during scaling phase so whenever you find a any profitable audiences for you in the testing phase always try to scale it with cbo at the first stage if that doesn't work for you so the next step that you can do is you can even try out the ab version of it for example this is our testing campaign we go at the ad set level as you can see this is our health and wellness audience so over here you can see that if it is a profitable audience for us so if it is a profitable audience for us you can even duplicate it in the same ad campaign or I would say that in the same campaign, you can duplicate it three to four times. This is basically the ad set scaling 
that you are basically try to hit different pockets inside of the same campaign but instead of providing uh, the right to spend the budget at the campaign level you are basically allocating same budget to each ad set so that they can spend equally i would say so that is something that you can also do if you don't want to go with the cbo method but normally for most of our accounts cbo works really well during the scaling phase so that is something you can do so that is basically how you can scale the first stage but at the same time you want to do horizontal scaling and by that what it means is you want to hit different pockets are in different audiences so how you can implement that so for example let's say this is the audience that has given you consistent sales for example four sales with a profitable roas the next thing you can do is basically click on duplicate and you can try out three four five different uh, ad sets you can create it and try out different audiences but for example right now i'm just creating one copy so what you have to do is you can click on duplicate and at the ad level you have to again find out the suggestion interest so this is basically interest horizontal scaling that you can do so whenever you are at a stage where you have got anywhere from 2 to 3 different interests that are consistently providing you good sales you should always try out like cbo scaling and at the same time hitting and finding out more audiences that are basically uh, that can basically provide you profitable result because at the end you want to hit different audiences because that will help you in the scaling phase because you will then launch multiple cbo campaigns later on at the higher budgets as well so now let's just understand in case if you have like winning audiences with you even in the cbo level and at the abo level then how to do vertical scaling and horizontal scaling from there once you have an ideal account structure ready and you have found out couple of winning audiences for your product it's time to understand how you do optimization on daily basis so you don't spend money into some poor performing ad set and campaign and basically scale your winning audiences and campaign so these are the rules that you can follow for example the number one is if your yesterday's roas is greater than your desired roas which can be 20% profit over your break even roas or i would say 30% profit as well so let's say if your break even roas is 1.6 and you're hitting 2.1 or 2.5 roas it means the ad set or the campaign is performing really well so in this case you can scale the budget by 20% so let's say if you are running a cbo campaign at $100 you can increase the budget by 20% which will be $20 so you can do this at the campaign level i'll show you an example on how you can do this so this is a cbo campaign which has a budget of $100 and if i see the yesterday roas was really good and let's say it is more than 30% margin profit margin so what i will do is i will increase its budget by 20% but i normally do it at midnight or i would say 12 am so that the budget will be equally sp spread throughout the day and the optimization will be there through the pixel so for example i will be doing this as 120 so so this is something that you can do and similarly if you are running abo campaign and if an ad set is working really well and you want to scale it so what you can do you can increase the budget by 20% so for example over here you can have this as 12 so This is something that you can do at the ABO level. So guys, that brings us to the midpoint of this free course. I hope you guys are enjoying the free course so far. I hope you've learned a lot so far and there's going to be even more value coming into the second half of the free course. So the reason why I've stopped you guys quickly is just to let you guys know that we do offer mentoring services for paid ads and TikTok organic because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be watching this free course and they're going to find it overwhelming. Now the information in this free course is amazing and it has changed loads of lives, but some people struggle with the information because it's generic and it's not specifically suited to your business so that can cause issues for some people. Now if you're one of those people that are looking for specific help and you're looking for more one-to-one -one help and a lot more support then I'd recommend that you guys check out the mentoring because our mentoring has been around for 4 years and it is the best rated mentoring in the industry. So if you're looking for really good mentoring and a really good community behind you then I recommend you check out the mentoring. Now this mentoring is based on limited spaces We don't teach hundreds and hundreds of people. We only teach around about 10 to 30 people a month. So if you are interested, there will be a link to a type form in the cheat sheet and in the description below. So only check this out if you're looking for mentoring and this is the most reliable place to go to if you are looking for that type of service. So this is how you can increase your budget at the CBO level and at the ABO level or I would say at the ad set level whenever you see your ad set are performing but there is a rule to it you should not scale on every day basis you should do it at after i guess 3 to 4 days because if you do it every day you can trigger the learning phase and it may start 
from scratch. So it is possible that you can disturb the algorithm. So I would highly recommend if you are increasing the budget and you are going vertical, uh, I would say like you are doing vertical scaling, then in that case, you have to do this at an interval of anywhere from two to three days. I would recommend three days when you're just starting out, you can increase the budget. So that is one way of doing it. But let's say if you are increasing the budget and that is not working for you, you can also try duplication method in which if you see, for example, let's say this is an ad that has performing really well for us. For example, this one, and we see the ROAS is really good and it is much higher than our break even ROAS. Then in that case, what we would do is basically we can click on duplicate it and just create another copy of it. So by this, we are just increasing $10 for the same audience we have. So this is how we can do the duplication method and we can scale our ads at the same time. So same thing we can apply for our CBO campaign as well. So this thing you can do is basically you can click on this, you can duplicate it and you can also allocate like higher budget to it so that you are basically increasing the budget and you are going aggressively. So for example, over here, let's say this audience is working really well for us. You can click on duplicate. You can increase its budget as well in, after duplicating it. For example, let's say I'm duplicating it and I will go with the budget please. You can launch it for $10 as well, but you can even increase the budget so that you can scale it aggressively from there. So that's how you do it. You see $20 daily budget. You can even duplicate ad set at 2x to 3x at higher budget. So you can do the same for campaign as well. So this is how you do scaling part of things. But again, I will remind you that do not do it on everyday basis. That is something that you can do once you're ad account is really uh, I would say like has spent a lot of money and it has a good amount of data that's when you can do this type of scaling on everyday basis okay the next part is which is if you see that if yesterday's ROAS is almost equal to break even ROAS it is like 0.1 to 0.2 here and there. So in that case, you don't need to touch anything. For example, let's say I'm checking on regular basis and let's say at 12 a.m. or let's say 11.30 p.m. I'm just checking out these ads and I see that, okay, these this ad is performing almost equal to break-even ROAS. Let's say our break-even ROAS is 1.6 and it has given us 1.7 ROAS. So I won't touch it because I will let it perform for another day or two and then we'll check the data. So basically for killing any ad set or campaign, we check three days plus two days data so that we know that, okay, it has given ample amount of time and money and it has good amount of data. And that's when we decide whether we have to kill an ad set or campaign or not. So for example, like this ad set, let's say it has spent a good amount and it has given us 1.7 ROAS and our break even ROAS is 1.6. We won't touch it because it can perform uh, after spending a little more or maybe for two to three days down the line. So that is something that we can do. Coming to the third part, if we see, okay, the three last three days plus two days ROAS is almost equal to break even ROAS, then what we can do is we can reduce the budget by 20% and that uh, I would say normally if it is break even ROAS, if it is equal to break even ROAS, you can avoid uh, disturbing it because it may perform later on. But in case if you see the ROAS is lower than your break even ROAS, for example, uh, if your break even ROAS is 1.6 and it is showing 1.5, then I would say you can try out going with 20% decrease in budget just to stabilize the algorithm. And sometime it has performed really well for us by decreasing the budget. So let's say, for example, we have run it for four days now. It has spent $40 for us and our uh, we can see that the ROAS, it has given us is 1.5 and our break even ROAS is 1.6. What we will do is we'll decrease the budget by 20%. So that is something that you can also follow. That is the third part. The last part is if last three days plus two days ROAS is less than break even ROAS. And by less, I mean, like for example, your break even ROAS is 1.6 and you're getting 1.4 or 1.3 ROAS in your particular ad set or campaign. You should turn them off because they are kind of unprofitable campaign or ad set for us. Uh, because we have given good amount of time, last three days plus two days data is good. If let's say you're spending only $5, then maybe you require a bigger window, maybe of six to seven days, then you can decide on that basis. But normally, if you're spending a good amount of money, anywhere from $10 to $50 or more for a particular ad set or campaign on daily basis, then in that case, you're providing good amount of data to your ad set till it is not profitable, then you definitely should kill them and replace them with new audiences 
Now let's create our first retargeting campaign. With retargeting campaign, we are going to target all those customers and people who have interacted and shown interest on our ads and maybe visited our website as well. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to create custom audiences before we create our first retargeting campaign. And to do that, what you have to do is basically click on all tools over here. You will see audiences go to audiences. Once you click on this, this page will appear. Over here you can go to create audience click on here over here you see custom audiences so now let's understand what are different type of custom audiences so the number one is people who have just viewed your ads so for example they have watched 25 percent of your video if it is a video ad so you can click on this click on next over here you can select these options so for example normally we go with people who have watched at least 25% of the video. So you can click on this for example. And now what you have to do is click on choose videos. With this, you will be able to choose all the videos that you have basically run ads for. And by this, you are telling Facebook to find out all the people who have interacted with your videos, video ads, and have watched at least 25% of the videos. So you can see these are the ads that I have run before. And I will select all the videos that are run particularly for that product. So for example, if I select multiple videos over here, so I will click select on this. So I will select multiple videos over here. As you can see, I have selected some of the videos from the list. And once you do that, you click on confirm. After that, what you have to do is select retention videos. It means like, for example, last seven days, last 14 days, like people who have interacted, for example, if I select seven days, it means it will give us audiences and people who have interacted with our video in the last seven days. If I select 14 days over here, it means that basically people who have interacted and watched at least 25% of video ads in the last 12 days. Normally I go with 14 to 30 day window period so that it has good amount of data and how you name it, you can name it something like product. So you can name it as product. And then I normally name it as MOF, which stands for middle of the funnel because this part or this audience are, I would say that they have interacted with our ads and they have watched our ads. So they comes to the middle of the funnel part of our whole funnel. So if you can understand this thing, like people who have interacted our ads and uh, basically have shown interest through our ads and clicked on our ads, they comes into the middle of the funnel part and people who have done high intent action, for example, add to cart, and they have basically initiated checkout and purchase, they come into the bottom of the funnel. So I'm naming it as MOF, and then you can basically name it as 25 plus 25% 25 plus video views, and for last 30 days, 30 days. And that's how you can click on create, and that's how basically it can create the new audience for you. So as you can see, it has created a new audience for me. And that's how similarly you can create 75% plus video views, 95% plus video views. So basically that's how you can create video views custom audience for you. Now let's focus on next type of audience. For example, they are called as Facebook engagers or Instagram engagers. So let's take an example of Facebook page engagers. So what it means that people who have interacted with your page and by interaction, it means that people who have liked your videos or your ads, commented on your post and maybe engaged with your page, like for example, following your page. So all those activities come into the engagement over your page. Similarly, over here, you can select the window size. It can be seven days, 14 days, and 30 days as well. Let's go with 30 days for now. And similarly, you can name it according. So you can name it similarly like this product. Then again, MOF, then basically saying FB, FB engagement and last 30 days. That's how you can create another audience. Similarly, you can do it for the Instagram account and the same thing you can follow. So basically people who have interacted over your Instagram ads and basically who have uh, engaged with your account, Instagram account, Similarly, you can create audience for Instagram accounts as well. And basically you can do this by clicking on Instagram account, following the exact same procedure. And you will find out all the audiences that have interacted over your Instagram page and basically like your Instagram ads and all. So you can do this by this option and you can do it. Similarly, you can create audiences based on the bottom of the funnel or also like website visitors. So these are called as your pixel events because pixel is the one that can track your add to cart, your website uh, visitors and your purchases and all. So you can click on website and on here basically when you click next over here you, you will see if you have pixel connected you can easily find out events like add to cart for example purchase event and also events like your website visitors your initial checkout 
So all those events you can easily create by uh, clicking on website and there you can find out all the options. So you once you have created that, you can go to again ads manager and here what we'll do, we'll create an ABO campaign that will basically include our different ad set in which we'll target all these type of audiences. So let's do this. We'll click on create. We'll again select the option sales. We'll click on next, click on manual. Over here, we can name it like this product. Click on retargeting and then we can have ABO and then we'll go to ad level. Now what we have to do, we have to select one audiences that we have created, one custom audience. For example, let's say we have, we are going with 25% video view audience that we want to retarget. So we'll select this thing, middle of the funnel, 25% plus video views and I guess that's that should be it. You can start off with smaller budget for retargeting audience because the audience is really small so you don't need higher budget to target them. So you can even start with $10 or $15. You can select the date again next day at midnight. Once you have done that, this is the portion where you select your custom audience that you have created. So over here you can find out the audience we have to select. For example, product MOF 25% video views 30 days. So when you select this option over here, you have to also keep in mind that you remove all the purchasers or anyone who has visited your website because you are specifically targeting people only who have taken action as this one, which is 25% plus video views. You don't want to target people who have visited your website. So that's why you will exclude them because we are going to target people who have visited on our website separately by a different ad set. So that's why we are excluding that particular audience. And you can select the countries, your targeting countries over here, for example. And for example, it's, you can select your targeting countries extra over here. But I don't think that you need any sort of extra details because you have already provided the custom audience uh, over here. So you don't need to put other details in this. Now coming to the important part, which is the ad. So for this, a specific type of ad works very well. I would say like you should go with UGC type of image ads or you can go with videos of testimonials because these are the audience which have already seen your current winning creatives and they have already seen your product, but they may have some doubt regarding the offer or maybe the trust. So to do that, what you can do is provide UGC content or UGC images. And along with that, you can add certain offer, let's say 10% off, 20% off, all those things work really well. So that's how you can do it. So once you have that, similarly, you can create ad set for each custom audiences that we have created so that we can retarget them. So for example, if I click on duplicate, then I'll come over here. So instead of this audience, now I'm going to target people who have engaged with my Facebook page in the last 30 days. So I'll select this option and now I will change the name over here. I will say FP, FP engagement and then 30 days. So by this, I'm targeting only people who have engaged uh, over my Facebook page and I will again exclude all the purchasers and also people who have like visited our website. So you can remove that audience as well. And once this is done, what you can do, you can again duplicate it and select. Now you should select website visitors and then you can remove like, for example, you can select website visitors over here and then you can remove you can select website visitors over here and you can remove people who have purchased from your website. You can see I have added 90 day website visitors, but I have removed all the purchases in the 90 days. Similarly, you can apply it for your ad set as well. So this is how you create your retargeting campaign. Once it is done, once you have added all the ads inside of each ad set, you will publish it. So that's how you create your retargeting campaign. Once you have run ad for more than two weeks, your pixel and your ad account has good amount of data to retarget people who have shown interest in your ads. Since they are your warm customers, they can be converted easily by showing some good ads to them. So for the structure of retargeting, you can have one ABO campaign. You can even try out CBO campaign if that works for you. But I normally go with ABO campaign. This is the ad set structure that you can follow. Always target middle of the funnel and bottom, bottom of the funnel audiences. For example, like one ad set in which you can add 75% video views and you can add 95% video views inside of it as well. But if you want, you can have two separate ad set with each one having these single audiences. You can have one ad set in which you can have website visitors only and you can exclude purchases from it. And then one ad set with FB engagements and IG engagement. You can add them in the same ad set so that the audience side will just get bigger and you can basically spend your money easily. Otherwise, you can separate it out and test it as well. So always exclude bottom of the funnel audiences if you're testing middle of the funnel audiences. For example, let's say if you're testing 75% video views, 
which is a bottom uh, which is basically a middle of the funnel audience so you should uh, basically exclude for example website visitor or purchases from it because you are specifically targeting them only and most important is to remove the bias uh, from all the targeting that you are doing because you don't want to target your bias until and unless i would say that you are specifically retargeting buyers for new product or special offer otherwise you should exclude the buyers from your retargeting ad sets so the budget would be i would say normally you should have a budget of 10 to 15 dollars only because the audience size is really small so basically if you have higher budget it will show same people ads again and again so i would say like a good budget would be 10 to 15 dollars only now let's understand what look alike audience are and how we can use these audiences in our testing campaign and in our audience testing campaign basically so look alike audience is a way your ads can reach to new people who are likely to be interested in your business because they share similar characteristics to your existing customers and basically these are the audiences that are highly likely related or have the same sort of characteristics related to your existing customer base and your existing customer base can be anyone who has maybe interacted your your ad your ad creative maybe visited your website on purchases as well so you are basically finding out all the possible audiences that are kind of highly related to them and that's how this these audiences are really high intent audience that can convert and potentially convert really well so how you can create these audiences there are two ways to do it one you can go again to the audience section over here you can click on lookalike audiences and basically these lookalike audiences are created using your custom audience only so you can click on this or what you can do the custom audiences that you have created you can click on anyone for example people who have for example viewed our product for let's say 25% video views in the last 30 days you can click on this you can click on actions over here you see create lookalike you can click on this and then you can select countries for example United States and top four countries or whatever countries that you are targeting you can select those countries as well for example United Kingdom Australia and Canada this option so where you can see you can create the percentage as well like for example I normally go for five different audiences and what this means is provide your data of how likely the audience is related to, to it. For example, you can say 1% lookalike consists of people most similar to your lookalike audiences. So normally I go with these five audiences because it has a good amount of size. Anywhere from three to five million, I guess it's a good audience. So once you have these uh, options selected, zero to 2%, two to 4%, four to 6%, six to 8%, and eight to 10%. So once you click on create audiences, what it will do is it will create these audiences for you you see new lookalike audiences so these audiences are basically you can understand that for example you know like interest targeting you have one interest for a particular like it has a particular size similarly these audiences they are created by using your own audiences that have interacted over your ads and basically with that they have found out similar type of people based on your uh, engagement and all activities of your customers so on the basis of that, once you click on this, once you click on create audience, after you click on this, look like audience will be created. You have this campaign, the audience testing campaign only inside of that you can create over here. Let me just do it. For example, like this and inside of this, you don't have to select any sort of interest or so you just have to go to your custom audiences. And over here, you can find out an option of lookalike audience. Once you create them, you will see lookalike audience over here. You will select that audience and then that's it. And you can also add maybe countries options as well. If you have not added that into the lookalike audience while creating it, you may add some audiences over a location part, like for example, United States or so, but that's basically it. And inside of that, you can add basically new creatives or the winning creatives that you already have. So it's nothing but another ad set in which you are just trying out custom audience instead of using interest targeting or broad audience you're just using the lookalike audience that's it there is no difference between these other ad set whereas this one the only difference is the audience the type of audience that you are targeting so that's how you can use LLAs for or I would say lookalike audiences for finding out winning audiences for you so now let's understand what type of audiences works really well so these are the retargeting audience or I would say LLAs that are currently working really well. So low level engagement audience, for example, video viewers, 50 to 95% of audience. So you can use the same for retargeting as well in your retargeting campaign. But also when you're testing out different audiences, you can use them as the lookalike audiences. 
So create a lookalike of your custom audience. For example, your custom audience you selected with 50% plus views, you can create a lookalike audience for that. And then you can test out that audience in your audience testing campaign. The same thing you can do is create a lookalike audience of all the website visitor in the last 30 days. And similarly, you can do that for FB engagers and uh, your Instagram engagement as well. And the high level engagement, these are the audiences that you can target for lookalike because lookalike of buyers or purchasers works really well because since the purchase is the highest, uh, I would say like the activity that you want on your website. So any lookalike to that particular audience will be of high quality. So that's why you can use zero to 1%, one to 2% lookalike audience of your buyers or purchasers. So you can basically view these type of audiences and create lookalike audiences for it. We know in 2023 that the creatives play a huge role in deciding whether your campaign or your product will be consistently profitable or not. With poor creatives, your winning ad set will also die down and your winning campaign will also die down. But with constant good winning creatives, you can scale your ads without even targeting a specific audience. You can even select broad audiences with no interest targeting and only on the basis of creative, Facebook algorithm is so strong that it can find the right customer, the potential customers for you. So now let's understand how you can find and create some of the best creative and then scale it using those winning creatives. So, so these are the two type of creatives that you can use. One is the regular old style FP ads in which we have problem solution thing and which we do all the sales pitch and all which looks like salesy and ad. And there are other recently performing and really well performing creatives which are UGC style and TikTok style content. I would always recommend to go with this type of content because this is what is working on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram recently and you can use the old style regular ads creative for testing as well for some of our account the these ads also work but I would highly recommend to switch to this style whenever you have some good creatives available with you or if you have budget to hire creators to create some content for for your ads with this style so now let's for example when you're just starting out at testing our product through dropshipping you can go with the regular clips that are available over different a website and aliexpress and alibaba so you can use the same type of style videos uh, that work before but this type of structure you can follow to create those videos so for regular style fp ads this is something that you can use when you're just testing out the product and you don't have ugc style or tiktok style content so for this you can use already available clips over the internet and you can follow this particular structure to frame your video so for example in this for the first three to five seconds, which is called as hook or the scroll stopper, which is the most important part of your video that in that what you can do, you can basically use a bold claiming thing or you can have a bold headline as well, or you can mention pain point or basically add some suspense into that clip so that people will stick to your video. So the first three to five seconds are really important and it is called as hook. So you can use these type of clips and captions for that. And for the next three to five seconds, you can introduce your product at that time in which you have a POV shot or maybe product in hand or maybe product in use by this you are making your potential customer feel that they are getting this product they are the product is in their hand so this is the next clip that you can have and then after every two to three seconds you can uh, you should basically change the clips with a benefit driven caption or showing a benefit or the product in use so for the next, I would say 10 to 15 seconds, you can have multiple clips in which you can show benefit of your product in the caption and different clips of your product. And then maybe you can, if you have different reviews or testimonial clip available over the internet, you can add them to increase trust factor, or you can even use some feature related captions to your product. And in the end, you can end it with a benefit driven call to action. So this is the structure that you can follow and the video length should be of up to 30 seconds only. So that's how you can create a video if you don't have UGC style or TikTok style content for your Facebook and, and Instagram ads. But once you have a good budget or if you can find out some TikTok style content for your product, definitely go in that route because that is something that has been recently converting really well even for Facebook and Instagram ads. So because the type of video we are talking about, they are native to the platform. They don't look salesy. So people don't feel that they are watching ad. They just see that this is another post that they are viewing. And if it is interesting and definitely if it is related to them, they will watch the content. And that's why this these convert really well. And since we have like raw footages and real people talking about the thing or the situation rather than just jumping into the product and selling it, that that is something that people relate most with the clip or the, with the video. And I would say like if you have testimonial type of video, they are really great for retargeting. 
and especially for retargeting you should go with uh, clips like that are basically talk about review or testimonial of the product because these customers have already seen your ads but they haven't taken any sort of action so what you want is basically to increase the trust for your brand and for your product and second thing you can have some offer in maybe the ad copy or in the headline or description so that they can feel confident about the product and the brand and with the offer you can basically close the deal so that is how you can structure your fp creatives and let's see how to test them now so for creative testing you can follow the simple structure in which what you can do is you can create a creative testing ABO campaign and inside of which you basically will be testing all the new creatives that you are launching and you can follow this structure in which you can have three ad set in each of them you can have your winning audiences and by winning audiences I mean to say the targeting for example let's say one interest is one of your consistent winning audience so you can have that interest in this and let's say one of a lookalike audience is winner for you so you can add this over here and let's say another interest is a consistent winner for you so you can add over here so basically you have to add your winning audiences in these and then what you can do is you can have your creative ready let's say for example you have one video but you are changing only one variable at a time so let's say you just have different hooks in the video so that you can find out what hook works the best for you so let's say if you have one clip or one creative with you with three different hooks let's say only the first three to five seconds are different so let's say if you have three videos to that so this is an example let's say you have video one with hook one video one with hook two and video one with hook three it means the the end part of the video is same only the first three to five seconds are different so basically the hook is different so we are basically testing out the hook so over here what we have done is in this one winning audience we have added these three videos and the same video we have added in the next audience and the same videos we have added in the uh in our third winning audience by this what you are testing out is what sort of hook can be winner for us and ideally if it is a clear winner it should be consistent in all the audiences so once you find a consistent winner for example let's say in all of these three audiences you have found out that a particular in particular video and hook combination is the best performing hook so that will be your winning hook and creative combination and that's how you find out your creative winner so for example let's say video one hook two is performing the best in all these three ad sets so basically that can be your winning audience for you you can run this campaign or i would say that this test for two to three days so that you are providing a good amount of data to it so once this done you you can have one clear in winner always go with a ROAS first like the creative that has the best ROAS will be the creative because that is our ultimate goal if the ROAS are same then you can go for the CTR and let's say if the CTR is also same which should not be the case all the time then you can also go with the average play time so this is the order that you can follow but yeah normally if you are running this type of structure you will find out that one video and hook combination or whatever you are testing out will uh, you will find a clear winner out of it now you can have this winning creative and you can then use this new winning creative to your audience testing campaigns as well and also like cbo scaling campaigns and basically anywhere wherever you are testing out new audiences thing because this is the combination or i would say this is the winning creative for you which you should basically use it later on and you can also use this creative for the audiences that basically are dying down and guys that's it on how to run facebook ads for your e-commerce store i hope you guys enjoyed facebook ads section hello and welcome to the google ads section of the ecom king e-commerce mentoring 2023 free course my name is george vier and i will be guiding you through my strategy to set up Google ads as a beginner for your Shopify store. This year we have a different strategy from what we've been covering for the last few years. And that is because of performance max. Now performance max is a type of campaign that has recently been added by Google. It has been around for a while, but now I really do believe that for a beginner starting Google ads for their Shopify store in 2023, this is the best way to go. And the way we're going to break down this section of the course is we're going to first talk about Performance Max. What is Performance Max and why I believe that Performance Max is the best way for a beginner to start running Google Ads now. Then we're going to talk about how to set up your Performance Max campaign. I'm going to walk you through the process, how to optimize your campaign and how to scale your Performance Max campaign. We'll also cover the assets that you need to enter into your Performance Max campaign so you can be completely prepared before you 
start running your first campaign. So without further ado, let's start by discussing what is Performance Max campaign? How is it different from our previous Google Ads strategies? Performance Max is truly a all-in-one solution for Google Ads. And this is one of the reasons that leads me to believe that for a beginner, Performance Max is really the go-to solution now. Not only does it perform very well, it is also the best way to access all of the different types of Google Ads without much manual work being required. So if you've either watched one of the previous courses or you're familiar with how Google Ads works, Google Ads has a few different options. You have YouTube ads, you have display ads, you have search ads, you have shopping ads, and all of these are very different. Before, if you wanted to be on all of them, you would have to create one campaign for each of these types of ads and manage these campaigns separately. Performance Max campaigns change that because they allow you to use all of these types of Google ads within just one campaign. So the second reason why I think Google Performance Max is the best way to go for a beginner now is because it has very little manual work involved. Unlike some of the other formats of Google ads, you don't need to be monitoring your campaign daily or even sometimes weekly. You can just hop in once every 15 days or so to see how things are going and to scale your budget. This happens because Google Performance Max is very strongly based on machine learning. So Google learns as it delivers the ads and optimizes gradually to show your ads to the part of the audience that is more likely to convert. And the work that you manually have to do is very, very reduced. Unfortunately, this cannot be all pluses because there is this slight disadvantage for a beginner, which is it requires more spend before making decisions. Now, I would recommend that you run your Performance Max campaign for one or two weeks before making any changes at all. And from a budget perspective, I would recommend anything from $10 to $25 a day for a beginner. Let's say we use $10 a day and we run it for seven days. That will be $70. But if we really want to be thorough, we would want to run for two weeks before making changes, which would be $114. Now, no $10 is really, really on the low end. I would recommend starting with something like at least like $15, which for two weeks would mean $210 in ad spend. And this is the absolute minimum. If you have more expensive products, you would probably be looking at $50 a day up to $100 a day, which would of course is a significant investment for a beginner. However, if you don't have the budget to do it properly, don't try and do it for just a few days and then stop running the campaign because that is literally wasting money. Performance Max needs time to optimize. So if you don't have the budget, the best solution is probably to look elsewhere for other solutions like TikTok ads, Facebook ads, or an organic strategy. Remember, Performance Max is based on machine learning. That means it needs time to optimize. And that also means that you need to spend some money before you can consider the results or make any decisions. One of the other big advantages of Performance Max is that it is a full funnel solution. Very easy to scale because it takes care of the entire funnel for you and all you need to do is increase the budget. Performance Max completely automates both prospecting and retargeting without you needing to do any of the manual work. So just so you guys can understand how helpful Performance Max is and especially how impactful this is for a beginner, I just wanna explain how Performance Max changes the way that you run Google Ads for your entire funnel. So usually you have your top of funnel, which is your prospecting campaign, you have your middle of funnel and you have your bottom of funnel campaigns, which these two, of course, are retargeting or also called remarketing. Now let's compare between Google Ads Classic and Google Ads with Performance Max. Now the old way of doing it would be you would get display ads, for example, for your prospecting, or you would get shopping ads for prospecting, and you would have to make one, two campaigns just for prospecting. And then for retargeting, you would use something like smart shopping to retarget everyone that went to your website, or you would use search ads to retarget people that have been to your website or have searched about your brand. And you would end up using a structure very similar to this, where you have four campaigns, two of them covering your top of funnel, and two of them covering the middle and the bottom of your funnel. Of course, this is just an example, but with the traditional way of running Google Ads, you would need four campaigns to do this. Now with Performance Max, it does everything, 
and you have to do absolutely nothing. So Performance Max will take your assets, your pictures and your videos, and it will display them across all of Google's placements, whether that be for top of funnel, whether that be for retargeting, and it does it all automatically. So one single campaign will cover all the bases for what would before require you to build four or more independent campaigns. Now, before you make your first Performance Max campaign, we need to talk about the assets that you'll need to prepare to enter into your campaign. So what you'll be needing is 10 to 15 picture ads. That is what I usually recommend. I believe you can go up to 20, but at least try and get 10 to 15 split between the recommended aspect ratios of one by one, which is a square, nine by 16, which is vertical, and two by one, which is horizontal. Try and mix in some pictures from these different aspect ratios so Google can distribute them alongside their whole network and do a better job at optimizing your delivery. You also need two to five video ads within the same aspect ratios. You need your logo and Google will ask for your logo in a few different aspect ratios and formats depending so it can deliver them also in, in different ad placements. And you will need five headlines, five long headlines and five descriptions. Now this part is very, very important. Don't just write up the first thing that comes to your mind. Any ads platform that is based heavily on machine learning like Performance Max is, is going to draw information from the ad copy that you feed it in order to start doing the targeting. So Google will scan your headlines and your descriptions and it will use that to figure out who your ideal customer is. So what I recommend is that you take some time to build out a thorough customer avatar. Think about it like you were on Facebook or TikTok and you were thinking about interests to target. Brainstorm some interests that correlate to your best possible customer type and then sprinkle in those keywords that relate to your best customers into these headlines and descriptions. Remember that keywords that come earlier in the titles or in descriptions usually have priority. So make sure to use your best keywords early on in the headlines and descriptions to help Google do a better job at finding your ideal customers. Now, the first thing that you're going to need is to set up your merchant center and your ad account so you can start running your Google ads. This used to be complicated, but now if you're running on a Shopify store, it is very, very simple. All you need to do is head over to the app store and find the Google channel like you can see here on the screen now install this app into your store and follow the setup process. Setup process is going to look like this. You're going to be able to connect your Google account and then Google will tell you what requirements you have to meet for your store to be eligible to run Google Ads. Make sure to pay close attention to these requirements and what Google asks you to do before your Google Ads account goes up for review. Because if you don't meet these criteria, you might get your account suspended or it might not even get approved in the first place. There's two things from my experience with my clients that usually people overlook. The first one is usually the contact methods. Unlike a lot of other platforms, Google is very thorough in the requirements for contact methods. Google needs you to insert at least two of these three options, your phone number, your physical address, and your email address. You need to have two out of these three phone number, physical address, email address. I usually go with email address and physical address because I don't like to have phone numbers on, but it is entirely up to you. Just make sure that you have at least two out of these three options or else Google will probably not approve your merchant center. And even if it does get approved, it is very likely that you'll get in trouble later on. Another thing is the manufacturer part identification number or SKU or the identification of your products. Once the Google sales channel is installed, you're going to see a list like this, which is the feed from your merchant center where Google lists the products that you can run ads to. There are a few fields like you can see here where it says edit Google shopping fields that you need to fill in for the products in order to optimize the listing. One very important one is what they call the manufacturer part identification number or SKU or just the, um, the product identification number. If you don't have one of those, like I usually don't have one of those, you need to check the box that indicates that your product is a custom product. You'll find this option right next to the manufacturer part identification number or SKU field within the Google app. And just make sure that you select that the product is a custom product so you won't have any issues with your products getting suspended because they don't have an identification number. Keep in mind also that Google might take two to five business days to approve the products. That is normal. Google is a bit slow at approving the products because they're very thorough in the 
reviews that they make. So don't be surprised if it takes a little longer than expected. But if you meet all of these requirements, you should be fine. Now, once we have our Google Sales channel ready to go, we're going to go into our Google Ad account by going to ads.google.com and we're going to click Create Campaign. So I'm now going to show you in my ad account here how to create your first Google Ads Performance Max campaign. So you can select either sales or create a campaign without a goals guidance, both work. Let's go with sales now and then you should see your purchase conversion goal here. That's very important. This should automatically be set up when you install your Google sales channel. And it is very important that you see it here because that is of course the goal of this campaign. That's what we wanna get. We wanna get sales. And if we don't have this conversion goal set up here, we will have a very hard time understanding which sales actually came from our Google campaigns. So click continue and then we want to click performance max because that's the campaign type that we want and then here you want to make sure that you select the merchant center account that you can see on your google sales channel when you go on your shopify store and you open your google sales channel you will see what is the merchant center account that is connected to your shopify store so make sure to enter here the same merchant center account that is connected to your shopify store and then we're going to name our campaign we're going to call it let's say health and fitness because that's the name of the store that we're making up. We're gonna call it, we're gonna do US, we're gonna do performance max, all ages. I would recommend that you start with just one country because again, this is machine learning. So if you start with whatever country is the best for you to get sales, it just makes it a little bit easier for Google to optimize since you're giving it a smaller sample size. So I would recommend that if you know what your best country is, you start with that. If not, you start with maybe two, four or five countries, maybe just the big five to try and narrow down the reach and don't give Google a very diverse set of audiences to target, especially if it doesn't have any data on it yet. So we'll start with just the US all ages and we'll click continue. Now here, you have two options. You can do conversions or you can do conversion value. Now conversion value is something that requires data. If you don't have any previous sales on your account, no data, you want to start with conversions. And then later on, if you have like 50 sales in a week, that gives you a decent amount of data to think about optimizing for conversion value instead of conversion. If you're starting out, no data on your account, you want to go with conversions. Target cost per action means that you ask Google to give you conversions under a certain cost. And this is only going to perform well if you have data, because if you don't have data, Google doesn't know how to find conversions below a certain cost cap, because of course it has no idea who your customers are and how much they usually spend. So again, this is something that you can use to optimize your campaign later on when you have more data to start, we just turn it off. Locations, we're gonna start with the United States, as we've discussed, target right there. If you want, if you're, if you're running ads for local businesses, you might want to use radius here to keep it very targeted. But if you're running a Shopify store and you're selling to the entire country, enter United States languages, of course, if you're targeting countries with very different languages, like if you're targeting European countries, then you might want to select English. If your ads and your website are in English, because of course, um, you don't want to be targeting countries with a lot of speakers of another language. If your whole funnel is in English, in the case of the United States, not that big of a deal. Most people in the United States speak English, so you can just let it be there and click next. Now the asset group is very important. This is where you're going to enter the pictures that we've discussed before, your logo, your headlines, and your descriptions. So final URL is the URL for the landing page that you want to send people to, whether that be a landing page or product details page, then images, you can add up to 20 images, diversify on the aspect ratios like we've discussed before, logos, you can add up to five logos with different aspect ratios, try and add a few different logos, don't just do like five different squares, add logos for different aspect ratios because the placements vary a lot and you want to have different aspect ratios to be able to use as many ad placements as possible then up to five videos use different aspect ratios to be able to make the most of different placements and then headlines long headlines and descriptions remember do your customer avatar use keywords that relate well to your customers be as narrow as specific as possible because that will help Google find your ideal customers. Business name, put in your business name. Site links can be useful if you have more than one winning product. Sometimes you will see on Google search results some other links below the main search results that point to another page. For example, if you Google Apple, you'll probably see site links underneath the main Apple search results saying iPhone 14, iPad, whatever, different products, right? If you have multiple winning products, you can set up site links to link directly to your best product pages. 
call to action I would recommend automated or shop now and then you can add a few more asset types here like promotions prices and call outs now this part right here is very important audience signal add an audience signal this is where you tell google where to search for your ideal customers so i have some audiences here that are based on past purchases because i have data on this ad account but for you you won't have any of this if your account is brand new you'll have to select new audience here you have these four different options to indicate to google where you wanted to search for your target audience of course demographics if you have demographic data on your customers, this is where you set it up. Then data is probably not going to be very useful to you unless you have data on your ad account, because this is where you would use previous data like previous purchases on your ad account. But these two are the ones that are going to be very important. Custom segments, interests and detailed demographics. If you're familiar with Facebook ads or TikTok ads, this is similar in a sense that it allows you to search for people based on what they're interested in, what they've searched for on Google, try to be as narrow and specific as possible. Because as you get more data, it's easier for Google to find customers in a broad audience. When you're starting out and Google has no data on your customers, you want to help it as much as possible find your first buyers, even if it is in a very niche down specific pocket of your audience. Because once Google gets a few buyers, you can then use that data to find buyers in a broader audience. So don't try to go broad here. Try to be as specific as possible. Once you have your audience signal, you can click next, set your budget. Again, I would recommend anything between 10 and $100 a day. If your product is priced over $100, then you probably want to be on the higher end of this interval. If your product is cheaper, depending on your budget, you can go anywhere from 10 to $50 a day. I would recommend starting out at least with 15 to $20 a day. Run it for a week or ideally run it for two weeks and only then you can start to evaluate and make changes. Now, after you've run your campaign for one or two weeks, first of all, the most obvious part is if it is profitable, you want to increase the budget. I would recommend that you increase the budget by 20 to 30% every single week, as long as you maintain profitability. If you're very, very profitable, you can increase your budget by more than 30%, but I wouldn't recommend that, especially for beginners with new ad accounts, because it might cause some reoptimization and your ads might start getting worse results. And that is the most important thing that you can do to scale your performance max campaign. It is really that simple. The only two other things that I would like to add is you can go to locations here, click your country, click regions, and then let's do states here. And you can see if Google is spending money on states, they're not getting you any results. For example, here you can see we've got three sales on California, two sales on Colorado, one on Illinois, and these are the three states that are spending money. So we don't need to do anything. Let's say Florida was spending a lot of money and getting no results. We would then click here, click edit and exclude Florida. Another way you can optimize is your ad schedule, day and hour. And you can do the same. You can look here and see if you're spending a lot of money on days and times that don't get you any results and just focus your spending on the days and times that bring you the best results. But that is pretty much it for Performance Max in terms of optimization. It is very simple. All you need to do is let Google do its job, give it time, don't make changes all the time and let it optimize because it is mostly based on machine learning. So letting it run is the best thing you can do one or two weeks before you make any changes. Of course, if it's not profitable after two weeks, there's a chance that it won't become profitable at all. So the best thing to do is either to decrease the budget and try it for another week at a lower budget or just stop and reconsider your offer. And that's it for my recommendation for a beginner friendly Google Ads strategy for 2023. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on my socials right here on the screen. You can reach out to me on YouTube at George Vieira Ecom or Instagram, George Moita Vieira. Just send me a message on either of those and I'll help in any way I can. Thank you for sticking around and you're watching the Ecom King e-commerce mentoring 2023 free course. Hey guys, my name is George Gabriel and I've been doing e-commerce since the last six years. I own multiple brands and dropshipping stores doing multiple six figures per month and on today's course i will be covering the tiktok ads for 2023 i will be trying to be as detailed as i can so i hope you guys enjoy now tiktok is actually very very simple so let's get started so first of all what you need to have is a vpn if you are not living in the us and you want to target the us right so you need a vpn um and change your location to the us so you can target both us and canada 
Now I recommend you to use either NordVPN or ExpressVPN and you just need it to sign in. Now the trick for TikTok to work is a lot of creatives, right? So it's not like Facebook where you can just run with one, two creatives and test a product. I would not even call that a test on TikTok. You need at least seven to 10 different creatives. All right. And to start running the ads on TikTok is very simple. You just need to download the TikTok app on the Shopify, uh, you know, Shopify store and connect it very, very easily. There's a bunch of resources on that. It's really, really simple. Now, let's get into the campaign and let me show you how to start your first campaign. So you want to click on create the campaign objective is always going to be convergent. The campaign name should be product name test one. Right. So you always know that you are testing the product for the first time. Now select the pixel. The optimization event should be complete payment. Um, select placement, always go for TikTok only. And I would stop user comment and video downloads, but I would keep video sharing. Location, both Canada and United States. Gender, it depends on the product, right? So if it's something for female, then only female. If it's something for male, then only male. If it's for both, then of course, go for both. Now, the age also depends on the product, right? So if it's something for younger people, then go 18 plus. If it's more for more mature people, then I would go 25 plus or 35 plus. Again, this depends on your product. Next is the targeting. Now, when it comes to the targeting, I start by making a ad set and target very specific interests. So here for this example, I'm making an ad set for targeting a neck massager. Right. So what I would do is I would do massagers, massage therapy, body massager, face massager. You know, I would always target five to 15 different um, interests in this ad set. Then the budget, I would go 20 plus and the start date always start next day at midnight. All right. An optimization goal should be conversion at the lowest cost. Now, when you are done, you just want to go to the ad group name and name it interest stacked specific then we hit next next we're going to the ad level now on the ad level what you can do is you can start naming it um c1 for your first creative here you can put in your brand name all right and then you want to upload your video in here so we can just pick a random video from the library for this one let's just say just see an example let's just say it's this one right here so this is how you the tiktok video should look like i was getting really tired of chronic back pain from sitting at my desk all day long so i actually got pressure board and i'm really excited to try it out it helps relieve neck shoulder and even back pain from sitting all day long which is exactly what i need so it actually has 14 different nodes that targets pressure points and it helps loosen knots that you have so you can sleep a lot more easily at night once you're using this and you'll feel a lot more energy because you'll be sleeping better go grab your Cool. So as you can see, this is a UGC um, creative, right? A girl talking about the product. This works really well on TikTok. You can also use the voiceover on TikTok. That works really well. Now, what I also recommend you to do is go to um, the creative center on TikTok. Just type in Google creative center and it will be the first link. And what it allows you to do, it allows you to open up campaign inspiration and top ads dashboard where you can see the top performing ads on TikTok Great. right now, right? So you can see here, you can filter by objective, should be convergence, likes, top one to 20%, last 30 days, all right? And then you can see all the top performing ads and you can get a lot of inspiration for your product. So you can replicate what is already working now. Let's go back to the ads manager. Now in the text, usually what I do is I put the offer, right? So I would put like maybe, I'm um, just an example, buy two, get one free, limited time only. Just an example. Now the URL, I would always put in your product page, uh, .com. Next is the website event. Now here you just leave it empty as it is and it should be, you should be good to go. Now what you need to do is after you finish the first ad, you can duplicate it, right? And you can change the video. You can just click on update and change the video. You ideally want to have two to three videos in the interest testing campaign. So what we are doing right now, we are doing um, interest testing. Once we figure out the winning interest, then we will move into creative testing. Okay. Then you can just click on submit. So guys, after you've submitted, you should be um, able to see something like this, right? So what I usually do is I have four different audiences, okay? And each one of these audience have different targeting. So first of all, I have the interest specific, the one that we've done. We have the interest stacked. We, we go like basically the broad interests that are on TikTok. Let me show you. So interest stacked are basically, you know, the sport and fitness, health, wellness. It's like literally the first interest that you see right here. These are the broad interests. 
I would target three to five of them. Then we have open targeting, meaning no targeting at all. Then we have hashtags. So stacked hashtag, again, another five to 15 hashtag stacked that are related to your product. Now, once you do that, you want to run this test and you want to let this run and each ad set should spend at least, um, you know, 40 to 80 dollars all right now after spending 40 to 80 dollars what you will see is either one you're either getting sales or you're not so if you haven't gotten any sales after spending you know 40 to 80 dollars on the, each asset again this depends on the price of your product so let, to give you a better rule you should spend two times your average order value all right so if your order value is um, 20, you should then spend 40. If your order val your, your average order value is 40, then you need to spend 80 on each ad set. Now, if you don't get results after spending this much money, I would just literally kill, move on to the next product. Now, if you do get results, what you need, what you will notice is one um, audience, which let's say in this example, the interest stacked will get you better results than all the rest. So what you want to do is you want to duplicate the interest stack. You want to increase the budget. So go from maybe $20 budget to, you know, so we can do it together, duplicate it to the same campaign. So keep everything the same. But what you want to do is you want to go to the budget and you want to increase the budget to 100 or 120 and what you want to do here is you want to increase the amount of creatives right so you want to instead of having two to three creative now you want five to seven different creative or even more the more creatives you have the better the chances are that you will succeed with tiktok all right now after you've done that you're gonna let that campaign run and again spend double your average order value now if it's unprofitable of course kill if it is profitable however what you want to do then is you can start increasing the budget by 20 to 30 percent every three days so if a hundred dollar was profitable after three days you go from 100 to 130 right if it's again profitable again another 30 percent. so every three days you can start increasing your budget now this is the first scaling method right by increasing the budget now if you see that increasing the budget keep getting profitable after two to three times what you can also do is you can also duplicate that winning ad set and have so you can have two of the same assets running and generating you sales, all right? So these are the two scaling methods that are working for me. Now, one big thing, guys, um, I, did, I forgot to mention, when you are killing, when you are running the ads, if you spend like $20, $30, and you see the CPC is extremely bad, like $1, $2, $3, and the CTR is less than 0.8%, of course, don't wait too much, just kill it immediately, okay? So I'm gonna include this PDF in um, in the course as well, so you can also learn from it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. That's my TikTok ad strategy for 2023. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. Guys, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to this part of the video. My name is Vedant Mohan, and today I will teach you how to set up your YouTube ads campaign. So first thing first, let's talk about the format. So when it comes to YouTube ads, there is two well-known format that we're gonna use today. The first one is called the discovery format or in-feed format, right? And this is the one that actually will help you to display your ad in the search results. So as you can see here on the left side of the screen, whenever um, you know someone is typing Google Glass, you have two ads showing at the top of the screen and those ones are what we call discovery ads. You have another example here. Let's say you search for a specific video and you have one video coming at the top you would have the small badge ad here showing that it's an ad and that's called discovery or in-feed format. And these kind of ads are pretty powerful because obviously uh, you can really target based on keywords or you can really target your, your, uh, your audience based on the channels or the interest you want to use. And you can literally display the type of content they want to consume to make sure they engage with your brand. So this is the first type of ad we're going to focus on. The second one is called the skippable in-stream format. And this is the one who is the, the most well-known. It's actually the, the one that will kind of like interrupt your videos and it's uh, shown either before the video you want to watch or in the middle of the video you're watching or at the end of the video you just watch, right? And this is like a video that you cannot skip for, skip for the five for first seconds. However, after five seconds, you'll be able to skip these ads. And these ads are kind of like particular because here you can just put a call to action and you can directly link your target customer to a website, okay? So these ads, skippable in streams, are the one we're gonna focus on if you want to drive leads or sale to a website, right? While the others, 
the one we just talked about, the discovery format, are the ones we're gonna use if you want to drive people to a website. But first, we actually want to trigger their attention and just make sure they will know more about our brand, right? So it's two different goals, two different purposes. Discovery is really good for brand awareness, while the other one, Skip with Instagram, is more designed for conversions, okay? Now, let's move forward. First thing first, uh, I will show you how you need to create your Google Ads account. So you're just gonna go on Google Ads, okay? So you go on Google and you type in Google Ads, and um, yeah, you will land to the website, and you will actually uh, have to create your account. So obviously you need a Gmail account for that. Um, if you already have a Gmail account, you just have to sign in. If not, you can just click on start now, start now, okay? So this is how it looks on my screen. I already have a couple of accounts. I will just create a new Google Ads account so I can show you how the whole process from A to Z. So let's click on create a new Google Ads account. Here we go. So um, you can directly switch to expert mode uh, because it will give you like more options and that's kind of like what we need for the setup we try, we're trying to achieve today. And you can just create an account without a campaign so it will help you to skip all the unnecessary stuff. Now here you have to provide your business information. So you want to insert your billing country, your time zone and your currency as well. And if you want to get like discounts, performance tips and uh, offers from Google, you can just tick this box. Otherwise you can just tick that this one if you don't want to get those one, right? In my case, I'm just so I'm gonna say no. And then you can submit your, ad, your um, account here. And now you can start exploring the account. Okay, so first thing first, you want to make sure that the billing is properly set up. So to do that, you just wanna click here on tools and settings and you want to go here under the billing tab, you will have settings, right? Once you are in the settings here, you just want to scroll down, make sure you have all your taxes information here so you can get a proper invoice, put your contact details here, and then you can just set up your card. Once it's done, you just want to click on I agree and you want to submit the account creation. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we just want to make sure we link to your YouTube channel to the account. And to do so, you just have to click here under tools and settings and you want to go under the setup tab and you will have linked accounts, right? So here in links account, you can see that you have many, many options. For now, we're just going to focus on YouTube. So you want to click on here on details next to YouTube. And here you just want to add your channel to your Google ads account. So click on add channel. All right. So you just want to go on your YouTube channel and you want to make sure that your YouTube channel is created and set up. Um, and then you just want to take the link of your channel here, go back into your Google ads account and you want to paste your YouTube channel link. Here we go. Now, if it's done, you just want to select the right channel and you want to make sure that Google understand that you own this channel. That next step, you want to go to YouTube. You will have to select your channel again and then you can just click back on your Google Ads account and you will see that now the channel will be linked. So now you just want to insert the link name here. Obviously, this is for internet use, but you just need to insert a name. So I will just call it my main channel right? And then you just want to click on link here. And here you go. You can just refresh your page on Google ads and you will see that the account is linked, right? So this is quite good because now I'm ready to go with uh, my channel, which means that I will also be you able to use all the data coming from my channel when it comes to retargeting, meaning targeting people who actually watch any of my video or anything like that. All right, cool. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to click again on tools and settings and you want to go under links account here. And now you want to link your Google Analytics account, which is quite useful as well if you have an analytics account. If you don't have it, um, it's actually uh, a time to create one because this will, this will help you to revert all the data coming from analytics, meaning from your website, directly to your Google Ads account. So if you have created your Google Analytics account with the same Gmail address you're using on Google Ads, you will see your Google Analytics account just here, right under this tab. You just have to select it and link it to make sure it's working properly. All right, cool, well done. Now the next thing you wanna do is just as on Facebook, you need to set up your Google conversion on your website, right? So this will be done manually and I will, and I will want to show you how to do this on your Shopify store, for instance. Uh, but bear in mind that I will also give you the link of the documentation. Uh, there is an official documentation on the Shopify website that will teach you exactly how to set up your conversion event onto your website. So you just wanna click here on tools and settings and you wanna go under conversions and now it's time to create your first conversion event. So I'm gonna click on new conversion action here. So you have to keep in mind that the conversion is the event you want to happen on, on your website, the reason why you are optimizing your campaign. So what's the main goal of your campaign? And obviously here, 
in this example, I'm running an e-commerce store, so I want to actually get some sales, some purchase on my website. So this will be my conversion, meaning that every time I get a sale, this will be the conversion I want, and this is what I'm going to revert back to Google. So my conversion here is gonna be purchase. So my conversion is going to happen on my website. So let's click on website here. So you just have to insert your domain name, you click on scan, and now you can just select your recommended domain name and you wanna click on apply. And as you can see here, we will have to add our conversion actions manually. So let's start with the first one and let's click on add a conversion action manually. As I said earlier, we just want to optimize for purchase. So in the goal and action optimization, I'm going to select purchase. My conversion event here, I'm gonna leave purchase because this is what I want. Now for the value, I'm going to use, use different values for each conversion because obviously every single purchase might have a different value. But still, as you can see here, you have to enter a default value. So the default value would be one USD in my scenario here. So let's put one USD. Now, in terms of how Google Ads is counting your conversion, you wanna make sure Google Ads counts every single conversion coming from the ads and not only one. So let me explain the difference between every and one in this case. Okay, so let's say for instance that a customer buys multiple time on my website and actually he's coming from one of my ads. So if I just leave early ticks here, it means that if during the conversion window, right? So let's say here in this scenario, if within the 30 days of the customer clicking on my ad, uh, multiple purchases are happening, it means that every single purchase is gonna count and the conversion will be attributed to my Google Ads account, right? Now, if I just select one, it means that even though if the customer buys five times in a month, right, and he's initially coming from my ads, it's just gonna count the first conversion. And as you really want to optimize for the algorithm at its highest level, you wanna make sure you count every single conversion. Now for the other details, you can leave them as it is and you can just click on done. All right, now let's click on save and continue. And now I will have to set up my tag, meaning my conversion on my website. So here I will just click on the setup button next to Google tag. So, and now for seamless and easy integration, you just wanna make sure the Google channel is activated on your store. So this is pretty straightforward. You just have to follow the instructions, right? And you will see that um, the tag will be automatically installed to your website. If it's the case, you can just use the tag here that will be showing up and you can just click on confirm. And if not, you need to install your Google tag. So you can just tick this option here and click on next. And here you go, you will have to install your tag manually in this situation as we're using Shopify. So you just select the code here. And as you can see on the link I will provide you guys, you have to go under your team to actually install the global tab on the team.liquid file, right? So let's do this together. So the step number one is that we just want to um, go under online store, actions and edit code. So let's go online store. I will just select my team here. And then you want to search for the team.liquid file, which is just here. And now, as you can see here, we just have to paste the code we just received from Google under the head section, right? So let's put it after the head here, between the brackets. And in my scenario, I will just paste it here. And that's it. Now you just wanna make sure you save this before moving to the next step. So now I just click on exit to go to the previous screen. Congrats, you just have installed the Google tag on your Google website. Now it's time to install the conversion where you want the conversion to happen, which means at the checkout. So let's go under the settings tabs here, and then we're gonna go on checkout. And then I will advise you to go at the bottom of the document to select the last piece of code, which is this one, right? Because we want the conversion value to be dynamic, okay? Which means that whenever the prices change, whenever someone buys something, whatever the price is, it will be showing properly in your conversion, right? Uh, bear, bear this in mind because if you go for the wrong option and you go for the code just above, you're always gonna see value $1, which means that your return, return on ad spend will not be um, accurate, right? So it's very important to select the second portion of the code in this page. So you just select it here, copy, and then on, and then on the checkout page here, you wanna scroll to the bottom here and you will see that there is a box where you can actually paste a piece of code. You just want to paste it and then you want to save. It's time to set up the campaign. So let's go here under the campaign tab and you just wanna hit the plus button here, create a new campaign, and let's go for this campaign setup. So what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to get some sales on my website, so you just wanna click here on sales. Now that your conversion event is set up, you can just see it here, and as you can see here, purchase is set up. Now let's click on continue. 
So for this campaign setup, as you really want to focus on YouTube, let's keep it simple and click on video here. And now you wanna hit continue. So here you will have to give your campaign a name. In my scenario, I will give my campaign the name of the product I'm trying to test. And also I will just include the fact that I'm just testing different creatives. And then I'm also going to include that I'm going to set up the maximize conversion setting. So this is something I will explain you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so now let's take a look at the locations here. You will have to uh, include your locations so you can ju just tag those. Uh, you don't have to actually split test them. You don't have to create one different ad group or one different ad set for angry every single location. You can just stack those together and then you can actually filter by language. So in my scenario here, I will go ahead and target French speaking countries. Uh, so I will just put all the countries here, right? And I will just like select the language here, which is French. Now let's talk about a bidding strategy. As you can notice here, um, I just included that my campaign will be maximized conversion within its name. Um, there is a reason why, because you have two options here. You can either go for target CPA, which means that you want to actually tell to Google that you can afford a maximum of X, Y, Z. So you, you have to just set up an amount for your maximum cost per conversion, or you can just say to Google to do his best and just go out there and find you as maximum conversion um, as you can for your budget, right? So as you can see here, TCPA, target cost per action. So you have to set up an average amount that you are willing to pay for a conversion, okay? So, however, here, as we don't have enough data on the account, we want to go for maximize conversion. And in that way, we'll have some accurate data about what our cost per action will be. And then we can come back to this later and just change the conversion action here and the, the bidding strategy to target TCPA. So as you can see here in the bidding strategy, you have two options. You have maximize conversion, which is the one we're gonna use today, and you have target CPA. So maximize conversion says that actually, if you are using this one, Google Ads will automatically set your bids to help you to get the most conversion within your budget, right? However, if you use target CPA, this means that you have to set an average amount that you're willing to pay for a conversion, okay? So this means that, uh, of course, you need to get some data as the account is just new and fresh. We will not be able to use the target CPA yet. So we need to use maximize conversion so, so that Google can actually go out there, find some people who will buy, and then we'll get a cost per action. And then we'll be able to come back here and change the bidding strategy to target CPA. So for now, let's keep it simple and let's move on maximize conversion. Now you have to select your budget type and date. So just as on Facebook, you can either go for a daily budget or a campaign total. Let's say I'm running a campaign for Christmas, okay, for two weeks from the 10th to let's say uh, the uh, 24th. So this is something I can do in here. I can just set up my budget. Let's say I have a 1,000 uh, euro for two weeks. I will just insert my budget here. And as you can see here, uh, Google will kind of like calculate the total daily budget, which is in this case, 66 euro per day, right? However, if you just wanna go ahead with the daily budget, you just have to select daily here and you can set up your budget. I would recommend to go ahead with a budget of anything you feel comfortable with uh, between 25 to 100 euro per day. However, if you go for the daily budget, I would just recommend you to not set up an end date here so the algorithm then can do his best to find you some conversions. All right, now let's talk about network. So as you can see here, YouTube will display. All right, so now let's start. All right, so now let's talk about networks. As you can see here, Google will display your ads on YouTube in the search results, uh, on the videos as well. So you, we have the discovery and the in-stream format, just as I said in the beginning on this video. All right, so let's quickly have a look at the networks. As you can see here, Google is going to display our ads in the search results of YouTube, but also within different YouTube videos. So we have the two formats I talked about at the beginning of this video. So we have the two most important format covered. So here we have another option, which is sit links. So sit links will actually allow you to redirect people to other pages of your website. This is quite useful because instead of just having the call to action within your ad, you will also have another space just below the ad with four different links that you can choose to redirect people on different pages of your website, okay? So let's say here you're trying to advertise a winter product, so you will have your main product page linked to the mail call to action. However, if you want to actually promote and advertise different products on your website, you can still put them here as sit links. 
Okay, so to create a seedling, you just have to click on new seedling here and you have different options. So you'll have to put your seedling text here, which is the call to action, the descriptions, which, which are always good and recommended because those will be shown on desktop and here you can put your landing page link, right? So bear in mind that it has to be, of course, on the same domain name, but let's say I want to advertise product one here. I just put product one 50% off today to make it competing. You can put a description of the product one here and here, and then here you put your link product one, for instance. Okay. Um, so I would recommend you to actually make sure that you use seed links. If you don't have multiple products on your website, then what you can do is you can just like put some other page like the about us page, uh, the home page, or you can also put the FAQ page. Uh, anything is good because the goal here is to make sure you actually use as much space as you can within the screen. All right, so now that, that we have the campaign settings on point, let's talk about the ad group. So just as on Facebook, you have the campaign level, then you have the ad group level, which is where you're gonna define your target, your demographics and those kind of things. And then you have the ad, which are within the ad group, okay? Which means that in a campaign, if you want to change, let's say you want to try different interests or different uh, target audiences, you can just have multiple ad groups, okay? So you just have to duplicate the ad group and make a second one. Okay, and then you have to change the interest and that's what we are about to do today. Okay, so let's go here back in the Google Ads Manager. So I'm going to create my first ad group and this one will be interest based. So I just call it like interest stacked. Okay, and here you have to create your audience. So just click on create audience and you have different targeting settings that I'm about to cover right now. So as you can see here, you have multiple audience settings. So you can create an audience based on custom segments. So this is pretty powerful, but this is something we're not going to use today because we don't have enough data yet. But you have to bear in mind that Google will actually record every single search query coming from any kind of user. So let's say you have your Gmail account installed on your Chrome session and you do and you search often for restaurants or fitness accessories. Google knows that you are a fitness lover or a restaurant lover, for instance. And then we can just type in some keywords here to actually include you in a segment that we will be able to target with our campaign. Okay, so you also have your data here, which is everything related to your website, your YouTube channel or whatever. As you have the Google tag campaign installed on your website and as you have your YouTube channel linked, you can literally just retarget people who actually watch your video, your subscribers, or you can also retarget people visiting your website. And once you have enough data, you will also be able to create lookalikes, which are similar audiences, which means that Google will actually go out there and try to connect the data points between the people using your data, meaning your assets, your websites, or your YouTube channel, and connect this with other people around the world to actually find largest and more accurate audience for you. Then here you also have the interest and detailed demographics, and this is the one we're gonna use. So you have different options here. You have the in-market audience, live events, detailed demographics and affinity. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of this one. So in market are basically people who are interested in different categories of things that are fine in the market. So you can go like very specific about anything you want here. Okay, so I strongly recommend you to actually browse this, but people interested in let's say food, for instance, um, might, be, uh, might be an interest that might suit your campaign and you can just narrow it down and go deeper and deeper. Like you can literally go, like say for people who actually enjoy fast food or grocery delivery or pizza or whatever, okay? And this is based on how people are using Google, okay? So another type of audience uh, is live events. So as you know, again, based on the query people do, based on what people search on Google, all these things are recorded in here. You can just literally target people based on the search they are doing right now and the live events that are happening uh, to them. So what's happening into the life, okay? So let's say you have a product related to marriage. Let's say you have some rings or accessories. You can literally target people who are getting married soon, which is pretty powerful as well. Then you can also go under detailed demographic and you can just target based on parental, parental status. Let's say you have a store for babies. You can literally go here and target, let's say parents for infants. Then you have the last section, which is, which is affinity. And this is the one related to people who are actually interested in a topic, right? So you have, you have different topics here. The main difference between in market and affinity is that in market are people actively researching for something and affinity, affinity are people browsing these kind of things, kind of like, you know, a passion or casually browsing. 
So for this video, I'm going to stick to the in-market category because these are the interest with the most data. And as we don't have any data yet, we just wanna make sure we can leverage as much data points as we can to make sure we optimize our campaigns in the long term. So here I'm advertising Christmas lights. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going under the gift and occasion um, section and I will just select holiday items and decoration. Uh, you can stack different in-market interests if you want. However, don't mix uh, different categories between them. So don't mix, let's say, in-market and, li and live events, or don't mix uh, in-market and detailed demographic, otherwise it might mess up the algorithm and you don't want that. So as you can see here, my audience is pretty big, which is really good. And if you want to narrow it down, you can still narrow down the demographics. Uh, here, I'm going to target people between 25 and let's say 54. Then you just have to save. Then don't forget to add your audience name. So I'm going to call this one interest holiday items and save. All right, so now it's time to create your ad. So here, what you wanna do is you just want to paste your YouTube video link. So if you haven't uploaded your video yet, do it now. You just have to go on your YouTube channel and upload your video and you can actually just put it as unlisted. You don't have to display it and show it on your channel. You just have to get a link. And then here you want to insert your product link and then on the display URL, you can actually customize those paths. So here, I actually strongly recommend you to put like some really good catching keywords to actually make sure people understand that this is an awesome offer and to get a better click through rate. So here, obviously, you have to put the real link of your product where you want to send people, but here you can play around with things. So for instance, here, I will just put like exclusive offer, like free tree, right? Now, the next thing you wanna put is your call to action and here you have 10 characters. So I always use buy now or uh, get 50% off might work as well. So here you have to select your call to action. So you can actually play around, play around with the call to action you wanna put. The most common one is buy now or get it now, for instance, this works as well. So, and then you can actually put your headline. So I'm gonna, gonna put Xmas tree here. So this is how it looks like on smartphone. And if you click here, you can just click on in-feed video. And as you can see here, you have a long headline, okay? So this is for the in-feed format. Remember, whenever someone search for a specific YouTube video or just do a YouTube search, and you want to, your ad to be displayed at the top of the results, uh, you can actually pair on with longer headline and description to actually get someone to watch your video. So here, I'm going to pair around with longer headline. Here you go, so you wanna make sure it's competing enough because you want to get a high click-through rate. And then in the description, you can actually just add some benefits or some features to make sure people trust your product more. So here, this is how it looks. So get your x Street today at 50% off with free delivery in less than 72 hours, order today, handmade in Sweden, 10 years warranty, free delivery worldwide. And then here, you, can, you just have to put an ad name. So here, as I'm going to try, different call to actions. I would just call it get it now and I would just hit on ad creation here. Now you can just click here under duplicate to get another variation and here you can change the call to action if you want to split test the call to actions. And this one is going to be order now for instance. Okay. So now I have two ads. The first one which is with the call to action order now. The second one which is with the call to action get it now. It's actually very useful to have at least two ads within your ad groups so that Google can actually do its best and leverage the algorithm at its highest level. Now that you're done, you just wanna click on create campaign and then you can just continue to campaign. All right, so now let me show you how you can optimize your campaign. Here, I'm going to show you one campaign I actually use with the structure. As you can see here, we invested almost $1,000 into this campaign and we got almost 1,141 conversions with a total conversion value of 110,000 euro out, which is almost a 10x return on investment. So let's go within the campaign settings. So as you can see here, I had two ad groups and I only kept one because one of them was actually performing and the other one was not. And as you can see here under campaigns, ad groups and ads, I had multiple ads but some of them had a very, very high cost per conversion. As you can see here, some of them were costing me 83 euro for every single purchase, the other one 33, and as my product value here is only 
35, I need to make sure I stay within my cost per conversion, right? So the way you can optimize is basically just by posing the ads who are not performing. This is the very first thing you can do. So the budget will be used more wisely and you wanna tr try to find a sweet spot between the cost per conversion and the volume you're getting, right? So one quick way to analyze this is actually to sort out by, by the total number of conversion you had. And as you can see here, I had one ad with actually 231 conversions and every conversion was costing me four euro 91 which is pretty good so basically you just want to scroll and optimize like this and you just want to pause and remove the ads which are not working and then you can also do the same thing with your audience as well so one quick way to optimize let's say the demographics is actually by taking a look at this chart you can actually just have a look here at the conversion and the cost per conversion and you can also match this with the conversion value. So here, what I'm looking at is basically what kind of age range are buying the most on my website and also which age range is costing me the lowest to actually get a sale on my website. And here, I can clearly understand that the sweet spot might be this one. So the age range between 35 to 44 is actually costing me two euro and 58 for every single conversion, but also the conversion value is pretty high, right? However, here it's not that bad for the age range between 24, 25 to 34, it's only costing me three to 29 per conversion. And the conversion value is also insane, 129,000 euro as well. Another thing you can do to optimize your campaign is also optimize the keywords. So if you are using a campaign with some keywords here, you can just literally have a look at the cost per conversion for every single keyword and you want to make sure that you actually exclude the keywords with the highest cost per conversion and keep the one with the lowest cost per conversion. So keyword is a bit tricky because even though if you see a keyword here, uh, you want to make sure that you understand what kind of keywords people are exactly searching for. So you need to select the keyword here and go under the search terms to actually narrow down the keyword itself and exclude or include any kind of search term your, your audience is using to get to drive your conversions. Another thing you can do is you can also optimize by locations. So you can actually do the same exercise for every single country you're targeting. And as you can see here, you can sort by cost per conversion, and then you can actually exclude the countries that are costing you way too much and then keep the countries that has a good cost per conversion. And finally, last but not least, you can also do the same thing with devices. So you can optimize the bidding for let's say mobile phones or tablets or whatever it is, depending on the cost per conversion, all those devices are driving you. So here, the way to optimize at the device level will be to actually select the device itself and just change the bid adjustment. So let's say that the mobile phones are driving me way more conversions at the lowest cost than desktops, what I want to do here is I want to maximize my bid, which means that I will allow Google to actually increase my budget, increase my bid to win the impression against another ad on this specific device. So now remember, a couple of minutes ago, we talked about the bidding strategy we wanted to use and we had TCPA and maximize conversions. Let's say that after two weeks, you have enough data. Now Google knows how much it's costing you for every single conversion. So what you can do is you can just come back to your campaign settings here under the setting tabs and you can actually optimize and change your bidding strategy from maximize conversion to target cost per action. And here you can actually put your target desired cost per action. However, if you bid too low, your ads are not going to get any impression, which means that no one's gonna be is gonna see your ad. So what I would recommend is actually just double your usual cost per action here. Let's say you have 25 as a cost per action, just put 50 and then just lower it as much as, it can, as you can, like every two hours uh, until you stop getting any impressions. So you really have to find a sweet spot to actually make sure you're getting some impressions and some conversions at the same time. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hey guys, welcome to this new section, Pinterest ad. My name is Vedant Mohan and today I am about to teach you how you can set up, test and optimize Pinterest ads. So let's get started. So here's what you're gonna cover. First thing first, how you can set up your Pinterest ad account, how you can set up your pixel. I'm going to teach you the exact strategy that you can copy and paste to test your product. Also, I'm going to teach you how you can scale your campaigns, 
how to use lookalike retargeting and also I'll teach you the best performing creative and how you can actually get some inspiration for your ad copy. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to create your Pinterest ad account. So it's a pretty straightforward process. You just need to create your account. I'm about to do it here. Here you go. So it's a pretty straightforward process. You just need to uh, put some details about, you know, your, your account and yourself. Um, so pretty easy. So once your account is created, the first thing you want to do is you want to click here on the top right corner and you want to convert your personal account into a business account. Here you go. As you can see, if you convert it to a business account, you will get access to the ads manager. And this is exactly what you need to actually set up our ads. So let's go. And the first thing you need to do is you need to switch your profile and put your details. So profile name, website, the country and the language as well. Next thing you want to do, and this is quite important, you want to make sure that you select the right category for your brand and select your goals. Um, actually here, as we are a Nikom store, we just want to sell more product, drive traffic to the website, and we also want to create content on Pinterest to grow an audience, right? Here you can select that you are an online retail or marketplace and you want to integrate your Pinterest account with your Shopify account. So you can click here, click on next. And yes, I'm interested in advertising. Here you quickly have to put your contact details and phone number, of course. And here you go. Now you want to integrate your Pinterest ad account with Shopify. So you can actually select this option, import your product from Shopify. And then you just want to click on add the application. Then here you go. You just want to connect your Pinterest account to set up the integration and you want to give access. And then once you're done, you just have to click on continue and on next until you reach a screen asking you to integrate the Pinterest pixel and then you'll be done. Now I'm about to show you how you can also integrate the Pinterest pixel in a manual way, just in case the, the normal and native integration doesn't work out. So if you want to install your pixel manually, you first have to create one. So you just go back into Pinterest ads, you click here on ads, go under the conversion tab, and here you'd have the tag manager. You just have to click on get started. Now you just have to actually insert your website link, click on check, then you have to click on manual setup, and here you go, you have the tag that you actually need to copy from here. Then on the third step, you can just leave this uh, automatic enhanced match enabled, and you can click on continue. And now you just have to follow these steps. So now let's go under the Shopify admin, and let's click on online store teams. And now we have to click here on action, edit code, Let's go in the file called team.liquid. Here you go. And as you can see here, just after the head section, we'll have to paste this code. So let's go for it. I'll actually do uh, control F to search for it. Here you go. So as you can see, you have the first head here. And if you scroll down until the end, you will see the second head section, which is just here, right? And now you can just hit enter to go to the next line. And then basically you just hit enter once again, you paste your code and you're done. Okay, so now the tag is installed on the main team. Let's save it. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually add the add to cart event, which means that whenever someone will add a product to the cart, the Pinterest pixel will be able to uh, just collect the data. So this is quite important as well. Let's go this time in the product.liquid file and we just have to copy this thing, this piece of code here and put it within the ending ending carrot of the button or input element. So as you can see here, my button code is starting just right here. And if I just scroll to the right, I will actually go for the ending bracket. I, I'm looking for the ending bracket here. And here you go. You can, of course, use the search functionality here. You see, it's just right here. I can see that it's ending because the bracket is opening. We have a slash closing the code. So I will just hit space and paste my piece of code that I needed to add, add here and we are done. Okay, so now my add to cart event is manually installed as well. And the next thing we want to do is we just want to uh, add the checkout event, which is uh, way easier. So to do the, to add the checkout event manually, you just have to go under settings and then go under checkout. So let's do it together. So let's go under settings here. Let's go under checkout, just right here. And here you go. You just have to copy this thing here, this small portion of code just want to go under your checkout settings. You want to scroll down until you have the additional scripts here. So what you need to do is you just need to paste it under your script. If you have one, if you don't have any of these, uh, you can just actually copy and paste the whole code here. And that's it. So just to check if everything is uh, smoothly installed, uh, I recommend you to add the Pinterest tag helper as a Chrome extension. So you can actually go to your store. It's actually the same thing as the Facebook pixel helper and it will allow you to actually make sure the pixel is installed in the right way. 
So just for the sake of the exercise, I actually installed this to one of my other store. And as you can see here, Pinterest Tag Helper is quite happy. As you can see, there is no issue and or warning found, which is quite good, which means that it's working perfectly fine. Now let's go to the next step. So before setting up the campaigns, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our billing details are properly um, integrated as well. So you just go here under billing and you will have to add all your business details, your VAT information if you are actually reg registered with the VAT. And you also want to, of course, uh, insert all the payment settings here. So you just uh, set up your um, your billing uh, details right here. And then you also want to create some audiences because it's quite important. So, you know, as you are getting some traffic, it will kind of like populate your, your audience straight away, even if you're not running ads yet. So let's assume you're getting some traffic coming from Google ads, Facebook ads, or TikTok ads or whatever. Um, as you have the pixel installed now, you can start collecting data, which should be quite useful to create some lookalikes. So let's go here and click on create audience. And as you can see, you can actually create some audience based on the website visitors. It will take up to 24 hours to, you know, to actually populate. So it's quite important to do it straight away. So let's do it. Let's create an audience called website visitors. Okay. And then we just want to add some filters. So we'll say, let's, let's say 30 days. So I'll call my audience website visitors 30 days, which means that everyone visiting my website during the time frame of 30 days will actually be integrated to this audience. Okay. So, um, now you can just select your tag here. So your pixel basically, and here you go, boom, create your audience. Okay. You can also create some other audience like engagement audience, which is, which are quite powerful for retargeting. So let's say anyone who actually, um, you know, engage with your profile might enter this audience. Okay. So for instance, let's say anyone who actually engage with any of your pin or your profile or whatever, um, you actually want to put those people in a specific category. You can do it here. So let's call this audience any engagement action 30 days. Okay. And just for a reminder here, I'll describe my audience anyone who have been engaged with any of my Pinterest content, right? Now you just have to, um, you know, basically you can just select a filter here if you want to. I don't do it. So I basically just create my audience and here you go. As you can see, it's initializing here. Last One last thing we can do is if you already have like a customer list coming from your store, let's say you already have some orders. Okay. What you can do is you can, you can actually go under the customer tab here. You can export a CSV with all your orders. Okay. So you can export it and import it back here. And then you can basically just retarget those people. So let's assume you have like a multi product store. Like in this case, we have multiple t-shirts on our store. If I just want to display some other product to, 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 to my customers, I can do it here. I just have to upload the file here and I'll be able to target them. Right. So just uh, to let you know, as we are in the audience setting, if you want to create some lookalike audience, it's also here um, that you'll be able to do it. I don't recommend doing some lookalikes unless you already have like 1000 plus uh, people in your audience. Otherwise your data will not be accurate enough. Okay. So we'll go back to lookalikes after, but just so you know, it's actually just right here. Okay. Now, next step, let's go to the current settings. So to actually set up your current view and your performance stats, you just have to click here. And as you can see, you can tick up to five performance stats you want to follow on your campaigns. As we're doing paid ad and as we're actually running ads for Nikom store, I strongly recommend you to actually um, tick the ROAS, the paid CTR. So you would have to untick few things here because you can only pick up to five options. So I will go with spend. I will go with order value checkouts, ROAS, paid CTR, right? So those are the five one I recommend using. So spend, order value, checkout, ROAS, paid CTR. Okay, so now let's create our campaigns. So you just have to go here under create and create ad. Um, and as you can see, it's very similar to Facebook ads. So as in Facebook, you have three levels when you set up a campaign. You have the campaign level, the ad group level, which is obviously the ad set level, and then you have the ad level. And as you can see here, you can also choose between different objectives. So awareness, consideration and conversion. Of course, here we want to optimize for conversion. Here you go. So when you click on conversion, it might ask you that you actually need to set up conversion data. If so, you just have to click here. So the main thing you want to do is you just want to actually go to your store and fire all the events so you can actually access to the conversion events in 
the ads manager. So now let's go back to the campaign creation. The first thing I want to do here is I want to go for a conversion campaign and this one will be a testing campaign. So you just need to copy and paste my structure as we tested this on multiple stores and it has been working all the time. So the naming convention is also very important to stay organized. So I recommend you to actually insert your product name here. So product name, testing campaign number one. Okay. And as you can see here, you can actually set up your budget. So I recommend you to use a daily budget. We need at least, at least 50 per day to actually make sure that the campaign will perform. So $50 or USD or GBP is fine. Now, as with Facebook, you don't want to run your campaign straight away, otherwise it might rush the budget. That's why you always want to start your campaign on the next day at midnight based on your ad account time zone. Okay, so here we go. Now we can hit on continue. So these were the campaign settings. Now we are about to go under the ad group, meaning the ad set settings. Okay, so as you can see here, we will leave it blank for now. We will leave the ad group name blank for now because we will actually change the name according to our targeting settings. Okay, and as you can see here, you can actually use retargeting audiences or you can find new customers or you can also select your own. Um, yeah, you can actually make your own targeting selection for this ad group. Okay, so we, we will actually go here with choose yours, which is a third option. And we will go, we'll start with interest and keywords, especially with interest. Okay, so as you can see, you have some interest here. It's very similar to what you can find in TikTok ads or Facebook ads as well. And here you have three level of interest. So you have the main category, in, let's say we open beauty, you have the second level, which is the subcategory. And then if you want to be very, very specific, you, you have the third option. And sometimes you also have the fourth one, but mo most of the time you have like four levels. So level one, which is the main category, okay, of interest. Then you have the subcategory level two, and then the third one. And as we don't have that, mu that much data right now, we need to actually consolidate our data and get some data on, on, on our tag and pixel. We will actually work with the main categories for now. Okay, so the first ad group, will actually be an ad group where we will target the main categories related to our product. So let's, let's say here, I'm, I actually, I'm actually promoting a fitness t-shirt. I would go for any kind of clothing, apparel and fitness related interest. So I will actually go under health here and I will just select the whole health category. Then I will also go in main fashion, boom, I will consolidate and I will actually pick a third interest that will be, which will be related to my product. And I will actually go with sport here. Okay. So here we go. We have our three, um, those two, our three interests. And here I will just go back to the ad group name and call it stacked interest one. So this is my first ad set. Okay my first ad group. Now, what you can do is you can actually narrow down the demographic, which is quite important. So if you have like a specific, um, if you have like a specific you know, product that will match, let's say women or men only, you can actually uh, untick the one that you're not willing to target. Here in this situation, I'm about to target both of them. And we, you can also pick, select the age range here. Um, here, I will leave it blank as my product is kind of like mainstream. Now let's talk about the location. The best performing countries um, really, will really depend on your product. But if you want to actually get some data really fast, I would recommend you to actually go for the US, the Canada and the Australia first. So let's go, let me select US, UK and Canada. Here we go. So we have our top three countries. And as you can see here, the audience is wide. So it's really recommended to actually make sure we stay in um, in the middle range when we, when we, when we create an audience, otherwise the data might be, um, kind of like all over the place. So here, just to narrow it down, what I will do is I will just select the English language. Uh, obviously those countries are English speaking countries, but we can still actually uh, exclude the French speaking, speaking people from Canada. And then you can choose any specific age range. And here, what I will do is I will actually remove everyone that is above, um, 55. And you just want to make sure that the expanded targeting option is unticked. So you just want to unselect this to make sure that your targeting, targeting stays accurate. So now, as you can see, it's way better and we can actually just scroll down until uh, we found the conversion event. So for the conversion event, you always want to go for what we call final payment or depending on your ad account, it might also say 
checkout. So checkout is actually uh, actually the same thing as purchase. So you don't want to optimize for add to cart or for leads or um, or website clicks or whatever. You really want to go with checkout or final payment. Okay, depending on your ad account. Okay. Now the bidding strategy will stay automated. So this is uh, pretty straightforward. And now it's time to create the ad. So what we'll do here is we'll actually create a fresh new pin. So just click on create a new pin. So if you want to get some inspiration about some ads, what you can do is you can actually just go on Pinterest and search for ad examples, or I will actually post a, a Pinterest dashboard in the cheat sheet so you can actually get a lot of inspiration here. And as you can see, there is uh, yeah multiple things, but uh, most of the time, um, static image works pretty well. So this is really what I recommend. And as you can see, the text zone is like very, very light um, or when they are actually using text, they just make sure that the text really stands out, right? So let's go and let's create our ad. So I would actually um, just go on a, on, a, on Canva to create my image here. So you ha already have the uh, Pinterest ad format, which is pre-made, pre-built here. So here I'm using a template, just drag and drop everything. Make sure it looks good and the text is actually uh, taking um, some space and here we go with my creative I'm going to download it on my computer and here you go let's create it so it looks good so you can always edit the you know the pin here if you need to um, I don't recommend uh, editing here because um, yeah you know the functionalities are quite limited so it's better to edit it in Canva let's call it add one because this is the first variation and now we actually need to create the the the, the ad copy so for the ad copy inspiration uh, i always take a look at my best performing facebook ads or you can also use a website called copy.ai to get some inspiration um, if you if you want to um, here i have my ad copy prepared so it's quite important to actually make it look kind of like you know organic so try to avoid emojis try to avoid you know a lot of promotion and the thing is um, you really want to make sure that the first two lines of your ad copy of your description here are really really um, you know attracting people because obviously this is what will be displayed so on Pinterest ad um, the ad, the number of characters that are displayed uh, with your ad are quite limited so it's very important to split test those um, because you will see a huge difference okay so for now let's keep it as it is so treat your couple with the best gift ever, meet our duo t-shirt bundle. You can take shortcut to the fit to fitness, but you can make it easier. Get yours today at a discounted price. That's it. Okay, so that's my first pin here. I'm going to publish it. And now that you're done with your first ad set, you can duplicate your ad set and go to the second one. So you can duplicate it uh, a second time. And here we are going to create a second ad set called stacked interest number two okay so here you're about to leave everything the same the only thing you want to target is basically the interest you selected so you want to go for um some other interest okay so let's find some other interest in here i will actually go for motivation which is my keyword because i want to find um people that need some motivation and are getting inspired by quotes and i would just go for quotes here for instance so this will be my first one okay and now let's select some other one which will be related to our product. So this time I'll go for woman fashion. And the third one here will be travel. So it's not related to the product, but travel matches lifestyle. So this can this one can work as well. Remember the main point here is actually to collect some data. So it's very really important to be broad enough so you can actually start getting some data in your audiences and your pixel as well to start leveraging lookalikes. And now let's go for the third one. So the third one is quite different because now this time we don't want to work with interest. We want to work with keywords. Okay, so let's call it keywords. Okay, so 10 keywords actually. So now what we are going to do is we're going to remove all the interests we targeted previously. So let's go back here and let's unselect every single interest here and let's go for keywords. So you are going to go here in keywords and you need to find some keywords. So you might ask, how can I find some keywords? Really easy. You just have to go back to the main homepage of Pinterest and you just want to go here. Uh, you want to go under your profile. You have the search tab here. You want to select all pins and you want to type some main keywords related to your niche or your product. So now here, for instance, I will type fitness. And as you can see, fitness aesthetic is the first suggestion. So I will actually take this one. Okay. And fitness code is the second one. Then we have fitness and exercise. So let's start with this one. Okay. So let's go back here. Fitness, fitness, aesthetics, 
and then the third one was fitness and let's say fitness training here okay i also want to go for a couple because you hear this is my angle okay so a couple of goals and things like that so let's go for a couple of goals for instance a couple of goals captions so those are the two i can actually use so a couple of goals couple of goals captions and you want to go you, you actually want to add up to 10 t keywords okay you want to make sure that you know you are either in the mid range or you won't, can go a bit wider for the first one okay and now let's go for fitness fashion for instance okay fitness fashion outfits okay fitness fashion outfits so fitness and then you can also actually go for active wear which is a strong one active wear outfits active wear active wear active wear outfits you can also go for gym as it's related to fitness here so gym outfit and gym aesthetics so gym outfit gym aesthetics and then let's go back to motivation like couple motivation might be a good one couple motivation quotes okay so here we go couple motivation quotes and now let's get rid of one because i have 11 of them and i will actually remove as it's quite the same i will actually go for active wear okay so as you can see you have different format for your keyword so you have what we call the, the broad match um the exact match and uh, you can also uh, exclude some exact match for instance okay so this is quite similar to google ads so my colleague george um will will certainly cover this but just to let you know for now we just want to go uh, as broad as we can okay as you can see here um i'm a bit too narrowed so what i will do is i will just um, enlarge some uh, targeting options here to make sure that I have enough people in my audience okay so here you go all ages for instance we should make it bigger and then for the countries here I want to go for I want to add some more countries okay so I can add Canada for instance here you go here you go so now let's go back here as you can see everything is the same so perfect and very important thing um, I forget to mention is basically for your first campaign, you really want to go ahead with the automatic bidding strategy, okay? You don't want to go for custom. This is something we'll cover in the scaling phase, okay? So basically, as you can see here, we have three ad sets, okay? So the first one is stack interest number one, the second one is stack interest number two, and the third one is 10 keywords. And now you can publish your campaign. Okay, so now let's go back to the ads manager. Now that you have published your first campaign, as you can see, uh, you have access to the full dashboard here. So you have the campaign tab, ad group, ads, and keywords so it's very similar to facebook ads and the good thing is now you can actually just uh, change your current settings so you just have to click here okay and you just want to actually make sure that you actually display your add to cart here um, so you can select add to cart here um, everything related to add to cart so it will consolidate uh, so you want to make sure that you display your expenses your cpc your ctr your cpm your total cpa and uh, the number of prints, which means the number of impressions and also the results. Okay, so here you go. You can actually select those and you can save your current settings. Now let's see how we can actually analyze a campaign. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that within your campaign, um, you always select your campaign and you just want to go for uh, the, you want to go take a look at the ad group level. Okay, so here you go. You just select your campaign so as you can see here i have different ad sets okay and um here now the goal would be to actually understand which one of those is bringing me the best results and as you can see here you always have to make a choice between the volume you had but also be between um the cpa you have so for instance let's say here i have a cpa of 147 which means that it, it's it's costing me only 1.47 to get one conversion but as you can see as the audience size is quite limited here i'm only getting 36 percent is. so it might not be the good the best choice however here as you can see i'm paying 649 per purchase okay so let's assume this is my stack interest number one it's costing me 649 per purchase and i'm getting 154 purchase which means that it's quite good and i can scale it like really really hard okay so now what i will do is i will basically turn everything off and keep the one that's winning on in my main campaign and now i'll teach you how you can actually create a scaling campaign okay so before we actually go under the ads manager let me explain you how we're going to scale our campaign so it's pretty simple what you want to do is you just want to actually select your best ad group and instead of using the automated bidding strategies you want to go for what we call tcpa so target cost per action so it's pretty simple as we know 
what our cost per action is okay so we know it's roughly eight euro okay uh, we just want to tell to Pinterest that we can afford eight euro as a minimum to get one conversion okay and what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our best performing ad set and change the target cost per action in each one of the ad sets so basically the structure is five ad sets so everything is the same we only change the cost per action on the first one it would be eight so my main value and then on each other ad set on every other ad set i will just increase the value by one so it would be 9 10 11 and 12 okay so let's do it together so just as a reminder my best performing ad set is this one as you can see so roughly 649 per purchase but still as we have an average of 735 my main value would be eight okay and we have a decent amount of orders so i'm about to duplicate this one so you just have to select it here you click on duplicate and here you go you just want to create a new campaign you will just uh, create one copy for now you duplicate it and let's rename the campaign we're going to call it cbo scanning five time tcpa okay so let's go here and the budget will actually be you can put whatever you want but i recommend uh, 50 as a minimum and you just want to start running it for from the next day midnight so always select the next day at midnight okay here you go now let's click on continue now it's pretty easy because the only thing that you're going to change you, you want to keep everything the same the only thing you want to change is you want to go to scroll down until you find the bidding strategy and you want to change it from automatic to custom and here is where you want to put your target cost per action so my first target cost per action will be eight so just insert a number here and now you scroll to the top and you just change your ad group name and i will call it tcpa8 right and um scaling best interest okay here you go now i'm about to duplicate this ad group right and here you go duplicate it once and now i'm about to call it tcpa9 right and you scroll down change the tcpa value to 9 once again you duplicate it boom now it will be tcpa10 right so it's pretty simple um tcpa10 boom and then once again tcpa11 so remember you need five of those okay quite important and you will see that basically some of them will not spend at all right because the tcpa will be too low so pinterest will not be able to find an audience which will give you some conversion for this amount all right okay so we can actually guess that you know eight might not spend but nine might spend right it doesn't mean that you're going to pay nine for instance for every single conversion you will get but it's just that as you can afford to take more risk it will spend more on these ad sets if that makes sense and here you go then you can actually examine everything and publish and now you might ask well, how to scale it so it's pretty simple because you're interested that if you want to scale your campaigns it's quite easy because you only have to raise the budget that's it it's very consistent it's not as facebook ads while you will have to do like multiple change it's pretty easy so basically what you want to do is you just want to duplicate your best performing tcpa ad set let's say it's this one you want to duplicate it in a new campaign okay and you want to put a higher budget let's say for instance 250 euro per day and then you want to increase the budget by 20 percent every day now again as with every platform it, it might dry out at some point that's why you should always invest 20 percent of your budget in testing so 10 percent in testing creative and 10 percent in testing interest so now how do you test creative the, the structure to test creative is pretty simple you just want to create a campaign as we did with your best performing interest okay and you want to duplicate the ad set three times and just you just want to have like one creative per ad set so basically it will look like this let me show you so you will have your campaign so testing creatives right and here you go you select the same settings so always the next day midnight right here you go and you will have the first ad group okay which would be tagged interest one right and you will have your ad number one here okay so ad number one boom duplicate right stack interest two so stack interest one sorry add two okay so you just have to change the ad everything stays the same you just have to change the ad that's it and then add number three if that makes sense okay so pretty simple and then based on the best performing interest um and actually the best performing creative okay so the creative with the highest ctr you want to make some decisions and then, then you just rinse and repeat so now let's say i found my best performing creative you have it boom you can just 
and actually take it and expose it to the same audience you used to leverage for your first scaling campaign. Now, 10% should also go in testing more interest. So how do you test interest? It's actually the, the same thing. This time, you just want to revert things. So you want to create a campaign with your best performing creatives, right? So now, not, not your best performing interest, your best performing creative. So the one with the highest CTR and you want to create three ad sets, okay? You will keep the same creative across every single ad set and you just want to change the interest if that makes sense, okay? So that's it. And once you have the best performing interest, you can actually combine this with your best performing creative and go back to the step number one and scale it. So it's pretty straightforward with Pinterest ad and that's how we are actually able to achieve some really good results with this strategy. So now I'm about to show you how you can actually set up some retargeting campaigns as well. So you just wanna go here under ads, create an ad, and here you just want to uh, create a conversion campaign. You want to call it CBO retargeting, okay? And as always, you want to make sure that uh, you start your campaign on the next day at midnight. Regarding the budget here, the good thing is that you don't need a lot of budget for retargeting campaigns. You can start with anything between 10 to 15 per day because your audience size will be quite limited at the beginning and then um, you can actually scale it. So instead of actually picking reconnect with your audience here, I recommend you to click here on choose your targeting and you can actually use some existing list here. For instance, you can use any kind of act alike list here. Okay, so those are lookalikes and I can, I can actually select them here. Um, so as you can see, all the lookalikes here, boom, I can select them, right? And include them in my targeting. And I can combine this with my client list. And also I can combine this with people who have been engaged with my pins, which is quite powerful. And also with my website visitors, which is also very powerful. So I recommend you to stack everything here to make sure that your audience size is big enough. And then what you want to do is you just want to make sure that um, in under the demographic tab, you actually select the countries that are quite important for you. So here, you just wanna make sure that you select the countries that are quite relevant to you because sometimes you can get a lot of traffic bots coming from Pinterest and you want to avoid this, okay? And then basically here, um, as you already have some data, you can go ahead with TCPA once again. So you can just set up like a, a high TCPA, the highest value. Uh, however, if you don't have at least 50 purchases coming from Pinterest, you can just stay in automatic bidding for now, okay? And then that's it, you just wanna publish your campaign and you're done. So this was the Pinterest strategy that we use to leverage some good results for our e-com stores and print and demand stores. So if you have any question, just let us know in comment. I hope that you enjoyed this, this section and I hope to see you soon. Hey guys, it's Sidon Oscar and in this section, we're pretty much going to cover what TikTok Organic is, why you guys should do it and how to do it. All right, so to explain a little bit further what TikTok Organic is, for those of you guys that don't really know what it is or have heard little about it, pretty much what it is is you're drop shipping but without spending any money on ads. You're just creating content or organic content on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube Shorts, and you can make tons of money without spending any money on ads. It's literally the best way to start, and it's the lowest barrier to entry because all you're really spending money on is the initial product and you can even return it to Amazon. So you can literally do this with zero money. You don't gotta spend any money on ads. You don't gotta have like headaches, like your ads not spending or not performing properly. And guys, to put it into simple terms, all you have to do is literally post content on TikTok and Instagram. You post content for free, essentially upload three times a day until one of them goes viral. All right, so now another major reason why you guys should all be doing TikTok Organic is because of the free massive exposure that comes with it. Now, if you guys decide to dropship with this method, you will be able to drive traffic to your website and business through TikTok's insane organic reach. Now, I don't think you guys understand just how powerful TikTok's algorithm is. To give you an example of like how much money you can save, to get a million views through ads, if your video is good, you can still expect to pay around $2,000 per million views through TikTok ads, but you can literally do this all for free. The thing about TikTok is you're building brand recognition. We've literally built brands through TikTok that millions of people have seen in our area as well. If you mention some of our brands to people we see in public, they know what it is. The insane organic reach TikTok has is it's literally insane and this isn't going to be here forever so you want to make sure you're able to take advantage of this while it's here now guys most big brands spend hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising every single year now the crazy thing is you guys can literally master it for free we have gotten so much more views than even big brands on tiktok brands that you guys have heard of such as coca-cola 
such as Scrub Daddy, th these other companies, we've gotten more views than them. We've gotten more exposure than them. There's people out there on TikTok that know of our brand more than these other big brands. Keep in mind, guys, these companies spend like literally millions of dollars. They spend tons of money on influencers and you can literally do this all by yourself. You don't even got to show your face in these videos. We prefer never to show our faces. We do in some. And I'm glad Oscar mentioned that you guys have to show your faces because I know a lot of you guys are worried about showing your faces. But nope, you don't gotta show your faces. We hardly ever show our faces. I never used to post anything on social media. I never used social media before this. TikTok was literally the first content I ever put out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna cover are the mistakes to avoid, guys. These are very crucial. You gotta make sure you avoid these at all costs. If someone were to tell me and say the mistakes that we're about to tell you, it would have made us so much more money a lot sooner. It would have saved us a whole bunch of headaches. Like, I can't stress this enough. I want you guys to take notes on this. They're very important. So the very first mistake that me and Oscar see everyone make and a mistake that we've made too is not posting consistently. It is very important for you guys to post three times a day, every single day for the next two weeks, minimum three times a day, guys. Super important. You need to maximize your uploads because this definitely will increase the chances of you going viral. And this doesn't stop at just three times a day. You can take this to five if you want to increase your odds. And um, you got to remember the whole thing about TikTok organic is you want to increase your odds of going viral. So if you give TikTok more videos, it has more selection um, and the TikTok algorithm is very good. As soon as one video picks up, your other videos have a higher chance of picking up as well. So the more content you have out by the time you go viral, it makes it everything a lot more better. It creates a snowball effect. Not creating a content calendar is a mistake as well. It helps. You want to plan out your videos and um, also reusing the same clips multiple times. It's not a good idea. TikTok is getting way better at recognizing videos. The algorithm is absolutely insane. Now, we understand how difficult it is uploading three times a day. It really is. We struggle with that. And that is why we created a content calendar. We usually do that. We also set reminders on our phone. So if we have a day that we know we got to upload three times a day, I'm going to set a reminder on my phone that's going to automatically go off at a certain time that I want to upload. So I want you guys to do that. I encourage you guys to do that. And it does help out if you guys have somebody else, like maybe a friend. You and your friend can keep each other accountable so that you guys can upload three times a day if you guys can just push through it for the first two weeks guys i promise that's all it takes is one to two weeks one video to really go viral and you're not gonna get that one video if you're only uploading once like i said before guys the trade-off with tiktok organic is you do gotta put in more time so you can't be lazy so another big mistake that a lot of people make is bad video quality and terrible audio. You guys cannot expect to go viral off of videos that are just bad. Yeah, you can't just upload anything and expect it to go viral. So I'm always on TikTok searching for new products, recent ones, and I've seen some terrible videos looking like they have Minecraft graphics. Um, so like stuff like that ain't gonna cut it. People wonder sometimes why I'm not going viral. This is a big issue as well bad audio, bad video quality, and you also gotta match your sound. Yeah, the sounds you use have to complement your video. You can't just use any random sound on a product that is completely irrelevant to what the sound is or the product. So when you're making videos, when you're uploading videos, try using sounds that do complement your videos. And also on the video itself, you have to build credibility. That's the whole purpose of it, right? It's not just about going viral. It's about creating videos that are high converting enough to convert after you've gone viral. That is why creating a video that's satisfying, that has good quality, good audio quality, it looks good, it's going to convert a lot better than a video that is not as good. So a good little tip for you guys is that um, if you have a video that's a little bit faster paced, pick an audio that's a little bit faster paced as well. Um, if you can match up your frames to the beats, that's a plus. ASMR is very good as well. If you can include those as well, it's, it's a great thing. It's a big thing on TikTok actually. The hashtag is massive. You just wanna make sure your video's quality is on point, your audio is on point. Little things like a tripod so it's not shaky comes a long way. Another huge mistake I see a lot of people make is they steal other people's videos. We're guilty of this ourselves when we first started and we would get shadow banned. We wouldn't know why. But TikTok, like I mentioned before, they are getting better at recognizing videos. So they'll know when you steal something. They'll shadow ban you. They'll reduce your views. It's bad all overall. People recognize it as well. They'll mm -hmm. they'll tell you in the comments. Like we, we would get comments like that too when we did it saying, oh, this is not your videos. You took them. So just don't do this. Don't be lazy and create your own content. You want to be authentic and original. TikTok, that's what they like. They want original content. They don't want anything that's like reposted. You can't get away with it for a short period of time it's not something you want to create a bad habit of and to summarize guys 
create your videos from scratch every single time. Don't steal other people's videos. You're gonna get shadow banned and you're going to be forced to create a new account. So remember, be authentic, be original. The only way you're actually gonna get good at this to make it long term is if you practice actually creating the videos. If you just steal other people's videos, you're not gonna get better because you're not actually doing the editing. Now, another big mistake that you guys want to avoid is engaging with yourself. You do not want to like your own stuff. You do not want to comment on your own videos. And essentially the most important thing you want to remember, you got to let TikTok's algorithm do its thing. We would have another account on the same phone. We'd go like spam the share button, the copy link, mm -hmm. um, like comment. TikTok knows what you're doing, guys. Like they, they have a very good system in place. All that's going to do is shadow ban you. You just don't want to engage with yourself overall. Like even if it's someone else's phone in like, your same house under the same IP address, like they, they know what accounts are under your IP, how many different um, accounts you have on your phone. So you're not going to get away with it. Anytime you may think you're going to trick the system, I promise you, you're not. So don't even try it. Don't even do it. You liking your own videos, you engaging with your own videos will not make you go viral. All right, so I'm going to be covering how to find organic winning products and how to find products that aren't too saturated, products that can generate you money still, products that many people aren't doing already. All right, guys, so before you start looking for a winning product, you first gotta ask yourself, what makes a winning product? Now, a good product that has all of our elements is very important for organic traffic. Not any products can go viral and we're gonna be teaching you guys exactly how to find products that can go viral with organic traffic. Now, I also wanna mention some products that do good for organic don't mean they'll do good for ads, vice versa. Some products that do good for ads maybe might not do good for organic. Some of the criteria of finding a winning product include the product has to solve an issue. So from my experience, products that solve an issue have always converted a lot higher than products that do not solve an issue. Let's say you are selling a product that solves an issue in comparison to someone else selling a product that is just for fun. The product that solves an issue will convert a lot better and a lot higher than a product that is just for fun, or in other words, a product that is just uh, a quick money grab. Now, besides your product solving an issue, it is very important that your product cannot be found just anywhere. If people are able to go to Walmart or the local convenience store and find the product that you're promoting or the product that you're selling on TikTok, it may not convert as well because why would they purchase off of you if they can just simply walk up to the nearest location and purchase it off of them? Now, that doesn't mean you should be worried about Amazon because most of the time, people that see your product or see your video on TikTok, they're going to purchase off of Impulse. So Amazon is never in their mind and that is not even a top competitor for you. Now, the product that you're selling also has to have a unique wow factor. The reason why it's important for it to have a unique wow factor is because a wow factor makes it a lot easier for you to grab their attention and for you to go viral. If somebody sees a product that is unique that they have not seen yet, odds are they're going to stick around and want to watch the entire video. Now, um, now the whole premises of going viral is how long you can keep somebody entertained or how long you can keep somebody watching your entire video. So if you have a higher watch time, odds are you're going to go more viral than someone with a less of a watch time. That is why having a unique wow factor is very important. And the product that you're also searching for, you wanna make sure it does not have too much views or there are not too many big accounts on TikTok already selling their product. Now, sometimes you can get away with it, even if there are a bunch of people selling the same product, because TikTok is massive. There are over a billion active users on TikTok. So don't let this one get to your head. It's just there for you to take consideration. All right, so now some of the best tools that we like to use to find winning products include simply searching up TikTok Made Me Buy It. I've mentioned this a few times, but I promise you guys, if you guys stick around on TikTok Made Me Buy It, spend a few hours on TikTok Made Me Buy It, you, you will find a product that is suitable. You will find a product that meets all the criteria that I just mentioned. So it's very important. Whenever you're searching for products, you're just going to have to spend a few hours on TikTok. You have to, there's no other way around it. Now, another search tool besides TikTok I'm even buy it is the hashtag Amazon finds. Amazon finds is a great way to find other products that are trending. Now, another great method to finding winning products is by simply bringing old winning products that did very good on Facebook and bring them onto TikTok. As a matter of fact, guys, one of our most profitable products that we've ever tested was a product that was successful on Facebook a few years back. All we did was simply bring it back to TikTok and it did amazing, it crushed on TikTok. So if you can find a product or if you know a few products that did very good on Facebook a few years back, why not try bringing them onto TikTok? I promise you guys, if you can find good products on Facebook and if they converted on Facebook, if they converted on Facebook, odds are they're going to convert on TikTok. Now, the other method that a lot of people don't do as much is cold searching. What I mean by cold searching guys is I want you guys to spend a few hours on AliExpress. You'll be surprised of how many products are still on tap. Now, if you guys are struggling finding products from TikTok, maybe buy it or Amazon finds, or you simply cannot find an old winning product from Facebook, this is your best bet. Cold searching is your best bet. I have brought many products from 
AliExpress onto TikTok and I was the first one. And sometimes being the first one to go viral off of a product or being the first one to bring a product over, that will reward you in so many ways. Your conversion is going to be a lot higher, your credibility is going to be a lot higher, and there's no competition. That is why I really recommend you guys to always cold search. This should always be top priority after TikTok made me buy it. Now, um, this is what I mean. I'm gonna show you guys a little example of me cold searching. All right, so once you're on AliExpress, all you guys have to do really is just scroll around. Now search for products that fit the criteria that I just mentioned. Does it have a wow factor and does it solve an issue? Those are the biggest ones you guys always want to take for consideration. Now, if you guys pay attention to some of these products, I promise you guys have already seen them on TikTok. I've seen this one and I've seen the door handle and I've also seen the no glass. This product over here went viral a few months back. What does this product really have to offer? So it doesn't solve much of an issue, but I can see why people like it. It does have some type of wow factor and the videos that they were making based off of this product was insanely satisfying. That is why this product did very good. Now what I'd be doing is I would then take this product and I would make an account on TikTok and I would begin promoting it. Let's say if nobody had done it before, I would begin promoting this product and I would bring it onto TikTok. Now that you guys know the different tools and methods that we use to find winning products, I wanna go over some analytics and metrics that you guys always wanna look out for when searching for products on TikTok. So you wanna look for the date that they uploaded their last video. For example, when was their last upload? For example, when was their most recent upload? Was it uploaded in under a week? Was it uploaded a day ago, two days ago? If you can find any video that's uploaded under a week, you're golden. Preferably within 48 hours. If you can find a product or an account on TikTok that's promoting a product and that they uploaded a few hours ago or 24 hours, that is a very good sign that the product is still generating sales. Now you also want to look at their viewers. How many views are they currently getting? Have you noticed a big fall off of views? Are they still gaining lots of views? Is their account growing? How's their engagement? Are they getting comments? Are they getting people asking how to buy the product? Where can I find the product? These are all things that you guys want to look out for. I'm going to show you guys an example of a product that recently came up. All right, so this product over here got 2.8 million views not too long ago, around five days ago to be exact. And what you're going to want to do first is look below and try finding comments of people asking where can they find the product. Um, Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. So how does it work? Need this. There you go. Need this. If you can find comments of people asking, I need this. Where can I find this? I want to buy this. That is what you guys want to look out for. Now, another thing is when was our most recent upload? They uploaded two days ago, which isn't too bad. It's still under 48 hours. Hours. so this product isn't too bad that's pretty much what you guys would be doing when you guys search for products all right guys in this section I'm gonna cover how to build a Shopify website for TikTok organic what's important when working on a Shopify store specifically designed for TikTok traffic and how you guys can design a high converting store for TikTok traffic now whenever you guys are building a store for organic traffic there are a few things you guys want to take for consideration you want to make sure to have product lifestyle images you want to make sure to look branded you want to be very credible you want to have very visible shop now buttons so that the customer can purchase very easily remember guys TikTok organic traffic usually have low attention span. So you wanna make sure that you make the shopping process very simple. Whenever you guys are done building a Shopify store and you guys make a TikTok account, you wanna look out for the sketchy link icon that appears. Now, if you guys get the sketchy link icon, which I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in a little bit, you guys want to make sure that does not appear because that absolutely kills your website's conversion. Nobody wants to enter a store that is unsecured. And I promise guys, if this issue pops up for you guys, consider yourself losing lots of sales. Now, a quick way to fix it is by going to Shopify and reducing your URL handle. This is what it looks like. All you gotta do is go to product pages, scroll all the way down, URL and handle. And all you do is simply remove all the unnecessary words. A lot of the times, a lot of the unnecessary words are going to have AliExpress or whatever supplier you uh, linked it to. So you wanna make it very simplified, just three words, one word, two words. Um, the less, the better. Whenever you guys are building your Shopify website, you wanna make sure to keep the theme colors very simple. You do not wanna use too much colors that do not fit your niche or product. You do not wanna mix up the colors too much. Much. For example, if you're using white, blue, and black, you don't want to start throwing red and green in there. You want to keep it very minimal and modern. And I've noticed that three theme colors work the best. So white, gray, and black usually work very good. Or white, black, and light blue work very well for me as well. You want to make sure to avoid Powered by Shopify because it increases the credibility of your website and your brand. Now, um, avoid Powered by Shopify. This is kind of what it looks like. If you go to your footer after making the website, you're going to have this little section, Powered by Shopify. Now, what it should look like is this. Now, your product page and your landing page is your number one priority. Most people, most customers are going to be landing on your product page. So you need to have a very high converting, very nice, credible looking product page. That's all that really matters, guys. So make sure you guys are focusing on creating a great, credible looking product page. Now you need to have a great landing page that is simple, professional, and easy to complete a purchase. I cannot stress this enough. You wanna make the purchasing process very simple. You wanna use shop not buttons in every segment that you can. And when building your store, you guys do not need a paid theme. I'll be the first one to tell you guys. 
You don't need a paid theme. Don't spend unnecessary money on a paid theme, guys. I want to save you guys money, and that is what TikTok Organic is all about, right? So, don't use a paid theme. Use a free theme. Once you guys get sales, that is when you guys can then focus on buying a theme if you guys want. Or you guys can even hire someone on Fiverr to make you guys the best professional looking website that you can ever dream of. A very good theme that I like to use is Refresh. It's free from Shopify, so I recommend you guys take a look at it. Also, you guys can experiment with PageFly or Gem Pages. All right, guys, so this is what I mean when I say I don't want you guys to have a sketchy link. When you click on it, it shouldn't show this. This should not pop up on your TikTok account. And this is what I mean by a long URL. This guy doesn't know. That's fine. You don't want to have a long URL because that will flag your account. Now, I'm going to open the account anyways just to see what his store looks like. All right, so from what I've noticed, he does have Powered by Shopify. That's one mistake. I don't know why the ad to cars all the way in the bottom, and he doesn't have the remaining pages that he needs, such as privacy policy and terms of service and about us. You, do, you guys do want to add that. I like how this account tried using scarcity, but I personally don't think this works well on TikTok. Believe me, guys, customers will know that you're bullshitting them, and that's the last thing you guys want because consider credibility out the window. Pretty much, guys, I would just change the font and keep it very simplified. His colors aren't too bad. I would remove the add to cart. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. So the first thing I want to cover or talk about in a TikTok account setup is using a VPN. And in reality, guys, if you're in a first world country, you don't need a VPN. So if you're in a country like Canada, the UK, Australia, you don't really need a VPN. They're actually some of the best reforming markets we've been in. And the thing about going viral on TikTok, you don't just stay in one country. You get shot out all over the world. On some of our bigger accounts, only about 30% of our followings in the US, the rest is overseas. Um, so the only time I would even consider using a VPN or recommend it maybe is if you're in a third world country and you're trying to start off in the US market, but even then you don't even stay in the US market once you go viral, you get shot out all over the place. So a very popular VPN, if you do decide to use one, is Nord. Um, a lot of people have had success with that, using that and a US SIM card that you can buy off eBay or wherever you choose to buy one from. The first thing you wanna do when you make your uh, TikTok account, you wanna sign up with Gmail, preferably the same one you made your Shopify store with. You don't wanna use a personal email, you don't wanna mix them up, and you don't really wanna use your phone number because you can only use it one time. Like once you use it, that's it. And when you pick your username, when you're selecting a username, you don't wanna use any symbols or numbers. You wanna keep it professional. Um, you want it to match your brand and your website name. If you can't get your exact name, um, just use your domain names. You can add .com to your username. That's fine. That's like the only time I I'd, I would be okay with like using a dot or something or any kind of symbol if it's yours if it's your domain. Um, and you also want to keep it as a personal profile. Uh, you don't want to use a business account because we have a little theory going on that business accounts limit your views because businesses are more likely to spend money on promoting their videos. And you're also limited um, on like audios and certain features on a business account. And there's no benefit of having a business account anymore. Back then, you used to be able to place uh, a link if you had a business account under a thousand followers. But now, for both of them, you still need a thousand followers. So there is no real benefit. TikTok will push you out more as a personal account. So um, you want to make sure you don't have a business account and you go for a personal account. I, a lot of people ask us this. And just to clarify, personal account, 100% all the time. Setting a profile picture, you want to select a high quality image. This can either be your brand logo, it can be your um, product, the product you're trying to make videos on, and you can even add a video, but it's optional. You don't have to. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And when you select your account name, you want this is different from your username, as you can see from this picture. This is your username, and your account name is above. You can change your username every month. Your name, they change it to where you can only change it once every seven days now, I believe. And this can be anything you want. It can be just your aqua balls, like this one right here, just aqua balls, nothing crazy. And their username is their domain, um, but they didn't have the website here. But the shorter, the better. You want to keep it simple. You can even add the trademark symbol if you want to seem a little bit more branded. Uh, we've done that a few times as well. And when you make your bio, and don't be afraid to use emojis. Like these use emojis perfectly. Like this emoji lines up with their, like their logo right here, like the water drops and like the water drops on the edges. Um, this is very common. We see a lot of people do this, but then there's a lot of people that don't use it. And sometimes it just looks a little bit weird. Um, but this is a perfect example of something that's pretty good. But I would at least have two lines. Three is good as well, preferably three if you can, but two is fine. Then you can just have your link. But overall, this is a great bio. Um, you can replicate something like this as well. All right, so before you even start posting videos on TikTok, you wanna have videos in your drafts. 
This shows TikTok that you're gonna be a valuable creator that's gonna be putting out content. And you wanna have at least enough videos for three to five days, preferably a week. So if you're posting for seven days, that means you need at least to have 21 videos. But three to five days works pretty well as well. But before you post your first video, you wanna make sure you've had the account for at least 24 hours. It's a good rule of thumb because if you post right away, right after you make your account, within like the first, like say 20 minutes, TikTok might not push you out. You might shout about your account. Um, we don't know exactly why yet. We might think because of TikTok may see it as spam, but generally accounts that have um, that you wait a 24 hour period before you post your first video after making the account or creating the account, they seem to do better. So um, within those that day, the 24 hour period, you can just draft up your videos, edit them. So you have plenty of time to do all that. In order for you guys to get a link on your guys' TikTok account, you need to reach a thousand followers. This is why we say the business account isn't worth it anymore um, because for both of them, you need to reach a thousand followers before you're able to place your website on your account. And um, once you reach a thousand followers, you're also unlocked your creator next you still got to join it but you need to at least have a thousand followers have at least a thousand views on a video in the last 30 days and post at least three videos in the last 30 days so this is the requirements and you also got to meet the age requirement which I believe is 18 pretty much what this does it unlocks more analytics so you're able to see where your views came from what countries um, and you get more insights on your videos it's a great little feature. One last thing, when you get to 10,000 followers, a lot of people are tempted to sign up for the creator fund. We prefer not to do it. Sometimes we might do it, but the creator fund only pays between 20 to $40 per million views, and you risk being suppressed. Dropshipping accounts can make you between 1,000 to 3,000, sometimes even more, um, just depending on how good your product is. So it's not worth losing this amount of money over 20 to $40. So we don't recommend you guys sign up for the creator fund. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to create a TikTok video, basic rules and how you can structure it. All right, so some basic rules is you need to start off your video with a hook or something that catches people's attention in the first few seconds. It's pretty simple, but you'd be surprised. Um, the thing is on TikTok, the attention span is very short. So you need to grab the viewer's attention as fast as possible, whether it be with the wording or the actual footage itself, preferably both. And you also wanna remove moments in your videos where nothing is happening or dull moments. Um, this is probably the biggest tip I have for you guys if you guys starting off. A lot of you guys, when you guys first start off, you guys have like 15 second videos that in reality can be 12 second videos. And like removing these dull moments where nothing is happening will improve your watch time, which will allow TikTok to push you out further because when nothing is happening, even if it's somewhere in the middle or towards the end, it's not just in the beginning, like they'll skip halfway through a video if they start to get bored. And it's very fast too, it doesn't take very much. So your videos should be like fast paced, um, very engaging, and if you wanna use like longer clips in your videos, you gotta ease them into it. So you gotta start off with like maybe a little bit snappier in intro and like the at more towards the end, you can probably squeeze in like the longer clips, like say 10 second clips, five second clips. For your video length, it should be no less than six seconds. I've seen some people get away with five, but majority of the times that won't work. Um, but for beginners, I would stick generally around seven to 12 seconds is a good spot, but TikTok has been pushing out longer videos, but I wouldn't start off there until you have some kind of experience on how to keep your viewer engaged. Basic video structure, I use this a lot. You start off with your first clip, you hook the viewer in with text. The footage can be you showing a feature of your product. You wanna create some kind of curiosity and this can be either one to three seconds long. And the second clip, you're showing off the product a little bit more. You're explaining a little bit more what the product is. And this is another two to three seconds. An example of this is you're holding your hand, you're turning it around, you know, showing them a little bit more, maybe a different angle than the first one. Um, and for the third one, you wanna demonstrate the product and how it works or what it does. And this is also two to three Three seconds long and for the fourth clip you're demonstrating the product in a different way this one can be a little bit longer since it's your last clip two to four seconds and you can even repeat it as well if you're going for a longer video another thing i want to talk about guys is taking advantage of your product and using all the features you can so if you have a product that you can create asmr videos with definitely that's something you want to take advantage of asmr is huge on tiktok also you can recreate sounds to sound better than the original um, this is a huge plus or you can even amplify certain sounds 
in your videos so it sounds more satisfying. Also, creating any cool transitions, say your product has lights um, and changes colors, you can create some pretty cool transitions with that. If you have a product that you can like connect to a trend, that's something that you really want to do. Even if you think the trend might not do so good, trends are the probably the easiest way to gain traction on TikTok. All right, so for some editing apps that I've used, I've only really used Splice and CapCut. They're both very good. I know CapCut has some very good features and they're very well integrated with TikTok. All right, guys, so this video is one that I thought was very good. It's a little bit on the shorter side. It's only five seconds long but it's to the point and it's pretty easy to understand and the hook they use is if every basketball and volleyball player saw our traction wipes and they paired it with the perfect trending audio that it says it would be so awesome it would be so cool so it's it makes perfect sense it would be so awesome be so, cool. so pretty much it explained who the target was and it catches these people's attention. So if someone was a volleyball player or a basketball player, um, they would watch this. It grabbed their attention pretty easily. All right. So this is another video that I thought was very well executed. It's 22 seconds long. It's a little bit on the longer side, but like I said, TikTok seems to be pushing out some of these longer videos. It's a very good product. They did a lot of ASMR with it. It's a great example of how you guys can do it when you guys are unboxing a product. They took advantage of pretty much every feature, the spinning, the lights, the sound it made when it beeped. So I think these earbuds are pretty cool. All right, guys, that's it for the section on TikTok Organic. I hope you found it useful and you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to message us on Instagram and the Discord. Wish you guys the best. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Hey, guys, welcome to the next part of the free course. This section, we are going to talk about automating your business and hiring virtual assistants. To get started, I'll tell you a backstory of mine with virtual assistants. I was having an internship at a consultant company and they asked me to do some boring tasks all day. That time, I was living in Medellin in Colombia and wanted to discover the city and the country rather than spending my time writing articles about topics that I didn't really care about. At the same time, after work, I was reading the book The 4-Hour Workweek from Timothy Ferris. If you haven't that, read that book so far, you should definitely do it. The main idea of the book is that time is the most valuable asset that we have and we should try to outsource all tasks that we don't want to do ourselves to other people and enjoy our newly created free time. This leads us already to the first don'ts while hiring virtual assistants. After reading the book, I thought I could hire people for each and every task, pay them and expect them to do the work. This is how I hired my first virtual assistant on Upwork, promising me that with a thousand dollars, he will build me an Amazon FBA business and make sure that I get two thousand dollars in profit per month, where he has a monthly profit share of 10%. The offer sounded perfect to me, and I chose to hire him immediately. After paying the thousand dollars, I expected that everything goes well and that I'll be making a thousand eight hundred profit every month now. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case and the VA started to come up with some problems he had, setting up my Amazon account and other things I didn't understand. After two months, he stopped replying to me and this is how I lost a thousand dollars. The lesson here is to take care who you are hiring and don't fall for amazing offers you get out there. There are surely some competent virtual assistants out there, but you need to find them first and make sure that they show you past results. So the main thing that is going to be covered during this section is going to be how to find, hire and train virtual assistants. And those topics are going to be structured as follows. We're going to start about discussing when to hire a virtual assistant, then what a virtual assistant can do for you, where to hire a virtual assistant, the costs of hiring a virtual assistant, how to create a listing on Upwork, choosing the right candidate for the job, where to be careful while hiring virtual assistants, then how to train your virtual assistant, then I'm going to talk about Mona's R marketing, your developments, and at the end, how to get organized, like which tools you should use to get organized with your work. So the question is going to be like, when should you hire a virtual assistant? And there are five things 
that I recommend considering before hire, hiring a virtual assistant. The first thing is going to be like, you should have consistent sales. Like you should have at least five to 10 orders per day, providing you an income, providing you also the job of fulfilling orders that is going to consume your time. While hiring a virtual assistant could be a job that you can outsource uh, to help you free, free up some time. An important thing is going to be profitability. Like you should, your profit margin should be big enough to generate you an extra income so you can afford hiring a virtual assistant. And the third thing is going to be like, you should be ready to scale your business. You don't want to spend your time like fulfilling orders and answering to customer emails and answering DMs and comments on your Facebook ads. You want to focus on the most important tasks for your business to grow. And this is when uh, hiring a virtual assistant is going to be a good time. If I feel like my business is uh, missing some skills, like negotiating with suppliers, or I want to have a better customer support, I want to have better graphics for my store so my customers have a better experience, then I feel like I want to hire a virtual assistant for the knowledge missing in, in my business. If you feel like your work-life balance is getting out of hand, like you feel like you're spending much more time working, you're spending much more time in front of your screen uh, than with your friends and family, then you should really uh, consider hiring a virtual assistant so you can really free up some time. In this section, we're going to discuss what a virtual assistant can do for you. The first thing uh, I always uh, make sure that uh, I outsource during my in, in my business is going to be order fulfillment. They fulfill orders every day and that they add the tra tracking numbers to each order and that they get sent to the customer so we have less complaints and uh, the customer knows exactly where his package is. Uh, but this is just a time-consuming task that I don't want to do myself every day, especially if I'm having 20 to 30 orders per day. Um, I rather outsource that task. Then another uh, important part is going to be customer support. Your business, as soon as you're starting getting sales and everything, you'll, you'll receive a lot of emails, like customers asking where the product is, that they have some questions and stuff like that. I have a perfect template that I give to, the, to every VA so they know exactly how to answer. If they have specific questions, the customers, they can always come back to me and ask me what they should reply. 90% of all the questions are the same. Then another uh, task that a virtual assistant can take care of is surely like uh, a virtual assistant uh, can create a store for you. He can do the whole product research. He can also manage PayPal and Stripe cases if you give them the access to and run ads for you. So in my case, for example, I can just come up with a product idea I give it to my virtual assistants team and they build the store, the Facebook pages, everything ready. So I just have to focus on uh, yeah, the creatives and make sure that I run Facebook ads. The next topic is going to be like where to hire a virtual assistant. There are many platforms out there. I'm just going to share with you the ones that I used myself where I had good experiences with. So the first one is going to be Upwork. This is like one of the main platforms to hire virtual assistants. I'll be showing you um, the platform later on. Uh, how to create a listing and everything. And the second one is going to be Fiverr. There it's really easy like to find people. You can also see their past work there and also see their reviews. The cost of hiring a virtual assistant, like they depend on how much you demand, like how much time you demand from them. But if you want them to work full time for you, do the whole stuff, you can expect average costs between $300 and $500 per month for order fulfillment and customer support and some extra tasks. Just something like really to be careful with is if you find very cheap virtual assistants, you should really do a bit more research on the quality of their work because I experienced that too. Like I hired virtual assistants for literally like $100 per month but the quality of work wasn't uh, that good. And it can literally like ruin your business if you tell them like to change something on your store or a product description. If the virtual assistant is not good enough, he can literally like just throw, a, throw away all the work that you, that you did before. To create a listing on Upwork, it's pretty easy. You just go to upwork.com, then you can click get started. Then you can hire for a project or work as a freelancer. We want to hire then just accept the terms and conditions. As soon as you arrive here, you can write a headline for your job post. So here we're going to use um, virtual assistant for Shopify. Then here, what are the skills that we are looking for? Like here you can click virtual assistant, you can click Shopify, email communication here, 
customer service thing is nice if they can, if they have it we type in order fulfillment because those are the main two things that i want to outsource in the beginning like my customer support and order fulfillment Depends like how much uh, time you want to invest here i always choose like medium and here for how long will your work take we start with like one to three months just to see how the quality of our virtual assistant is and uh, i'm looking for either intermediate or expert entry is going to be difficult in the beginning for us if we want like an experienced guy and that's why we can choose intermediate in my case i don't like to pay people pay by hour because i can't really track how much time they have invested into the task why i always use project budget 300 as soon as you arrive to this page you will see like headline virtual assistant for shopify you can add shopify drop shipping then here for the job description you can type in like i want to hire a virtual assistant to outsource tasks fulfillment and customer support then you can also add like experience with shopify is preferred and experience with customer support is preferred and if you have some files that you can attach you can surely upload it then here we see again like we want virtual administrative assistance that's right those are the skills that we require um, then we want to hire them for one to three months intermediate level and the budget is 300 dollars here that's also very important you can add screening questions example like write your own question then you can just ask them like what's two plus uh two plus two uh, why to do that because um there are some people who are like for freelancers who have um, automated system that like sends them emails as soon as posted for virtual assistant then they immediately apply to it we want to filter out people who exactly read our question so this helps us with the screening in the beginning like if we see that somebody answered this question for he read the job description and if you have some advanced preferences you can uh, definitely add that but in the beginning i just click post your job now then here it gives you automatically like uh, a list of people they suggest that you can work with you can invite them to the job then you can already see like they have uh, the number of completed tasks on upwork after one or two days you will get some uh, applications and then you can screen all the, the all the applicants and we will discuss later on how to choose the right one and here you can just add your credit card um yeah your credit card details or your paypal account but we can skip that for now then here you can add some information about your company we can choose for example that we are if we have a health and fitness store for example or fashion and beauty you can just select that it's just me and then click continue here you can just come up on jobs click my jobs and then you will see like um, after one or two days how many people you're hired and the proposals will appear here and you can screen through all the people that you want so the next topic is going to be like as soon as you get those applications to your task how to choose the right candidate just apply to the task or have they really read uh, our uh, job post and uh, also saw the screening question and did they reply to it so people who didn't reply to that question i would generally not consider because i just feel like they just apply to the task without seeing what it actually is then the second thing that i consider is like checking their experience and their availability like i want to see what they did in the past did they have experience with shopify or customer support you can tell me about past experiences they have and then i also want to know how much time they can invest like uh, are they students are they having another job they really invest the time to work with me full time if i want that if they want uh, want to work full time but generally like do they have enough time to invest another thing i have a look at is like how good is their english because my customer support is mostly going to be in english so um it's not the spoken english that i have a look at but uh, how is their typing how is their writing how is their grammar just to make sure that my customers then later on have also a great experience with my customer support uh, representative and then if there are some previous reviews i also check them and also ask them for a portfolio for example if they did previous work with uh, with other people and check how what what they did before and the third thing that i have a look at is like the soft skills a little bit how's the communication like do they reply fast to me or do i have to wait like three to four hours till they reply again nice to have a conversation with them or not and then with time like i i just ask myself likable and uh, then i also check like their general intelligence uh because like i'm i'm searching for a team member i'm searching for somebody who works with me uh for the long time long term and uh yeah 
that's why soft skills are also important next thing we have a look at is like how to train your virtual assistant thing in the beginning like well, as soon as you hire a virtual assistant uh, you have to be there like you just you can't just expect to do my customer uh, support and then uh, just leave them they have questions in the beginning they want to see like what what the, are the do's and don'ts in your business and that's why i, I would really suggest that in the beginning you are there um, you help them, uh, yeah, setting up everything and uh, you show them exactly what you want and uh, what you don't want and how everything should be done. And also like in the first weeks, you should have low expectations because they are just starting, but with time. The second thing is for, for you, you should be like approachable and open for questions. Like I mostly give them my WhatsApp number. Every time they have a question, they can just text me and make sure that uh, that I answer their questions fast so they know exactly what um, needs to be done and what not and like discuss all the do's and don'ts what they should do and what they shouldn't do third thing I really suggest is going to be like to control the work so for example if a virtual assistant is doing your customer support go and read the email send um, check if everything is is done properly and also give feedback if there is something that um, that uh, you think could be done better and also discuss uh, reporting like they should if they should like send you a daily report with all the emails sent and the queries that they had or if you want them to have to have it weekly or monthly like just make sure that you control the work because if you don't control the work um, maybe some things are doing uh, are done in the wrong way and uh, could harm your business uh, in the long run uh, discuss like where to be careful with your virtual assistant especially Especially in the beginning and here uh, I really suggest um, for example if uh, a virtual assistant is doing the order fulfillment for you is to use debit cards in the beginning up the amount that is needed and uh, yeah so the virtual assistant can spend the money because we don't know what could happen like with uh, with a credit card uh, maybe there are some transactions that, that are going to be done that are not related to the business and could harm you um, also that's why i would suggest using debit cards or and then also follow the transactions just to make sure that the money is spent uh, for order fulfillment and not for something else the second thing is then also going to be for logins you can give access to your private accounts I'm doing that too, but I have trust uh, in my virtual assistants. If you don't, you can create new passwords or for example, for the Shopify store, you can add them as a staff member with uh, limited permissions. Like for example, I wouldn't give access to payment providers and stuff like that. Always follow the work done, check emails are, co are correctly replied to if the orders are fulfilled in the right way with the virtual assistant. So if, for example, if you have hired a virtual assistant only for customer support, support and order fulfillment you can check their skills and uh, yeah you can increase their salary but at the same time give them more responsibilities for example to create a store for you or to make the product research or yeah negotiating with the suppliers if you have the opportunity to give them more responsibilities and more tasks you should definitely do it here i want to give a shout out to my team like you can start as virtual assistants together like um hiring as a virtual assistant but with time my virtual assistants now are my business partners like i'm working with them and yeah teamwork makes the dream work so uh, we push each other in this section we're going to talk about how to get organized so after you've hired your virtual assistants you need to get organized to make sure all the tasks are fulfilled all the work is done and that you can track the to-dos that need to be done and for that i'm using two tools the first one is going to be trello which helps me managing the tasks and the project and the second one is going to be whatsapp like just for daily communication make sure that you ask questions that they can ask you the questions and everything but now i'm going to take you through trello to show you how you can set up everything for so to get started with trello you just need to type in trello.com and then here click on sign up here you can see uh, your workspace you can have some um, the boards the where you organize your tasks you can also use some templates but we will discuss that later and generally the first thing that i like to do here is just to click away everything that i don't need here you can add your members um you can just type in the email address of your virtual assistant for example and invite them so here you can uh, click on plus and you can type in your workspace name for our new store so here we're going to call it for example esperanza store then workspace type 
it's going to be, for example, if we uh, I want to organize the tasks of my uh, customer support uh, team, then I select human resources. You can add a description if you want, but you can just click continue. Then here you can add the email address of your uh, virtual assistants. Here you will have some templates that you can have a look at for you on how to organize your board. Just in the beginning, we are going to build our own board just to show you how this works. So here, for example, you can type in customer support uh, to do's. And here you can try to choose the background. I like to use blue, the blue one so it's really clear and organized. As soon as you arrive here, you can uh, yeah organize that exactly like that. I just leave it structured. Those are cards where you can add like the topic of the stuff. Uh, here it's organized like there is the to-do. Here the virtual assistant can add the card to doing. And if it's done, you can add it to done. So for example, here we are going to add our first to-do. And this is, for example, read the Monazar template okay for for the virtual assistant so he knows exactly how to answer um, yeah as soon as uh, they he gets questions on email your virtual assistants email and then they can join this board and uh, click on the card itself for example and you can add the member well, like your virtual assistant that uh, you want the the task to be finished for example if you want the task to be finished till saturday 11th you can just click save and yes you can also add some labels for example if it's a very important task you can just add here the red one name it for example very important but you notice that this is a task that needs to be done asap soon as uh, the task is listed here you can add other ones so for example reply to customer C, for example, or then you can also add a task like um, prepare a new email address and you can list all the tasks that you have here. And then as soon as it's being done, you can just, the virtual assistant can just move it here and you can see exactly like what is still in the to-do phase, what is being done and what is actually done as soon as it's moved here. So this is how to organize your tasks, how to have an overview over the small tasks that you have and yeah, make sure that uh, all the to do's are being done. So every time you have a new idea for the customer support team, uh, every time you have a new task that you think needs to be done, you can just add it here to the to do's. Every member in this board will see the new to do's and they know that they have to do it and you can monitor like what is being done and what hasn't been done. Uh, just to make sure that you move forward with your business. Oh, another thing that we can do as soon as we come back here to the dashboard, we can uh, create a new board. Again, if I want to have, for example, my whole team inside uh, the, the the Trello dashboard, and I can just name this board um, Esperanza Team. And then again, like you can choose another color, for example, and then you just click create board everybody sees what everybody else needs to do you can instead of naming to do for example you can name this one customer support you can add the tasks below so for example if we have a task for the marketing team like for example to create tiktok account and then uh, for example run facebook ads which influencers you can add it here so everybody sees what everybody else needs to do and then again here we can add labels so for example if yeah creating a tiktok account uh, isn't that important but we can just name it important instead of very important done till for example on Sunday the 12th at 1 p.m. and then just click save thing here is for example uh, if the task is already done by the marketing team they can just click the check button here and then we will see it here as done as for example the date is approaching and the task is still not done so for example if they have to do it till today and the task is still not done it will appear yellow and it will say due soon okay so all the people will know like hey this task needs to be done and it's not done and then the worst case for example where i have to be very strict is if the task was supposed to be done yesterday it will appear red and those uh, are the parts where you just need to go and ask hey what's going on uh, why are you not moving forward with this task and if they need your help you have to be there uh, this is how to get organized this is how to have a whole overview for your team uh, how to get structured how to for you also 
how to have overview of the tasks that need to be done. In this section, we're going to talk about Monazar Virtual Assistants. This is a virtual assistant company that I have built with my personal VAs, uh, given that I have good connections with them and they have a huge pool of talent that they can make sure that uh, business people are not getting scammed because in my case I got scammed like three or four times from VAs and uh, I just wanted to have a security and build a security for other people uh, doing the same like me, uh, dropshipping or in e-commerce or just generally want to outsource some tasks and uh, yeah I just wanted to make sure that it is scam proof and that I have trained people and also um, yeah, make sure that uh, I, I pay face, fair salaries to the virtual assistants and improve their quality of life. So if we talk about the benefits of Monazan marketing briefly, uh, you will find virtual assistants here who are Shopify trained. They are rel reliable. It's a very easy payment, like it's a subscription form on the website itself. So you don't have to worry about bank transactions and stuff like that to pay your virtual assistants. The third thing is you're going to have me as a contact person for questions and uncertainties. Contact person, which is a little bit missing for me, for example, on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr. And uh, the fourth thing is that you have a seven day money back guarantee so you can hire a virtual assistant but if after seven days you feel like hey i don't need one or this virtual assistant is not uh, good enough for me or something like that you immediately get your money back hey guys this is it on how and hire virtual assistants for your business welcome to the bonus section of the course my name is matthias and i'll be walking you through copywriting and creating offers. This means that you learn how to write descriptions that actually make people want to buy the product you're selling. And you also learn how to create offers so good that your customer would literally feel stupid saying no to that offer. Copywriting is literally a skill you're going to be using at all times in any online business. And it's not just e-commerce. If you start with e-commerce and then you want to do something uh, as well, aside from e-commerce on the side, you will need to use copywriting again eventually. It is the only way we can communicate with and persuade people in our stores. So it's a skill you absolutely need to learn if you want to stand a chance of persuading someone that buying your product is the perfect fit for the customer. Put it simply, we're using copywriting to tap into our customers' emotions and push those emotions in the direction of a buying decision. As you can probably tell, in order for us to tap into a customer's emotions, we first need to know what those emotions actually are. And this requires customer research. And don't worry, you're not gonna sit there and scroll through medical papers and all that stuff. I found I'm gonna present you with two very simple ways that you can find these emotions that your customer is having and find them fast. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is Amazon reviews. Search for gym product because we are moving into the um, season where home fitness and gym uh, is very important. And I found this Pilates bar. What we're going to do if I'm going to research what my, if I wanted to sell something similar to this, I would go to this section here that just said ratings. And I could start by looking at these recently used or often used terms that Amazon uh, gives to us. And what we're really looking for here is we're looking for a, the reason that the customers bought and the reason uh, they liked it. So why they liked the product. So I can look at any of these and say, all right, are these reasons that they like it? All right, it's easy to use. That could be a reason why they like it. Easy to assemble. It's well made. Um, highly recommend. Again, it doesn't really give us any idea, but we could click on it to see why they highly recommend it. And yeah, so this would be why it's easy to use. Now, these are fine, but they're also very limiting because I want to figure out why people buy these, so why they bought them. And the easiest way to do this is not to read through hundreds of reviews. It's actually to scroll down, click on see all reviews, and then search for the word bought. Now, I already did that, did this beforehand, but we can go through a few of them if you want to. So I bought the Pilates bar to use while traveling in my RV. Okay, so this one is used for traveling. Uh, I bought a Walmart one, uh, I like this, but it had issues with pieces popping off, so I bought this one and this was definitely better. So this one was because the other one f like f kept breaking, so this one was better. Uh, wish I bought this sooner. I have used exercise bands, they work fine, except when I ended up uh, slam, uh, so a band was slapping, so we bought this and it was better. Bought this to use at home, right? I freely admit that I bought this because I wanted a longer bar, so I already had one, wanted a long, longer bar, so on and so forth. But I've read through these before, and most of the people who buy this bought this for at home. 
and uh, because the other ones they had were bad quality. Other way we can go about researching is looking into Facebook groups. Now, the way we do this is we simply go and join a Facebook group and start reading and searching uh, in these groups of people who have problems you're trying to solve, have used products or have product recommendations uh, that we can look at. So let's, the easy way to do that is we just go to Facebook. I searched for Pilates group, clicked on groups, and here are a few groups I can join for people who like Pilates. I can go read through those, uh, I can search in the comments and read through uh, different posts. So this one would be, this is group for Pilates lovers, teachers, students, and enthusiasts, right? And here we'd go and see, well, what equipment do people who like Pilates recommend? Why did they buy this equipment? Why do they recommend it? Why do they like it? right? Why they bought it, why they like it, because these things are important. And you can do it here, um, Pilates equipment, right? So this is a group where people maybe even talk about Pilates equipment more often. So that would be a great way for us to go in and figure out why do they recommend it? Why do they like it? Why do they buy it? What we're looking for, as I said before, is the reasons they buy and the reason they like it. And the reason people already bought will be the same reason people buy from you. So if you know why people buy, you will know what to write and what to focus on when you're gonna sell this in your copywriting or in your description. From reading reviews, we see that a lot of people buy the Pilates bar for at home, some for travel, but also because that the other Pilates bars they had, they broke easily, or they wanted to uh, not have just um, resistance bands, right? They wanted something higher quality, something sturdy. This brings me to the copywriting formula we're gonna to go to. Now, it's called ADA, and it stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, Action. Copywriting formula is, in the simplest terms, a guiding line for how to write what and when to write it. Don't worry, I'll share you an example store as I've gone through this entire IDA section of how it's actually used by a real life brand to get really good results, right? Some have variations of this IDA, but they all basically use the same segments in the same order. Again, there are some people who move around with some stuff to experiment, and that's fine but they all use the IDA formula. Now we're gonna start with the first one, the A, and that stands for attention. Attention is the very first thing your customer will see on your page. In terms of copywriting and, and the description, that will be the product title. This is the most important one to get right because if you don't get your customer's attention, it doesn't matter what you show or write after that because if you don't have their attention, they will leave your page within three to four seconds. So everything else you've done, if you don't grab their attention, is absolutely useless if you don't if you don't manage to actually make them stay. And you do that by grabbing their attention. And in terms of writing, that's the title of your product. Now, the easiest way to accomplish this is instead of writing just the product name, we would write the main benefit of the product or make a claim in the product's title. So instead of just writing, if we take the Pilates bar example, instead of just writing Pilates bar or your brand name within Pilates bar, we would instead write something like world's sturdiest at-home Pilates bar. This way we incorporate that it is a Pilates bar, but we also touch on that it's for home use because remember people want to use it for home workouts and, and at home, and that it's sturdy because we also saw people talked about that the other Pilates bar they used broke. So we hit, we make a claim that it's the world's sturdiest at home Pilates bar. So we hit the things that's important to them and we make a claim and we mention it's a Pilates bar. That way we grab their attention and they want to learn more. And that brings us into the interest section. So here we literally just talk about the product's features, benefits, use cases, and how it works, and then so on and so on. And this part is typically the longest, as this is where you describe how this product will actually benefit your customer and why it will benefit your customer. How to maybe use the product, like how it works, where to use it, so if there's specific places they can use it, and also talk about what it is they're getting with this product. Like, so if it's a Pilates bar, they get the, the bar and, and the resistance bands, for instance, right? You might also talk about saying, why is it important to use a Pilates bar over something else? This is where we generate, funnily enough, funnily enough interest in the product and what we're selling for the customer. One thing I want to mention is that whenever you get, you write about a new topic that could be use case it, how it works, where to use it, uh, the benefits, it's important that you segment those into different sections with their own sub headline. So it's easy for the customer to scroll through your page and find the information that they're looking for because not all customers look for the same information. Maybe for some customer, uh, how it's used is more, is more important 
But for another customer, the important thing is that it doesn't break and they want to be able to see that it's maybe designed the right way so it doesn't break. If you want to get examples is we could write how easy it is to set up for home usage, right? How quickly you can do it and how easy you can do it. Um, you might write a section about how we designed it so it won't break. Or you might write a section about how you can easily increase or decrease the resistances in the resistance bands. Or we might even make a section where we compare our Pilates bar to other Pilates bars to show that ours is a lot better and doesn't break and all that stuff. And then we get to the desire section. Again, don't worry, I'm gonna show you a um, example store that you can take inspiration from that shows you how they structure the copy, how they start with attention, then do interest, the desire and action. But after interest, we get to the desire. Now, the desire section is probably the simplest and easiest one to create, but it's also the second most important one because up until now, we've gotten their attention, which is the most important thing, but having their attention doesn't mean that they wanna buy. First, they wanna have an interest. So we gave them an interest in our product by talking about the features, benefits, use cases, so on and so on. But they still don't have a desire for it. They don't desire the product. And we need them to desire the product before we can ask them to take action and then purchase it. Now, there are a few steps in the desire thing that we need to take care of. So there are reviews, offers, guarantees, FAQs. And this is also the order that we want it to come in. The very first thing we do is we give them our customer reviews or testimonials and as many as possible. Now, if you're using a Shopify theme and not building it like a landing page or um, a sales page, then you can either copy paste some of the reviews in quotation marks in the description, or you can refer them to where you have like the looks app or whatever app you use for reviews. It could be further down or in a tab. You can say we have reviews here so they can go and uh, view those. Or you can have screenshots from your looks reviews or your Facebook uh, reviews and post them in the description. It's not really important which one you choose, but it's important that you mention that you have a bunch of reviews because that's social proof and having other people like the ones who are viewing your page having success will increase the desire to also have that success. So after we've shown our reviews, it's time to highlight and talk about our special offer if we have one. This is where you could talk about the free eBooks you might have, your bonus physical products or whatever else you might have as your special offer. And if you don't have a special offer, you can also simply highlight the discount you're giving. If you didn't work on a more a unique or special offer, you can simply just do that and that will work just fine. The important part here is that you remind them or show them that you have an amazing offer because that will also further increase the desire to see, wow, this is a great offer. Boom, more desire. After that, we're gonna write our guarantee. The type of guarantee that we recommend is covered in the offers part of the course, but this is the, like, this is the place where you write it in the copy. Now, if you have a standard 30 day, 100% money back guarantee, then you need to write it after you have showed the offer. Again, some people will write it a, above, the, um, above the offer, but a lot of people will, will, instead of doing it above the offer, they will actually do it above the reviews. So the, this is guaranteed, then re the reviews. Now, the reason I would recommend doing the guarantee after the offer is simply because you increase the desire and then remove the risk, which, in turn, gives more desire. I do, however, recommend you put more thought into guarantee than just having a standard 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee, as it can boost your sales overnight having a great guarantee. But I'll show an example later on how you need to structure the guarantee. It's very, very, very simple to do, and I'll show you that on the uh, example page I'm also gonna show you. Quick note is that, again, you can choose to have the guarantee um, above the reviews or above the offer. Now, the last thing you need in your desire is an FAQ. Now, an FAQ doesn't necessarily increase desire, but it does make sure that the desire doesn't decrease. Because there are things in your copy, like in the interest section, that the customer might not have read. They might have scanned through it because that wasn't as important, or maybe they didn't read it thoroughly or they forgot. So you wanna have an FAQ to answer all the other questions that your customers might have. Because one of the number one reasons someone don't buy after reading an entire page of descriptions and sales copy is that there was missing information that was important to them. Having an FAQ and creating one is super easy because if we go back, to the Amazon page here, and we go to the product page, there is a little section that says 23 answered questions. This is literally an FAQ. You can copy and paste with some edits these into your own FAQ. 
and you have an FAQ of real life questions that people asked on Amazon on a product that has 2000 reviews. What you can also do if you know there are competitors, you can take inspiration from your competitors in terms of what type of uh, frequently asked questions they have. You can also look at Facebook comments on your ad competitors ads, see what questions they're asking about the product and make sure that they're answered in an FAQ. All right. The last one is action and it is as simple as asking them to buy. It's also the last step of copywriting. Now, here in actions, we simply tell people to get your product by clicking at the card or get mine now, whatever it says on your button. You want to put more effort into the action section, which I recommend you do. You can also restate your main benefits and end off with saying, get yours now, click at the card and whatever. So if you take the Pilates by example, still, um, you could say something like, um, if you want to get a good workout burn from the comfort of your home, then get the sturdiest at home Pilates bar that not only allows you to get started in seconds, but also works out your entire body. Simply click add to cart and we'll ship it to your door in as little as 5, 10, 15, 20 days, whatever your shipping time is, right? Now, the words you use will depend on the product itself, right? So if you write about the Pilates bar, you will use the words of people that you read about in the description, but also you're going to see what the features and benefits are, like you would use the resistance bands and how to use them. So that, of course, differs from product to product. And as you can see, it's not a hard process. It's really just four steps, more or less, you need to fulfill. If you take them one at a time from the top, it's going to be very, very easy. This, however, does take time. But trust me, it's 100% worth it to put the right time into copywriting, as this is literally how most big businesses are built. Now, I quickly want to say, before moving into the... Um, depending on how simple your product is, you need to write more or less copy, or more or less text. For a, a product that has technology involved, you might want to have to write more so that whenever you say, oh, this does this amazing thing, you need to provide proof that makes it believable. So if the technology, let's say, was a, a weight loss slimming device, you would need to tell them how it worked and why it worked that way in order for them to believe you. But if you're selling a whiskey glass it's just a whiskey glass like they know how to use a glass but what you might want to talk about instead is just the design of it and how it was made right maybe the history behind it if there is something like that and that would require a lot less text than the slimming device now you still have to go through attention interest desire action so the attention would still be in the headline the interest would then for something like a whiskey glass instead be the story behind the design the desire will still be the reviews your offer and a guarantee and an faq and then the action would just be asking them to buy so a whiskey glass might have five lines of text while a slimming device might have 50 because they need to go they need to prove more things and would you look at that the product's title is not just air purifier, it's world's best portable air purifier, right? There's a reason this text here is the biggest. It's because it's the most important. And this is what grabs their attention. Then they have some extra like graphical stuff that's just supported. Um, but this is really what's important. Now, the next thing is that they go into the interest. And as I also told you that they have a different section with a headline uh, for every different thing they talk about so that people can scan through it easily. But what you don't see can still hurt you. So they talk about why it's important to have this, right? Again, you can take inspiration and have something similar about a Pilates bar if you wanted to. Why it's important to have a Pilates bar when you do Pilates. And you would talk about that. And then after that, they tell you how the product works, right? So what, what does it do? What is the benefit it uh, protects your respiratory system, right? That's the benefit. But how does it do that? And then again, because this is a te technological product, they have to explain how it actually works. Again, for something like a whiskey glass or a, um, a Pilates bar, you don't really need this because the concept is very simple, but here it's not simple, so they have to walk people through it, right? Again, we're still building interest in the product. First, we're saying, okay, so this is why I need it. This is what it does for me. This is how it does it. And here are other things that's great about it. So benefits, it's portable. You can take it in your car. 
it, it's create a healthy working environment. You can take it with you to the office. It's it basically helps you breathe better in your bedroom. So I guess it's also um, yeah helps sleep. And this thing here is perfect for every room in your house. Now this one uh, is something you really don't need most of the time. But the reason it's cool here, and I quickly want to point this out, is because this not only serves the point of saying it's great for these locations, this actually also helps increase the average order value for this company because they're saying, well, you should actually get one, two, three, four, five, six of these instead of just one or two because you need one for each of these types of rooms. So if you have five bedrooms, you might have a lot more of these, right? So this has a double purpose of showing that it's great everywhere, but also that you need one for every room, meaning you need to buy more of these. Make yourself and those around you a video explaining how it works, because this again, just saying, oh, this is gonna clean your air, people won't believe them. So they have to put a lot of extra work into making people believe the claims they are making. And with the Pilates bar or something, or something more simple, you won't need an entire video like this at all. And then they tell them what's included in the package. Again, you would normally do this too. What is included? Well, you get uh, one bar and resistance bands with the Pilates bar. You get one whiskey glass with a, a holder or whatever. The desire section. Now, what they've done is they, they slapped the offer and the guarantee above reviews. Again, you can do that and they have the guarantee. Now, for the guarantee, I talked about I was sure how to structure it. What we want is I don't really like this way of doing it. I think that it's because they have a lot of other information they want to get out there. But you want an icon so it's easy to spot. I typically have it as a section for my uh, of my own kind of like reviews. But then you want to have the title of the guarantee that could be 30 day 100% money back guarantee or 30 day triple your money back guarantee. So you have the title that grabs the attention. But then you want to kind of explain why you have this guarantee. So here they say, we're so confident you'll love uh, Purifair that we offer a 30 day satisfaction guarantee. Try it today, risk free. If you don't love it, you can return it within 30 days, no questions asked. If you want to do a conditional guarantee, like the 30 day triple your money back guarantee, we'd say, we're so confident you'll love Purifair that we offer a 30 day triple your money back guarantee. Try it today, risk free. If you don't love it, you can return it within 30 days to get three times your money back. You've done these things. So you're right, as long as you've um, documented that you've used it for 30 days, right? And you take whatever requirements you set for a conditional guarantee, that's how you would just edit it. It doesn't need to be a super long slab of text. If you do have what's called a conditional guarantee, you can also have a hyperlink that you can read more here where you write how they need to do all the different things or how to fulfill the conditions, essentially. Now, what we normally do is we'd have the reviews above here, but they haven't, so that's fine, but they still have the different elements. They just put the reviews further down, right? So in the desire section, which is what started here, we now go through the customer reviews. Now, I believe they have five highlighted reviews here. Some of them are videos, some of them are images. Videos always work better, but if you don't have images, if you don't have videos, you can just use images and that's perfectly fine. Um, so they have the highlighted ones, which are basically made to uh, specifically target their perfect customer. And then they have all their other reviews down here. If you were to do this in a description, you would maybe highlight the best reviews by just copy pasting them into the description with an image and in quotation marks and then just having your looks reviews or whatever other app you use somewhere else. Or you can simply just say, hey, go further down or click on the review tabs to read our lovely reviews. We have the frequently asked questions, but again, they're not there to increase desire, but to make sure that there is no decrease in desire. Again, you can see that they have a lot of questions here. And again, you can just copy paste your own in from Amazon and get inspiration from competition on how to make their FAQ. And then at the end, they have an action. Now, what they haven't done here that I would recommend that they do is they have the same thing up here, down here as they had at the very top, right? Except for the uh, the icons, maybe. Now, instead, is they could have had world's best portable air purifier and then the text that says they should buy or click the button below. So if you want to get an air purifier that can do these things, click the button below and we'll ship, we'll ship it to you in this amount of time. That is how that I believe they could have improved this, but it still works for them, so it still works. The point still stands that we start with attention. Now this one is just a, a slab on offer, but then we start creating interest all the way to down here 
where we then go to Desire. We show our offer. We have a guarantee, and then they also have a shipping, which they also have up here. And then they have the reviews. Again, I would put the reviews up here, but again, that's fine. You can kind of switch them around however you like. The important part is just that they're there. They then have more reviews and an FAQ to make sure that there is no decrease in desire because all questions are being answered. And then an action at the end, asking people to buy again at the end. A real life brand making a lot of money right now. I really recommend just you go through and watch the entire course before you go out and start this. You can always come back here and go through this again and again. Now, when you do copywriting, it's important that you don't skip out on the research because if you don't research your customers, you have no clue what to talk about. You won't know what FAQs, frequently asked questions are important. You wouldn't know what it takes to grab their attention. You don't know what they're looking for. And if you don't know what they're looking for, you also don't know what would generate interest, right? So we could say that they want to do it at home, they use it for Pilates, for traveling. Um, and they say that it doesn't want to break. They don't want it to break. These are all things that are important. So we're going to talk about these in the interest section because this is what's going to interest them, increase their interest. And only when they have an interest is when they can like develop a desire. And again, the desire is made so that when we show people the reviews, they see other people who, who are just like them, who have a great experience and had great results. Maybe they've got more tone, maybe they lost weight. So now they start desiring the same results they got. Then we show them an amazing offer that's further gonna increase the results because wow, this is so damn good, right? I shouldn't say no. Then you show the guarantee to completely remove all risk and you just ask them to buy. When going through this, I recommend that you start at the top, meaning you start from action. So you write the headline, like you do the research, then you write the headline. Then you start figuring out what do you need to write to generate interest. And you go back to the research you made in terms of reading the reviews and figure out what are important to people. It's easy to use. We saw that a few times. It gets you sore, like gets you good workout burn going. It doesn't break, it, like it's sturdy. All these things are important. And you figure out, okay, cool, I want to talk about that. It's sturdy. And you go to the product page and say, why is it sturdy? That's because it's made of this material. Great, you write about that in the interest section. These are important to talk about why the customer needs it to put the benefits, right? So whenever there's a feature, it's sturdy. Why is it important that it's sturdy? It's so it won't break, you'll have a great workout, you won't get damaged. These are the benefits. Offer is, in my opinion, one of the two most important things you will ever focus on as this is the only reason someone will be able to sell anything. Now, if you have a product, fine, but you're still offering it to someone. You need a great offer to be able to have someone buy it. You can just have a simple discount, just slap a discount on your product and then call it a day. This approach is the laziest, least effective and quite frankly, the least valuable type of offer you can show to a person that just landed on your page. You really don't just want a boring run of the mill offer the customers won't even notice and trust me when i say that just simple discounts have been done so much that a lot of customers they rarely even remember that there were a discount on a product and some po some people don't even notice the discount anymore because it's just been done so much what you really want is an offer so tantalizing that your customers literally want to crawl through broken glass on their bare knees just to get your offer. An offer so good, your customers would feel stupid just for saying no to it. An offer like this is literally what can take a product that's burning through your cash and turn it into a money-making machine that spits out more cash than you know what to do with. I've seen this happen for students and myself many, many times over. Offer like this, because it makes such a big difference, is really not easy to create. It will take you time, and it will take you some research to do and it definitely requires trial and error, trying different things, switching things around. Don't worry, I do understand that not everyone can spend hours upon hours every day just trying to get an offer right. Some people have families, some people have jobs they need to attend to. So what I've done is I've made sure to include offers that are easy to implement, that does make a difference, and ones that are a bit harder and takes a bit of extra time to implement, but some that still pays off a lot when you get it right. Now, those are what I call base offers. And you can start using these pretty much immediately. Now, the first one I wanna talk about is free eBooks and uh, video courses that you're gonna add on 
uh, as a bonus with your product. This is great as it allows you to give away a digital product, meaning you don't have to pay for shipping or anything to your customers that will greatly increase the perceived value for the customer. And the thing is that these pretty much cost you nothing. What you're gonna do is either create them yourself or you're gonna pay a very small fee to get what's called PLR products. And you only have to pay for those ones, but they will increase your conversion rates forever, essentially. Simply go and search for PLR products and it stands for private, private label rights products, meaning you can buy the product and then you can get it home, well, download it, and you can edit it, put your own branding on it, and sell it as your own. Now again, just Google PLR products. It doesn't really matter which of these you choose. They all have a lot of the same, some are different. I do, however, recommend you go through a few of them um, before you choose something specific. I'm just gonna click on this first one here. And what you're gonna do is you're literally just gonna click here, search for whatever you're selling. Uh, example here could be, if we're selling maybe a yoga mat or something like that, we could buy the yoga guidebook for $8. And we only have to pay this once. We can then put our own logo and, and anything, everything on it. And for anyone who, who buys a yoga mat, they might want a yoga guidebook. So we could say, hey, this yoga guidebook, you can normally buy it on our store for maybe $20, but you're getting this for free with your purchase. So now we just added a $20, maybe even more perceived value in the customer's eyes that they're getting for free. And you can do the same with video courses. If you search for them, there are videos up here. So there might even be yoga video courses you could sell. So you can say, you, can you will even get our $200 yoga video course together with your purchase of this $50 yoga mat. Do you see what I'm talking about? They feel like they're getting $200 extra value for free for just paying $50. For a yoga mat, they would, even, they would still pay $50 for without anything else. That's gonna make even more people buy and they're gonna be a lot happier with their purchase. Logo offers, which stands for buy one, get one offers. You may have heard of these before. Logo offers is that the more extreme these offers are, and that means buy one, get one, you can say buy one, get one free, buy one, get one 50% off, but the more extreme they are, the better they'll work. And I'll quickly show you that how to create BOGO offers very simply in Shopify, and also show an example of what I mean when I say the more extreme they are, the better they'll work. Just keep in mind that if you're gonna run what's called a BOGO offer, your customers should already want higher quantities of whatever it is you're selling. So let's say maybe you're gonna sell a, a chair. Maybe you sold a chair, uh, an office chair for home office. Now, typically people don't need more than one chair for themselves. So a BOGO offer in this case would not necessarily be a good idea. But what if you sold a glass instead? So a, a nice whiskey glass. Now people would typically want more than one whiskey glass. So they have a set of two, four or six. So what you could do is you could say something like buy two whiskey glasses, get two for free. Now, of course, when you do this, you need to have your margins in mind. You need to make sure that you're still making money if you do a, a buy two, get two free. What you simply do is you click on discounts, you click on automatic discounts and click create automatic discount. Then you can title it whatever you want. Just keep in mind that the customers will see this uh, discount name. So don't name it something weird. I typically just say BOGO. You wanna click on buy X, get Y. And then this is where you put in the BOGO offer. Let's say in this case, to keep it simple, we're saying buy one, get one free. So we say buy one. And then you're gonna click browse and choose whatever product or products that's included in this BOGO offer and get one free. And again, you're gonna choose the product. Now, and you simply just click save discount and then it's gonna happen automatically. Now, keep in mind that for this discount to work, the customer needs to add two items to cart. They need to add the one they're gonna buy and the one they're gonna add for free. Shopify will not automatically add the second item for free if they only add in one. So remember to write that the customer needs to add two to cart and then they'll get one of them for free. Now I also quickly wanna, what I mean when I say the more extreme they are, the better they'll work. I'll talk about uh, this ad from Octobuddy. You've probably seen this around last year, 
where there was all of these reversible uh, octopus plushies. But the offer they were running, and a bunch of people was running this offer because it worked so damn well, is buy one, get four free. That sounds super insane, customer's perspective. If I buy one, I can, I can get four for free? That's crazy. And it does sound crazy. It's an amazing offer. That's what I mean when it's cra the crazy it is, the better. The reason this worked for them is because one of these plushies is pretty small. It's very light, so it costs almost nothing to ship out. The product itself is small, so it's very cheap to buy. If I remember correctly, they sold these for $30. Shipping out five of them to customers would cost between $10 to $15, meaning that they made at least $15 profit because they charged $30 when they sold, when they made this offer. And because it was so good, I can imagine that they got sales for as little as $5 because at the same time this was happening, this product was also trending on TikTok. And these ads were probably being run on TikTok as well. So this is what I mean by saying the more crazy it is, the better. But always, always, always keep your margins in mind. This only worked because they sold one for 30. Selling five of them for that price would still make them very profitable. Next thing I want to talk about here is free plus shipping. This is one of those that if you were around in drop shipping around 2016, 2017, you may have remembered the era of free plus shipping when Facebook was super cheap, where you could sell products for free, then charge six, seven dollars shipping, and then you would be profitable in the front end. You are very unlikely to be profitable in the front end. You can, however, be break even, which is the goal with this strategy. And I'll talk more about it in a second. Because a free plus shipping offer is undoubtedly the best offer you can run to get the cheapest sales possible. Again, it's very hard to be profitable in the front end with just a free plus shipping offer. So what you will need is a back end. So you need upsells and cross sells. And the way we typically do that is we use an app, like one click upsells by Zipify. There are multiple post purchase and needs to be put, they need to have post purchase available. But the goal here is that we're gonna get a customer in the door, super cheap, and then we're gonna offer them something related to that product. It could be that we offer them a product for free and then we offer them more quantities of that one product at a great discount compared to the normal price. We sell them a product and then we upsell a product to them that boosts the performance of the one they just got for free. Uh, we want to keep in mind that when we do the free plus shipping, the product we give away for free is cheap enough so that the shipping we charge, which shouldn't be more than $10, it can be 12 for some products, but I have, a, I have a rule that it shouldn't be more than $10. So let's say you find a product for $3 and you charge $6 shipping. That gives us $3 profit. And because we're giving it away for free, we will have very cheap cost per purchase. So our goal is to have a $3 cost per purchase or less which means that we're not losing money, not making money. But whenever we make an upsell, we're profitable from the beginning. The goal is to find upsells that does this. And I quickly want to show an example so you know what I mean. I found this product. Now I want to quickly say that I have not tested this product. I haven't researched whether or not this product is good for the skin or if it works or not. So a fair warning, don't go out and test this specific product without having done research into whether or not it's healthy for the skin and it actually works. Now, what we want to do is you can see that we can have six of these uh, varicose vein patches. Varicose veins are something that a lot of people want to get rid of. So we're solving a problem. And for free plus shipping uh, offers, I personally prefer having problem solving products because first of all, they're easy to sell. If they're, if they're free, they're even easier to sell. So we can get six patches for $2. I'm just gonna round down to $2 to make it simple. And what we might do is we might say, you can get these patches, these six patches for free. They will last you, let's say one patch per day. So they will last you just around a week and you can get them for free to remove your varicose veins. And we charge $6 shipping, meaning we will get roughly like three to $5 profit before Facebook ads. And because we're solving a very specific issue, we're going to target people who have this issue and they're going to want to get this for free and we get it very cheap because it's free. Then we could, the upsell using the app could say, hey, do you want to buy more of these? So you have one year supply, so you will be free from Veracruz Vein for an entire year. So let's say that you get it for free. The normal price for six of these is $20. But now we say, so they get the first pack for free and now we're on the upsell saying, hey, do you want more of these? But instead of paying $20 as a thank you for actually trying this out, we're going to give you it at a half price for $10 per six pieces. And we're going to offer to them to get maybe 60 pieces, or we're going to offer to give them whatever amount of pieces we want. Let's just say 60 pieces. So we say, you're going to buy 
60 pieces so they're going to last you 60 days or however many days it's going to last them again you need to do research on this if you're going to sell a product like this we're going to charge them ten dollars per six patches so we're going to charge them sixty dollars meaning we now make eight dollars extra per six patches so we're going to make eighty dollars profit on the upsell and because they got this for free they're going to be more likely to take the upsell this is a, a concept called reciprocity that every human has if they get something for free, they feel a bigger need to give back. And this is why free plus shipping offers are amazing. Because they get something very valuable, which is also why we want to solve a problem for them. They get something very valuable for free. They just have to pay the shipping. And then now we even offer them a great deal on getting more so they can be very conveying free for longer and because they feel the need to give back, they're like, wow, they're giving me another great deal. I must take this because I would kind of feel bad if I didn't. This is the psychology going on in the mind and this is why free plus shipping is so powerful. Imagine you got $5, $3 uh, cost per purchase and then every other person spent $80 more. That would mean that you on average profited $40 per customer and paid $5 for the sale. And the other good thing is that you get so many customers in the door because it's so cheap to get them that now you have a huge email list. You can simply just use as your own personal ATM. Whenever you have a new product that can solve the problems your customers had, you send them a great deal. You make more money. You see where I'm getting with this? Why it's so powerful? When you do it right, again, it's gonna take a bit of testing to find the right free pr product and the right upsell. But when you do, it's it's a gold mine. The fourth one we can do is called bonus physical products. Now I don't have an example here because it's literally just a bonus physical product. Works the best if you can incorporate, but it's also the hardest one to get working right. Because you need to find something that is massively valuable to your customers. It, it has so many benefits to them. It works very well together with what you're selling as the main product as well. But at the same time, you need to make sure that it doesn't screw over your margins. You need to make sure that you're still profitable and profitable enough when you add this product in. It is, it is the one that will work the best when you get it right, but it's also the hardest one to get right because you're limited in terms of your margin. Now the last one, again, I don't really have an example for that because most of you will have seen this. It's, it's called quantity discount. This one is, again, pretty well known. Weakest one on the list. It will help increase your average order value. So again, if we take the example we had earlier with the whiskey glasses, we might have someone who would buy two, now instead buy four because they would get a higher discount if they bought four glasses instead of just two glasses. So it will work with increasing your average order value, but it will rarely ever push someone who might buy to definitely buy. It will almost never do that. It will only have someone who will buy maybe buy more but i wanted to add it in anyways because it's so easy to set up if you use a theme like ecom solid or i believe the beautify have it too then they are incorporated in the theme or you can just search for quantity discounts on the shopify app store and you will literally find like a ton of apps that can help you have quantity discounts now that you know what base offers you can choose from we actually need to spice it up a bit more even though these are powerful enough on their own well at least the, the first four of them are powerful enough on their own to really boost your sales like to an absurd level we want to make it even better the way we do that is by incorporating urgency scarcity and a killer guarantee now you need to make sure you have at least two of these you have all three which would be amazing but you need to have at least two of these guarantee a killer guarantee is a must and then you can choose between scarcity and urgency now in case you're not sure what they are urgency is time related so you can think the countdown time as you've seen but when you do urgency it is important that you do it truthfully don't just have a repeating countdown timer it does work sometimes but it's unethical and it's actually not quite legal and Facebook doesn't really like countdown timers they're beginning to look down on those a little bit what you do want to do is with urgency is have a limited time sale I'm recording this right now on Black Friday but a great example would be why do you think Black Friday works so well because it's a known very limited period of time where retailers across the globe both online and offline have huge sales. They had huge sales all the time, Black Friday wouldn't be special, but it's because it's a very limited time, there's huge sales. And you can have the same effect on your store if you have limited time sales, if you set a specific end date. Now, scarcity is pretty much the same as urgency, 
but it has to do with availability and limited availability. Now, this could mean that we say we're only going to give this bonus physical product to the first 100 customers, or it could be available to limited stock. We only have five of these left. Scarcity that will make people buy because they want to be part of that limited quantity or availability of whatever you're offering. Killer guarantee, I'm going to talk a bit more about that one because if you've just been using a satisfaction guaranteed or a 100% money back guarantee, like the batch and nothing else, I can almost say for certain that having those will have made absolutely no difference in your results. So you need to have them because people need to see them. If you don't have them, it will be negative, but having them will not give you better results than other people who has them at all. That other people also do is at least be more specific, like with the time period, so 30 day, 100% money back guarantee and explain why they got 30 days. So you could say something like, we're so confident in what we have to sell that you can try it risk-free for 30 days. If you don't like it, write us and get your money back within 30 days, no questions asked. This is what's called an unconditional guarantee because there are no conditions. They will get the money back if they ask. But if you really want to make your guarantee pop and get a chance to literally three extra sales overnight, and yes, I've seen this happen multiple times, then you need to use a guarantee where your customer thinks that this can't be true or maybe they're thinking, this can't be healthy for the company. Another good rule is that if you're not a little bit uncomfortable giving such a good guarantee, then it's not good enough. These are where you give such a good guarantee, but there are requirements the customers need to fulfill in order for the guarantee to be valid. So an example would be 30 day triple your money back guarantee. Now, let's say we use the varicose vein patches as I showed earlier as an example, we could say, say we just sold them for like $20 and we said, Try these for 30 days and get triple your money back if they don't work. If you haven't gotten reduced varicose veins within 30 days, we'll give you three times your money back. Now, what we do here is we'd say, well, the requirements, and we're gonna have a guarantee page that we're gonna refer them to where they can read more, is we would say, what you need to do is you need to take an image before you start taking them with a timestamp. You need to take an image for every patch, for every time you use a patch as we instruct. So maybe one every other day or whatever you find out if you want to sell those. So you're going to have one every other day uh, with timestamps and then an after, after you've used all of them with a timestamp so that we can see if there is a visible difference. Now, the thing is, you're going to set your um, requirements to fit what the customer needs to do in order to get results. That means that if they want to qualify for the amazing guarantee they need to do these things and you know with certainty that if they do these things the vast majority of the customers will get results meaning the vast majority of your customers will be happy which means that in the case of the varicone vein, pa vein patches meaning that the vast majority of your customers will come back for more patches and they will not ask for their money back this is how you do a guarantee the right way you make it super super good so good that the customers feel like instead of having removed risk, they're they having they're not only having their risk removed, but they're also gaining an opportunity of making more money if it doesn't work. And you just make sure that the requirements that you set are made so that they guarantee the customer's results. Another great example of a guarantee, this could be for a weight loss, would be uh, lose 20 pounds before spring or we'll pay for your dietitian. Again, the reason we say before spring is because in January, we have the uh, fitness burst because of New Year's resolutions. So we could say lose 20 pounds before spring or we'll pay for your dietitian. Additional guarantee where you have conditions that needs to be met and the need to provide proof. Otherwise they won't qualify for the guarantee. Urgency, scarcity, and then your killer guarantee, or at least urgency and killer guarantee. Again, two out of three, if you remember. You should see a great increase in conversions once you hit the right combination of the offer with your product. Now, this is gonna take time and it is gonna take trial and error, but once you hit it, you won't regret it, trust me. Let's say we do the uh, free plus shipping offer for the varicose veins and we say we only offer it for free recording this on Black Friday, so let's say Black Friday. Now, this is urgency, right? So people will act because, well, if they don't take this now, it's not gonna be available in a week. And then our guarantee might be something like, if they don't reduce varicose vein, if, if they don't re reduce your varicose veins, we will literally pay for you to get them uh, medically removed. That could be your guarantee. What you can also do is you can have your guarantee on the upsell to really uh, to further enforce people to take the upsell as saying, upsell again would, would be, they would normally cost 20, we're gonna upsell them more, but for $10 uh, per six pieces, we're gonna say, we're so confident that if you don't like these, we're gonna give you triple your money back 
on as many on however many you buy right now so you can give them the triple money back guarantee on the upsell instead that was it for creating offers and copywriting my name is matthias and that is this part of the course done so guys that brings us to the end of this free shopify dropshipping course for 2023 by myself camille saar and the e-commerce mentoring team so if you could really show your appreciation to everyone that's contributed towards this free course like mohammed like vidank and like the other guys that would be massively appreciated now i hope you guys that have watched this event so so much about shopify dropshipping i hope it's going to help you start your first shopify dropshipping store and i hope you guys can achieve your first ten thousand twenty thousand even a hundred thousand dollars with your store because people that have watched the previous courses have been able to achieve six figures and even seven figures as long as you put what we teach into practice every single day so before i wrap up this video and leave you guys i do want to say that if you do need mentoring and you need a bit more of a personal touch when it comes to learning this business and you want to learn from experts directly through a discord private community through mentoring calls and through loads of other great ways and learning from myself directly as well then i'd recommend that you check out the e-commerce mentoring program which is a program that we've refined to the best capability and it's a program that's been around now for four years and it's battle tested as well and it's leaded by multiple experts some of the experts that have been in this free course are also teaching in that mentoring like myself as well so if you guys want to apply for the mentoring that will teach you tiktok organic paid ads everything else then there will be a type form in the description but i'd recommend that you watch the course first see how you get on but if you do need a little bit more help and a little bit more one-to-one -one and you want to learn from these experts directly then i'd recommend that you check out the mentoring by filling out a type form in the description below or in the pinned comment or in the cheat sheet and if you are interested i'd recommend that you apply as soon as possible because we only take on a limited amount of students each month so i don't want you guys waiting months on months because we can be six months booked in advance so i do want to let you guys know but anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this free course i hope you've learned a lot if you could smash that like button subscribe to the channel and leave a comment that'd be massively appreciated and don't forget to claim your free ebook by clicking the link in the description